and welcome into Florida, host of Major 2. It's the Call of Duty League, and we are ready to kick off action here at the Broward County Convention Center here in Fort Lauderdale. It's been a blast already, and the action only gets better from here on out. Welcome in. It's Chris Bucket alongside Allie Cat. We have Nameless here at the desk. And Allie, I want to start with you. We had some crazy qualifiers, but now we're finally on land. What are you looking forward to? We did have some crazy qualifiers, enough for me to change my hair color heading into Miami. But I'm mostly looking forward to who comes out on top in our top four teams. And that purple's looking good on you, Nameless. Yeah, I saw a, a little tan oh, on yeah. you today, my guy. How'd the golf course treat you? Yeah, you were there. It was a great time. We got some sun. Now we're ready for a tournament. We're in a dark room, so not that much sun in here but it'll still be fun. Shout out to uh, Raheem Mostert and the rest of the Miami Dolphins who may be coming through to watch some Call of Duty, but we got to talk about what's happened in the qualifiers because if you've been sleeping underneath a rock, well, you wouldn't know Optic has the number one seed coming in now. It has been a crazy ride with both New York Subliners and Optic waiting till the very final match of the qualifier to face off with two perfect 6-0 records. I mean, you couldn't have written a better script to close out our online qualifiers than for these two teams to go at it with a perfect record. The last time they matched up during the first split, it was New York Subliners that was able to put a stop to the reverse sweep in Game 5, but this time Optic Texas was able to complete it with an absolute master class out of Shotzi and a dashy 1v2 during the round 11. Yeah, you know, it was the perfect match to culminate a great stage. You know, a lot of teams, they put a lot of work in, and Optic Texas specifically, they were tested throughout this stage. They had the most maps played yes. of any team at 31, so many Game 5s, and they showed they have that grit, that tenacity to clutch up reverse sweep win with their backs against the wall and you know they go up against the New York subliners who pretty much looked untouchable especially in that search and destroy game mode and they get it done to determine our number one favorite here in major two and of course that wasn't the only juggernaut battle our other two teams in the top four faced off and this was a rematch of our major one championship match Toronto falling to Atlanta 0-3 draws it gets the last lap this time but that was just online yeah that was online that was back during week three of the qualifiers I think the most impressive thing about this series for me was the fact that Selium and Draza have been having an incredible stage two split. Selium had a 1.36 overall in the series and Draza rocking a 1.32. It was the ARs that needed to step up for Atlanta phase and they were able to do so versus our major one winners in Toronto Ultra. Now, despite Atlanta, getting the win there. They locked up the third seed and we wondered what could happen in their next matchup. They should 3-0 LAG, right, Nameless? Didn't yeah, happen. They absolutely should have. And, you know, for Atlanta FaZe, they're working on their map pool a little bit, but to me, that's not a major excuse. All the top teams have been working on their map pool. This just shows the floor that Atlanta FaZe can have at times, and we saw it. They went down 0-1. The search and destroy hasn't been that great sitting at 5-4. and four. You lose that S&D, you're all of a sudden in a situation where you have to clutch up in a reverse sweep, and what happens? LAG and Diamond Con in Game 5 absolutely take over to get the biggest upset of the state. Allie, can LAG do anything here? Atlanta was a top squad going into that fight. I mean, I will say for the fact of LAG, they were able to take advantage of the slip-ups that Atlanta Face put in the series, specifically when it came to the map pool, because sub-base, Atlanta Face, first of all, don't play it. And even both Search and Destroys in this series were the Search and Destroys that they lost to New York Subliners just the week before. So for Atlanta Face, I think the fact that they allowed those three maps in the series was a misstep but LAG even being able to beat a top team in a game five with off the backs of Estriel and Dimacon in the search and destroys is extremely impressive. So they might be able to make a run in the elimination bracket here. It's not going to be easy for them, but today it's all about the winner's bracket. And who made it into the top eight to play in it? Well, the surprise wasn't just an LAG win, but back-to-back -back Miami Heretics wins after going 0-7. These guys rattled off back-to-back -back dubs. They get the eighth seed with some help from Carolina. Yeah. And now they're playing against Optic, our number one seed today. Yeah, you know, should be an incredible match for Heretics. They went, uh, I think it was six and one, their last seven maps. Everybody started to step up. We have medals, you know, dropping over 4,000 damage per hard point. And in terms of that game mode, that's where they made the most strides forward. And that was a game mode that gave them a lot of trouble at the last major. So for Miami Heretics, it is a very tough first matchup, but they are in the winner's bracket. They have two shots at it. If you are new to Call of Duty, it's double elimination. Our top eight teams start in that winner's bracket. You lose there, you fall to the elimination 
elimination bracket where it is a best of five and you are done. If you make it to that championship match though, Allie, you are taking home some serious money and you are in contention for some big points. Yeah, not even that. A lot of those points, again, they're going to add up for that championship at the end of the season. We still have teams now who have had a terrible split that are in the top eight because of their placement at Major One. So not only are you taking home hella points, you're taking home 150 grand. <laughs> It's time to get into some predictions. And if you have been on Twitter recently, there was a lot of love for the subliners. That was up until they lost to Optic. Do you think the subliners are still a top squad to compete here in Miami? Absolutely. You know, the subliners, these are the world champions and they made a roster change there's going to be some growing pains. This is a well-oiled machine. I mean, this is a team that's played every single hard point map in the map pool coming into this tournament. They're sitting at 7-3 in that game mode, which is fantastic and largely in part due to the new pickups performance. He's top two in hard point in terms of statistics and KD and damage. He has been frying there, which they were waiting on. And then in Search and Destroy, this is the number one Search and Destroy team. I don't think there's a major argument from anybody on that front. Absolutely. So it gives them a chance in every single series. And now we're starting to see why they're so good. Hydra and Kismet have been unreal. Kismet and Hydra have been great in search, and when it comes to control, this is where Sib, the new member replacing Priesta from the championship squad, has really shined. Let's take a look at some of the numbers here from control. How is Sib leading the squad and the rest of the league in damage per 10? I mean, he's leading in the slaying, right? And that's what they brought him in for, was to be a slayer for this team, and they need it because their control has kind of been wishy-washy during this stage, so if they can continue to perform this way on land, they'll easily be able to push themselves to that Sunday. You see it's New York Subliners in the top two, but Toronto has scrapped there in the top four. And if you're looking at this guy's numbers, he drops them across the board. Let's highlight the squad that was in contention for the world title against the Subliners. What have we seen from Toronto Ultra as of late? Uh, we've seen a little bit of regression. Listen, there was a big change in the game, even in our map pool. You know, for these guys, search and destroy, the map pool has always sort of been a little bit of an issue. I was talking about it, headed into the last major. They end up going crazy and discovering that they're so good at Skid Row S&D. They're undefeated on it. Well, it gets removed, so that hurts them. They're four and five in search and destroy. The control is no longer dominant for these guys. Sitting at basically 50-50 at four and three. That has been an issue against the top teams. They only won one, one round and two controls against Texas and Atlanta combined. So for Toronto, it's about rediscovering their game and also finding that consistency. You're not getting those super godlike performances from Kleenex that you were in stage one. So you have to put it together as a team and get these Ws. It's been tough versus the top four. Throughout CDL history, we don't see a lot of back to back land victories. Do you think Toronto can pull it off here? Um, maybe. I think their hard point is has been unreal this stage. Unfortunately, that's the only game mode that I see. A lot of confidence from Toronto Ultra. They lost Search and Destroys to Optic Texas, which is one of our top four. They're not winning control as they used to be. So for Toronto Ultra, it's just about hoping that, you know, those land vibes just hit once again the way they did Major 1 and they make a run. You can take a look at our hard point damage per 10. Scrap leads everybody in sight and Kleenex also in the top eight. Their competition, nowhere near that leaderboard, but L Las Vegas, I should say, the Legion, they've got a chance to continue causing problems because Nameless, I feel like this is a squad that punches up to their competition and takes care of business when they need to most. Listen, if you were to just look at their stats without their logo, you would say this is a top four team in the league. I mean, you're talking about a team that has a player in attach who's top five in everything, all three game modes. Eight and four in hard point, top four. Four and four in search, five and two in control. They are hitting their stride. Everybody has been performing. We're seeing Geo start to step it up as of late, and we have seen the reason why they kept Purge. Every single time you watch a Vegas game, it's Purge making some huge plays. It might not reflect in the statistics afterwards, but right. this team has been absolutely on point, and it's the reason they're five and two. I think one of the coolest parts of this team is they are one of the youngest squads, least experienced on land except for one guy. The old man attaches on this lineup. He's played every role from sub to AR, and currently, as that main AR for the squad, he is looking like a top five player in the league, you said, Nameless. 100%. I think this is some of the best Call of Duty, if not the best outside of that champs in AW that Attach has played. He is back on top, and shout out to the Vegas Legion for believing in this guy and yeah. building around him, because this is what he can do, and that leadership extends to the rest of the roster. They're all starting to play well off the back of Attach. After 
after bringing in Gio, this squad has been rolling. Vegas looks to cause the first upset of the day. As you can take a look at our full schedule, we're kicking things off. Vegas with the five seed, taking on Toronto with the four seed. We got Boston versus Subliners. Miami taking on Optic, and we close out the day with LA Thieves versus Atlanta Faze. How many of these games have a chance of going to game five? Honestly, all of them, I think, have the opportunity. The funny story about Miami Heretics is like the rebrand of it being the Florida Curse again versus Optic Texas. They always end up going against each other round one. Well, we'll be talking a lot more about Miami. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, Major 2 continues live from Florida. your game with a scuff save $30 on the official CDL collection at scuff.co slash CDL get better with a scuff the first performance gaming controller visit scuff.co slash CDL to change your game the call of duty week is brought to you by monster energy the official energy drink of the CDL Today, Call of Duty taking over the world with Call of Duty Mobile. And of course, here we are downtown in Fort Lauderdale for Major 2. It's the Miami Heretics Major 2 Tournament presented by Gamergy. Florida, are you guys ready for some Call of Duty today? Oh, we got to do better than that, guys. The vibes are coming. So good. They're waking up. Is the there? Cuban coffee is flowing here in <laughs> Fort Lauderdale. Welcome back, Chris Puckett, Alley Cat, Nameless, and we have four matches on the day from your winner's bracket. Let's get right into things, talking about the hometown squad. Miami Heretics are hosting this major, and they made it into the winner's bracket somehow in the final week of action. And with only two wins under their belt, I can't remember last time we had a team that was two and five making it into our top eight, but you know what? They're hitting their tried these past two matches, even though respectfully it is wins versus the Carolina Royal Ravens and a falling Minnesota Rocker. For Miami Heretics, it was just about getting that scrims to translate to their online matches, and I think we're finally starting to kind of see the fruits of their labor. Yeah, you know, I'm going to tell the feel-good story for Miami Heretics. Lee. Okay. Listen, they had such a good first online stage that points-wise, Chris, they're actually okay, and now they find themselves, they got two wins, they're 6-1 in their last seven maps in those two wins, and now they're in the winner's bracket. If they beat Optic, everything is forgiven for these guys, right? So they make a huge roster change to fix their hard point. Six and five in that game mode, four and one in their last five.
side. Metals has been playing some great Call of Duty. They stuck to their guns. Rio gets added, a map that they should be good at. They start out 0-4 on that map, rattle off two back-to-back -back wins to expand their map pool. So for this Miami Heretics team, it might have felt like doom and gloom for three weeks, but this last week, man, you got to be feeling good out there in winners. And they've been strong in opening hard points recently. As you take a look at the difference from their first three weeks to the last two, Allie, it's a totally different team. Yeah, they jumped from 11 seed to 8 seed, and that's all you can ask about a team in Miami Heretics that is looking to stick to their roster and continue to get better. And not only that, this will be Eric Spoon's first time that we see him on land in the CDL era. And they have a home crowd cheering for them, and they're starting in winner's bracket. So hopes are extremely high for Miami Heretics. The good news slash bad news, you're playing against the fan favorite at your home event. They are taking on Optic Texas, and after stealing the number one seed, Optic officially has claimed the title of the most clutch squad in the game. But this rivalry goes all the way back to the first land. This was round one, remember? Number four versus number five, Miami Heretics versus Optic. The hard point was close. The search was relatively close, and Miami even had the first round of action in the control before Optic took the 3-0. It is the ghost of Dave Patty, and that could take its claws and sink them into Opti Texas here because they have been extremely clutch, but I think what puts the rest of the league on watch is the fact that they can still get better, right? They're the best team in the game right now, and there's still room for improvement. Shotzi has been the best player in the game for this team. He's been on the road. He's been dropping the double digits in search and destroys. He is one of the sole reasons they were even able to push a game five versus New York Subliners and complete their reverse sweep. Yeah, I think uh, Optic's shown this tenacity and, and the way that they got it done throughout this stage is more impressive than if they were just steamrolling a bunch of teams. I, I think them yeah. getting those reps was very important. They did need to work on their search and destroy game. It's what stopped them from getting to a final at the last tournament. Well, what happens? They fixed a lot of their search and destroy and they went to a ton of game five. So the experience is there and you can see the result. They played in the qualifier, lost 0-3. But when we got onto land in that first match, they beat the brakes off of the Heretics. So they're confident in this matchup, Chris. Allie you said Shotzi is playing like the best player on his team and maybe the best player in the game. He has been breaking records I left mean, and right. Six different records shattered here in our major two calls. I mean, just destroyed. And this is all respawn records, but like even the way he's been playing in search to destroy, like I would not be shocked if he was able to take one of those as well during this major. All right, this matchup is happening at the top of your winner's bracket. At the bottom of your winner's bracket, though, you're going to see a showdown between LA Thieves and Atlanta Thieves. Phase. Let's take a look here at the underdogs. The LA Thieves have looked like a different team after swapping out half their roster, sending Cami and crew down to challengers. They bring up two fantastic players in Kremp and Nasty. And it looks like that has breathed new life into this squad, a team that sucked at hardpoint previously. Yeah, Chris, they were 1-12 in hardpoint. That is unacceptable. They had to blow it up, so they did that. And the hard point got better, sitting at five and seven, top eight in the league there, the four and three match count. The search and destroy is what has been getting them dubs, top two in that game mode. Up until their last match, they were number one in opening duels. We're talking about a team that was hopeless in the last stage, eclipsing New York and Atlanta Bays in terms of search and destroy early on throughout this split. And Afro in particular, I'm going to highlight for that game mode. Top six in search and destroy, KD, with a 74% win percentage Woo. in his opening duels. That is massive to take the pressure off some of these guys. Ali, big picture here. You look at LA Thieves. A surprise victory over Vegas Legion. They fall to the top four squads, but anyone near them on the leaderboard, it's Vegas who walks away with the dubs. Yeah, I mean, low key. Or, sorry, I LA. I don't hate this matchup for LA Thieves simply because their search and destroy has looked so much better where Atlanta Face have been struggling. And even versus the top teams, they have been keeping these respawns relatively close. They kept it a one hill game between Toronto Ultra, our best respawn team in the game, and Hardpoint. So I think this is a good matchup for them. Nameless haters online are saying Atlanta Face has no. No longer a threat for first place here. Do you believe that after falling to LAG that they could become victims to a second LA team here on land? I, I think Atlanta Face is always a threat to win the championship, but I think they've had a series of second places that have been very tough. They tested some maps versus LAG and they do fall, but that shows the floor of this team at times, yeah. right? Like they got into a bad situation. They're no longer the best search and destroy team. Five and four in that game mode, they lose two to LAG. But one thing that they can always rely on, Chris, is they have extremely talented players and they are unscathed when it comes to the control game mode. We know how important control can be on land. It's a swing game mode. You go up in a series, you win that control, you just gotta close it out. They have extremely talented players. I think they'll have a good tournament here. Ali, I love watching this team slay out. When Obizi and Simp are on one for Atlanta phase, there doesn't look like there's cleaner Call of Duty to be played. Where are they the strongest right now? 
the strongest right now has to be in the ARs in this split. Uh, they have one of the best AR duos, I feel like, right now in the game. And the fact that Draza and Stellium have literally just gotten better somehow. Specifically, though, I'm going to hone in on Draza because he was struggling a little bit during that major one. His non-traded kills, he was not playing his life for his team. And that was causing Atlanta FaZe to really struggle because Simpin and BZ can only trade themselves out but so much when it comes to such an MCW heavy game. So, like I said, Stellium rocking a 1.2 right now, leading over the league, but also Simp, just the consistency out of him throughout this entire stage with a 1.14. Very strong balance across this Atlanta phase squad. Nameless, if they walk away as major two champions, who do you think is the MVP? I'm going to go with MC. I, I think he's really been playing great, especially in control. Like I said, that is their best game mode. Let's give Selium some love. I think he'll take it. Selium could be that guy. He's number one in one of the most exciting game modes, and we will see him in action today. You're also going to see this lineup. It's the East Coast rivalry, Boston versus New York, a battle as old as baseball. Let's start with Boston, though. They got 0-3'd in the last matchup against New York, but they've shown that they've got some grit in their own right. A seam coming in for the second major qualifier. Fires. He's shown a lot of strength in search and destroy, giving them some new aggressiveness on opening breaks. Is it enough for a breach to bounce back today? I think so. I think for Boston, they beat everybody that they need to. It's just when it comes to these top teams that they start struggling. I think it's mostly in the slaying department. They just haven't been able to hang. But for Boston, like, it's just waiting for a seam and Snoopy, right? Like, Snoopy has shown us so much in these moments. It's just about now finding that consistency and that stride when it comes to these majors, Sam. Yeah, I mean, I think the hard point, they started out great. I was like, oh, this was such a fantastic change. And then they lost four HPs in a row. Yep. You know, they get to some game fives. And, you know, this is a team that has not great at SD either. So they folded in a couple of their game fives. I think Boston, probably the most inconsistent team that we have in the league at this point. And like Ali said, I feel like we've been waiting on Snoopy to get to his final form. It has, we have not seen it yet. Squad of fire and ice. Here's a look at the good, the impressive improvements from stage one to stage two. But with the good comes the best. Bad, Allie. Yeah, unfortunately, with the good does come the bad, and it's been a lot of these attackings, like in control and is more defensive heavy, but with some of the maps that they've been putting in this map pool, like they just have not been hanging with the rest of these teams. You can see it's gotten abysmally worse, and as well as their comms have gotten worse when it comes to that hard point. You can see the hold percentage dropping by over 20%. So I mean, that teamwork just clearly hasn't hit just yet. Boston tonight is going to have to match up against a rival from New York City. The subliners come in as a favorite to this match. Matchup. The world champions bombed out, though, of the last major. Yeah. Can they avoid doing that here against Boston winners round one? I will say, Chris, it's not the easiest round one draw. It really isn't. Like, Boston, like I said, they're consistent, but they have some great players on the team they've put it together. For New York, though, across the board, we've seen consistency. Five and two control, eight and two S&D, seven and three in hard point. They got three players who are top ten in multiple game modes. So, for the New York subliners, it's sort of been a perfect storm. You know, it was a slow burn throughout stage one, but they got humbled on land and you know if you remember last year major two they got smoked they came back they they got way better across all the game modes so for new york can never count them out top two throughout the stage i think they can't they will get it done it was a game five round 11 loss to optic that earns them the number two seed not the number one seed how did optic beat the subliners what can boston take away from that uh just in the search and destroy which is insane because kismet has been the best search and destroy player in the game yes. rocking a 1.8 right now so i think that might have just been to a testament to the amount of work optic Texas has been putting into that game mode, but regardless, like it was still around 11. Like these teams were still going to a battle, and I still expect New York subliners to beat every other team when it comes to search and destroy. That battle is coming up at 3 p.m. Eastern. That is noon on the West Coast. But when we come back from commercial break, it is the first fight, number five versus number four. Make some noise. We got Vegas, Toronto after this.
Spice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator. Now available in-game in the Call of Duty Store. Check out all the awesome in-game rewards you can earn for free just by watching the Call of Duty League. What's on tap this weekend? An all-new lineup including a weapon blueprint, emblem, calling card stickers, and XP tokens. Just link your YouTube account now to start earning. For Vegas Legion, our fifth seed to take on the number four seed and reigning champions, Toronto Ultra. I think this is a trap game for Toronto Ultra, truly. Back when they played back in set, split number one, it was a really close matchup. Not only in the hard points within like 10 points, but they 6 0 them on Rio Search and Destroy. And Nameless, they matched up again here in the online qualifiers. Yes, we up to Major 2. How'd that one go? Listen, this was an extremely tight game. I think this is the best matchup of the day. Vegas can absolutely get this upset. The hard points were super close. Listen, Las Vegas have looked fantastic. I think they can take it. Let's take a look at this Vegas Legion lineup. Of course, coming over from from Paris a few years back. Vegas rebrands. They had a totally different roster last year. This year, they build around attached. They had Standy on the lineup, and things just weren't clicking as a whole. Now they've brought Geo in, and this squad is finding success. 
I just want to correct something that I said earlier. Attach I said attachment playing like a top five player. No, he has been the second best player throughout this split right Number two? He has been. He's top four across all game modes, not just top five. He's also averaging over 4,000 damage in each of the in each of the respawn game modes. He has truly been unbelievable, and you can see their improvement throughout the season. The other squad, you know them, you love them. It's Toronto Ultra, and they are ready to walk out. So let's take a look at your maps and modes here for the best of five. Ali, who has the edge? I have to say Toronto, just because their map pool is so incredibly deep, and they got both the hard points in the series that they prefer. But I think for Vegas Legion, getting that high rise in that map five, is they can force it, like this is ample opportunity for them to take this series. It's I disagree. Done. I think these maps are good for Vegas. I think they have the advantage, especially with how Toronto's been throughout this stage. Control Eileen Vegas, game five Eileen Vegas. Even in the hard points, this could get real interesting. It's getting spicy. It's time for our scuff pickums. Let's make it official. Ali, you and I are trailing nameless. Yep. I'm going to make you go first. Oh, Who are you okay. picking today? Uh, I'm still going to go with Toronto Ultra, although I do have faith in Vegas Legion. If there's going to be an upset today, it'll be them. Going Toronto Ultra. I got Ultra as well. Nameless, are you picking your Vegas squad? Listen, if they can play like they did online on land, I know some of these guys are newer. I think they get it done. I'm going with Vegas. I think He's going with it. Vegas. Crowd left. Let us know who do you have in this one as we send it to the stage with Guy Blaze. Thank you so much, Chris. Miami, you guys ready to get Major 2 started? It's been a while, but it's time to heat this stage up. And the first squad coming to the stage knows about the heat all too well. Here comes Las Vegas. Dealing with just God mode attach right now. Attach right off the top of the car. Oh, it's clean. A 1v3. Camaro knocks the one down. Finds his third of the map. Make it four. Let this young man get hot. It's oh. going to be hard to stop him. Finds an ace on the round through the middle of the map. Heard gets the double kill as well. Geo pops off. Oh, okay, Geo. I see you, baby. Nero is all across the map. Seven in a row for him. Vegas Legion clutch up. Three to zero. Miami makes some noise for the Las Vegas Legion. We got Nero, Geo, Attach, and Purge. Ready to go all in. The Las Vegas Legion. Dark horse for the tournament. They gotta go through our major one champs to kick things off. Attach has been a superstar throughout stage one, and the supporting cast has been kicking up as well. Geo, the newest addition, started to fry in their last couple of games. Can he do it on the main stage? Let's see it. Bring out the other team, Blaze. We're about to find out if he can do it, and because the next squad coming to the stage is ready to freeze over Florida and cool us all off. Here comes the major one champions. I love when the news coming in on a day to day. Already know what's happening. Now I gotta shake the A. Big moves, big step up in the right direction. The trip continues. Every double use a psychedelic. I think they gon' need a minute. Look, I'm interested in making ends opposed to making friends. Double bags. I've been paranoid. I've been a safe. Finishing his drink should only take a second. Mark just cut me off. He told me that I go on station 10. Walk out to my own shit on the main adventure. Vinci, my cologne after the show. She told me that shit was a favorite sense. We're in the van of spacious. We can take your friends. What happened next? You can take a guess. Everyone get loud for the Toronto Ultra. of the top four table as we closed out our major two online qualifiers. And now they are set up with an uncomfortable match to start the day. There's no better time or opportunity for them to shut up everybody who has started to raise those doubts. Blaze, it's time for the first match of the major. 
It's definitely time to get this one started, Allie, and it's a battle of fire and ice on the main stage. Help me get Major 2 kicked off right in Miami. Show some love for your casters, Miles and Chance. Thank you very much, Blaze. Thank you very much, Fort Lauderdale. We have got a real treat ahead of us. I think uh, on stats, this one looks like a real close one, Chance. This could be a great matchup. Like the entire storyline we have for Toronto Ultra throughout stage two is they've been working on the map pool. The new maps get added in the mix and they got to flex it just a little bit. And we get those new maps in our first series. We kick it off with the real hard point that both of these teams have been grinding out. And I know that the expectation is that Ultra, they have the edge. They're your major one winners. Look at the maps, man. I got to know, Vegas are going to be a threat. It was an 18-point game on the Rio Hardpoint. It was a nail-biter. Map 5, if we get there, is a high-rise SND that Toronto have played twice and lost both times. And honest to God, you might even have an advantage here for Vegas in the invasion control. So it is a deadly series. If, like, the push from Ultra to deepen the map pool does not work, we're going to find out straight away. A first-round loss for them would be a shocker and something that we wouldn't have seen from Toronto Ultra, I think, maybe ever, Charlie especially on land. You might have to quote me on that one, Reddit. Uh, but either way, it's very exciting to see our Kings of the North migrate south to warmer climates to see how it treats them. Their online run up into the major, not without its bumpy roads. Scrap has been one of the absolute standouts for the Toronto roster ultra, but for the other side, Chance, attach. Not enough love can be shown to Dylan Price. I mean, it's one of those things that Scrap, yes, he is absolutely one of the best, if not the best slayers in the game, but as a well-rounded player, attach has been balling out this year. Mr. Consistent for the squad as well. Bring in new players, throw in old ones, it doesn't matter. Attach is going to fry, and especially on that SD front. That has been Ultra's biggest weakness throughout the stage. Attach a 1.34. That's like the OG Iceman as well. Him and Insight, if we get a 1v1 in SD, dear God, it's going to be such a good time. We'll find out if we do get that. The COD gods have smiled upon us today. We'll see these two players go toe to toe in Rio, first and foremost. That's the start of our series, a double dose of invasion after that. I'm excited though, Chance. I mean, we haven't seen a whole lot of land since the Boston Major. It's been very, very exciting online, but it's such a different environment. That, for me, is one of the more important things to worry about in this series. It's on Geo. It's on Purge. It's the first time under the big lights against the top team. We need to see how they perform. And especially on a map like Rio, where, like, the narrative in competitive Call of Duty is how much the game slows down when you go to land. Rio is an incredibly quick map, so it's going to be fun to see just the pace that these teams are able to bring. I know we talk about how Scrap is an AR player. He's been rocking the third sub all year long on this map, and his slaying numbers have not slowed down at all. Rival MCW for Scrap, it does not matter. That kid can shoot. There's our monster pregame for Toronto Ultra. Hardpoint has powered the team so far. Nine and two, wins on four maps. And as far as things go, Chance, I mean, they're one of the more dominant respawn teams in the game. Hardpoint being the bread and butter. I mean, like a 24-3 in record. That's like oh. one of those things that we actually don't talk enough about how absurd that truly is. Best hardpoint team in the game by a mile even on the map one front these guys have been fantastic but to me that's why rio is the exciting one it's your first repetition on land and i know we talk about it being slowed down but vegas might be that team that can absolutely push the pace as well maybe the slowest player that we've seen on the side of vegas in terms of slaying has been purge when they played against ultra purge was doing the best drop 5600 damage led his team in slaying as well so if you're looking at your weakest respawn player bringing the most to the table Rio, a very exciting map for Vegas. And what an exciting turnaround this could be as well for Vegas, for the entire organization. This is the strongest roster they've fielded. This is a fantastic start from them in the winner's bracket. And for these two young rookies as well, to be the sort of heralds of that Vegas Legion roster, to bring them into the limelight and get them up onto this big main stage. If they can have a strong performance, we will see. Nameless called it on the desk. Very, very interesting to see how it all goes down. We do have a look at our maps and modes once again. This is the entire run of the series for us. And look, obviously, again, if you're expecting Ultra to win this series looking in the map pool if you look at the skid row it is a massive advantage they're undefeated on that map vegas it's not exactly their strongest that's toronto's map pick for the map number four so that one we pretty much know how we expected to go but the other four flip a coin honest to god who knows the rio hard point again in 18 point game the last time these guys played high rise s and d it's still one that we've barely seen either squad actually get repetitions on toronto ultra zero and two on it over the course of the entire year and the invasion control as good as ultra's respawn is i mean right now vegas sitting as the best defensive team in the game on that map that is defensive heavy so the odds might be in their favor the major two qualifiers for a hard point so far while we get the game ready 
Both teams looking particularly solid again for Toronto Ultra. There's a bit of an edge there, Chance. But looking at the break percentages and the hold percentages, neither team, there's too much separating them in those stats. That's what I'm more interested in. That's what we're going to bring to the table today. It just comes down to who's playing better. It's incredibly comparable, too. I mean, again, it was the 18-point game on the Rio, on the map four that they played when they met up in the online stages. It was a crotchy, a three-point game. So these two teams were literally going head-to-head. -head. And it was sort of the thing for Vegas when they made this roll swap. Everybody's on purge talking about how we need to get dropped the role change doesn't make sense they win their first two series in the stage they beat a miami they beat an lag and people are like ah they got more to prove it was the series when they played against ultra that i think the community went oh god these guys can actually play this was their step up against the best team in the game and they were right next to them well now they've had an extra few weeks a lot more repetitions to get through so if they were close before now they're looking to get it done we're almost ready to go but hey going back to purge man he got the loudest cheer coming out on stage here in Fort Lauderdale. He absolutely got the love of the crowd on side. Can he get the love of the crowd in the game, though? We are almost ready to rock and roll, ladies and gentlemen, in to map number one here to kick off major number two, hosted by the Miami Heretics. It's time for some Rio. And the questions we are going to answer very quickly in this series. How can these rookies perform going against the best team in the game in their best game mode? Gio, he's been a shooter for the squad. It is land time, though. Got to bring it to the table. We're going to start it off with Gio. Into the opening hard point, we fly, and it's an exchange of nades just to get things going. P1 here on Rio, obviously, Chance, absolute mania. Uh, there's a lot of ways into the hard point. There's a lot of angles to cover. And so far, Ultra with the opening lead, but it's your boy, Geo, finding his first. And this is the pace thing, too. Again, things slow down at land, so this is the calculated strat. Get in your contest spot and just live as long as possible. So Vegas, very happy with those right side spawns just to take things slow. Attach already pushing out the wings, and right now, Vegas keeping things under control. No flanks coming through just yet. Ultra, they're going to be banging this out for the final 20. They're going to try, but it's the muscle of Vegas Legion keeping it together now. Trades on over to Purge. Finds himself one. That's good enough for now. Over to Nero. Keeps his three spray alive. Makes it a four. There's the contest. Geo dives in the feet as well, and Vegas retain the lead. This is everything you want from Vegas Legion. The perfect opening break. You get the rotation. You settle things as well. And Geo doing a nice job dragging attention back the opposite direction. Nero in the perfect spot to watch the flank. And he just sipped off everything out. Two players in the back. That's going to make it all three. All guns up right now for Vegas. Focus on those back spawns. Perch. Throws a shoulder or two. Envoy, though, cuts him down on land. Geo finds a two-piece. Massive lead right now for Vegas Legion, and they are keeping it going. All of Toronto Ultra coming from the low ground, though. Heads up, play out of Geo. Takes care of Scrap. Attaches in the feet. Gets himself another one. As things are starting to heat up for Vegas. And these guys are messing with their timings, too. Scrap is not prepared for Geo to be hitting towards the middle of the map. And as soon as he gets the kill, wraps back and gets the gunny from the time as well. Vegas right now, this is perfection for a Rio. P1 and P2 on the rotation, though. Ultra trying to keep things stable, slowing the game down, maybe in their favor. Their opportunity to get back in the game. Opportunities come aplenty here in Hardpoint. And Geo once again keeping the roll going. It's the nades from Purge. As now you find yourself into the hardpoint. Another absolute mix fest. But Geo has somehow slipped the net, finds himself one, and the crossfire is now on. Ultra trying to get back into a hard point. They rotate it to first, but it's Purge with the kills. And now, I mean, look, the back spawns are being blocked too by Nero as well. Maybe at least partially. Ultra still have pressure on those back doors, but the timing for Nero on this pinch is going to be key. You see his teammates trying to work through the front. He's made his move, and now Insight feeling the pressure. Plays in the window, plays in the back. The double chow is enough, and Vegas have gotten through. Oh, a big tag. That on, boy. Trades once again, though. Trades again. Ultra come out on top. You don't have the hard point time, though. Yes, Scrap's unable to get close. It's Geo on the time. Covering fire now from Vegas as you keep those players back as Ultra. They finally get themselves in. It's 15 seconds, but it's still contested. I mean, Ultra, they're just looking for their moment of like a nice four man down to get that spark to get back into the mix because Vegas are just simply staying ahead of the game. Nero is so pushed out P2. He's just going to get freebie kills. In this intro time, Vegas are slaughtering them on these rotations. Already a 50 point lead. And frankly, they're just going to run it up. Geo is slamming in his first map. He's having a great time. He's 12 and 5. The haters be damned. Hard point up. Over to Purge. Can he get the second? Nearly takes care of everyone there, but that's a lot of damage. Over to Geo, looking for streaks now. 
100 point cross now for Vegas Legion. Keeping the play going is Scrap though. Slides in, takes care of a pair. Trying to drag Ultra into the hard point. Oh, Kleenex finds two. I mean, finally, too. Like, Ultra right now, they're not even putting pressure on Vegas. The rookies get to be comfortable right now on the main stage. And, like, everybody's shooting hot double digits for almost every single player on the side of Vegas. Ultra break the hill, though. It starts with a Kleenex two-piece now in sight, trying to make the plays as well. But even then, it is not enough. Ultra for eight seconds to scrap on the rotation. Look who is here first again. It is Vegas time and time again. They're still Staying ahead of the game. This is our last hard point in the set before we go back to the middle. Nero's spree done. Looking towards that bridge, the bottom side of it. All Vegas so far. Kleenex wins a big one. It gets attached. Three down for Vegas Legion. The hard point now in the hands of Ultra. The comeback is surely on now. This might be their time. Finally able to crank up the heat just a little bit. Stable the game in their favor. Scrap picking up the two-piece and the other players locking down the middle of the map. And Scrap on the five spree as well. Thinking about the crews. Hyper impactful on this map. But Vegas don't want to deal with him. They're going straight towards that time. Yeah, Scrap's on the other side of the map. The fight is taking place towards the top side. And it's the hard point. That's where the aim of the game is right now for Vegas. Vegas doesn't win the fight. Purge ends the spree, and the hard points in Vegas's hands again. Scrap, good, like, look, couldn't get it done. His teammate lets him down just a little bit. The pressure gets given up, and then Purge just gives him the gunny back inside the time Vegas go, and they've just been maintaining this 50, 60 point lead that they got literally from the opening break. So this has been fantastic. Ultra still fighting to get back in the mix. We know they are capable of a comeback, but still a decent bit of time to go. Oh, well, by no means is this map over. Plenty to go here. Inside winning a big one there, keeping Ultra's foothold on P1 very, very much solid. First go around again, it was Vegas Legion in the driver's seat, opening breaks and the hold. Can they do it again with Ultra now in control? These are the breaks you need though for Vegas, right? If this is Ultra's opportunity to get back in the game, this is why you want to go on these pinches. Nero finds the route, goes all the way back around, and now for Envoy, it is just chaos. Vegas, it is perfect. They get the four-man wipe. They bully Ultra out again when they had to be slow and they had to calculate they still execute Legion right now on point on Rio. Can they keep it going? Scrap pokes a hole. Shut down immediately by Vegas. Insight now in trouble. It's looking fantastic for Vegas League in game. Let's see how it sounds in the comms in just a brief moment chance. I mean, look, you got the rotations too. Everything they're trying to stay up on it, right? You've had one rotation that Vegas have lost and they get the break immediately and they stay on top of the rotation again. It is the clean wipe. It is slow Ooh. and calculated and they continue to fry. That's Nero on a five. Nero on a five and the spawns for Ultra on the far right-hand side of the screen. Oh, Envoy, great shots at range with the rival nine there. We'll get to that listen in a minute. Can Gio get his streaks? He's taken the long way around the scenic route. Someone's on his tail. He's been called out. No cruise missiles for anybody. Yeah, it's a good read by Ultra there and they'll take those spawns in that moment to get the break on P2. They needed a little bit of a gift to try to get back in the game and that is exactly what they received and now the tables have turned. Now the middle map pressure. Kleenex has it under wraps and you try to break through the front. Ultra not letting that one go. Number four though with the spawn out purge. Might be able to gun this player off the hill. 15 seconds of scrap time. Nothing to shy away from. The pinch is there. There's plenty of time to be had. I mean it's a very large lead now for Ultra. 20 and 11 for Nero. He takes care of Envoy. Nearly takes Insight with him as well. But again, over to that P3 hill, a lot of ways in, a lot of ways out. Geo, you've had a great map so far. What have you got? I mean, now it's time to slow things down again. Try to play calculated. The reads are great on the guy for the back spawn. And now he's just a nuisance. Gets some extra damage, but doesn't get the kill. His teammate's so nearby. Nero, he's been on demon time. He gets shut down as well in Ultra. Purge last man standing. Get rid of him. Everybody else now off spawns. These are the dagger spawns to come through. Ultra, solid stuff so far on this B3. We teased you so far with a listener. Now it's time to go and see how the new Vegas Legion sound on land. Can they get the break? Here's a listen in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch the back. I'm 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 I'm
boxes. I'll put boxes on my boxes. Pop up, pick up ramp. Boxes, dead. Pack your time. Take your time. We got some more boxes. It's tight. It's tight. We can wait there. Close around you. 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 Close Left side. That's a big one. Deep left. They go wide. 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 A rise in intensity there from the Vegas Legion comms as the scoreline has grown ever closer. Rotation down and Toronto in position to take the lead. And there is a small disconnect between the comms and the gameplay there for Vegas and it's little things like that that can punish you in a bad way. Ultra, they have been down this entire game, but look at them now. They have just taken the lead. That is a massive moment now for Toronto Ultra. Can they give up the lead? They've now got 30 seconds to go here on the hard point and Vegas have been nowhere near it whatsoever. Scrap in the middle of the map. Can't get any more out of that life. Three members of Ultra now left down low. Can attach and Geo break the point. Insight's been slow in the feed, but he's been stalwart in the defense. And right now you're just trying to hold on. Nice win there from Envoy, but it looks like Vegas able to get the break. 15 more seconds on this hill, but even if Vegas get all of it, it's only going to be for a tie and scrap with 30 kills already. Still putting on that pressure. Pressure is certainly still on. Kleenex alive and kicking in the hill. This is massive now for Toronto Ultra. It's a one hard point game. Word to Alley Cat as now we go back over to P1. Envoy's in position. Vegas have come so far, no way they fall here at the finish line. And I've always making the hard reads too. He started this hill off reading the fullest of full flanks coming through, and now it is all guns forward. Ultra, they can win it on P1, and this setup is looking very strong. They're soaking away. Attach trying to find the break. Still numbers for Ultra on the point. Nero's on a flank. Can he find any more kills? No. Ultra have held it down. That should be game. Final hit now from Vegas Legion. They've got to go. There's nowhere to go but forward. You're going to run into death. That is Dylan oh. Envoy. Perfect. So, trying to dish out a little bit of his own. It's survival time right now for Vegas. They're looking for the rotation, but the bodies are falling. Kleenex in for the kill. Can't get it done. Oh! oh comes down to Geo, who's somehow still alive. Envoy trying to win the map here. No, Purge is there with the coverage. It's not over yet. We go to another hard point, unless Kleenex can make the play. Well, somehow they've made it to pull that off, but keep in mind, it's a flank coming in through Kleenex, but he's going to fall, but Scrap does have that cruise missile. It is the utility off the streak right now that Ultra might use to break this hill. Here we go. Calls it in. This could be the breaker right now. Vegas, they are still shoulder to shoulder. It lands. Last man up, Geo. He's been taken care of. Ultra are in. Ultra with the win. Well, Toronto Ultra answering the questions. Might have been a bit of a slow start, but the turning of the tides, the overwhelming force in the consistency of the gameplay that Ultra always bring rains out towards the end. They were down quite literally the entire game until we got to that 200 point margin. But in the end, it may be just inevitable. A six and one record he saw through stage two in the map ones. They take care of business there. And there is a ton of credit to scrap that needs to be given out because everybody was struggling on the side of Toronto. But that cruise missile you saw, it was the stamp on the game that he earned towards the end. I mean, it was multiple sprees that he was going on, but that is an MVP contender for good reason. Fantastic composure there from Toronto Ultra as we look across the stats. Nothing remarkable. Again, kudos to Geo. Five plus K on his very first matchup here under the bright lights. A really great turnout. But again, Chance, it was the pace. Ultra, they could not keep up with that early Vegas Legion pressure, which fizzled out towards our second set of hard points. Highlights now, boys and girls. What an opener that was. Miami Major's not disappointing yet. And I feel like the listen in actually we had with Vegas was pretty telling because obviously in the gameplay they were doing a lot of things right but you felt that bit of a disconnect of like guys maybe a little bit skittish a little bit tough moments where hey man you just need to stay alive in this moment player says he's trying to dies almost instantly after in so close like on the idea front they were there execution slightly off and if you're slightly off against Toronto well that turns into a map L and I gotta say for Vegas that might be especially punishing the skid row we have for map four I think is the big Biggest advantage we have for Toronto by a mile. I think Vegas basically have to win the next two maps just to be able to force that game five. 
They wanted the real, they wanted it bad, but that just means the series gets even more difficult as we go down. Continuing to roll through our highlight series. We get ready for the next, but we'll see if those next two <laughs> maps are going to be tough, Charles. Let's face it, double dose of invasion. We've got ourselves that S&D and the control after that. Will that be the deciding fate here? If this map one had gone the way of Vegas Legion, we may look back and weep for the fans who came so far to see that 25-point game come to a close. Either way, though, Ultra, massive composure, as is tradition. No matter how far down they were, I think at one point it was nearly an 80-point game. That, for me, was one of the biggest differentials. Looking at the game flow, and there it is, man. I mean, it was not until the very late stages of the hard point the Toronto Ultra made that comeback, and once they took the lead, they did not look back. It was the 250 for the win. Good stuff to them. Again, classic Ultra, compose when they need it. Can Vegas keep the momentum going though? Can they keep playing? And even on the game flow front, that is a pretty good highlight of just your example of like when you're going against the top teams, that you have to be perfect literally from start to finish. Yeah. One mistake, one bad hill, you give away that control and Toronto's a team that is never going to look back. But yes, the math mode, double dose of invasion as you pointed out. And again, on the control front, you do have Vegas right now, statistically the best defensive team in the game, which is fantastic. Matt two though, much more of a shootout, much more of a battle. We've seen Toronto on it a few times this year. They're very strong on it, but obviously we got some demons on the flip side for Vegas as well. Nero, the gun was certainly hot on the map number one. You know, he's going to be bringing that to the table as well. First blood, when he is on point, one of the better reefers we have in the game. We'll see if, uh, if we can get some of these big plays though, because right so far, man, I mean, I don't think the pressure has hit Vegas Legion necessarily as much. It comes down to like a game execution thing. Still a relatively young team, especially when compared to Ultra. Time will tell if that squad can go the distance, but still, if you're a Vegas Legion fan, you are far from out of the series yet. You've got two very tough opportunities ahead of you to try to get back in this, but hey, I'm just happy this is a great series already. That's, that was a banging hard point. I mean, that does answer the question. Like, Vegas, yes, the online to land gameplay, they can oh, yeah. be just about the same, so they're just looking for that little bit of an extra push and maybe to come down to some 1v1 ice for a guy like Attach to show off the good stuff. I'm hoping for that for a, uh, a good old round 11 clutch, but it is going to be a fun map as well. I know Purge, a player that we are going to be consistently highlighting, even when his respawn has struggled, which he's improved on mid stage too. His SND has been on point. So the shot calling and playmaking ability that he has been bringing to the stage uh, as we go into the next map, that is absolutely a player to be scared of. Scared indeed. Uh, I do believe we got a tweet from Dirk, Chance, our buddy Dirk who uh, is asking for us to remove the undershirts and get the hair out. I got horribly sunburned yesterday, Dirk, so I might do it for a later on series for uh, Optic Texas taking on Miami Heretics. The chest hair might be out here in the Sunshine State. Is this the Sunshine State? Yes. Yes, yes. let's go, baby. State. We're in. You already see Ultra again, the, the round one strats that you always have. Got to be very wary of the nades rolling through, the exploding vans and cars that you're dealing with. So got to take your time just a touch. You see the bomb actually in Envoy's hands, going to be roaming down the A street. Everybody else on Ultra playing towards B. So they're trying to show pressure on one side of the map and then swing it back over. And you can see when the pressure is felt on B street, I think Nero and Purge maybe toying with the idea of making moves and Kleenex reading it the entire time. But no first blood just yet. Single bullet would have made the difference there, but Scrap with a lovely angle catches Purge out unaware over the Geo and a real bit of hot water. And he stay alive for a moment. Take this gunfight. Here comes the pressure. Attach on the flank saves his life. The bacon is saved. Nero on another pinch as well. And it all comes down to Insight and Kleenex. Good shots, but not enough. This would be a 2v3 opportunity here from Ultra, but the bomb is down and they are running out of time. And Geo, you can see Red Dot straight through this. He's going to be just in iron this entire time. Very difficult to get through. And of course, in the meantime, Ultra, they have oscillated the map. They've swung the bomb nearly back over towards A, but right now Insight, he's taking his time. Only eight seconds left on the clock, but uh -oh. look at the move uh -oh. there from Kleenex. Able to get you the advantage. You get the bomb down. Geo for the 1v2. Oh, and he's been spied out, I would imagine. That bomb planted. And a little bit of damage, not enough for it. Kleenex now on the cross and Geo in a world of hurt. Surely now. Ultra with the overwhelming advantage. Don't fall prey to the youngster here on his first day in the office. Well, he's made it to the bomb, so now the players on Ultra are gonna have to at least start throwing shoulders on it. Insight gets the intel, though. You don't over chal, and if you do, better make sure you get the kill. Insight to Icy, able to get it done. And make no mistake, that is a big round number one from Ultra. That comes down to Kleenex going for a sprint, getting that kill on attach with only 10 seconds left on the clock. 
a dangerous moment, but hey, for a 2v3, Ultra doing the little things right. And Ultra, again, not showing any mercy whatsoever. Not taking Vegas Legion lightly. They didn't take any unnecessary gunfights in that round. They played the 2v1 very, you know, conservatively, Chance, by all accounts. Kudos to them. It's two for Kleenex, one for Insight. Here we go again. And so painful as well, already having a man advantage that gets tossed away in round one for Vegas. Not easy to bounce back from. Still, it looks like B Street at least going to be that initial pressure or a middle map square of Kleenex and Scrap run straight at you. You get the first blood and attach, though, at least able to trade it out. But that might be an indication of how this map is going to go. Ultra not shying away from the aggression. And you're just barely out of your spawn, already feeling that pain. Nero manages to grab that bomb immediately after Purge's drop. So you're keeping the play and the pressure alive. You're not wasting any time here. Very, very important moment now. Oh, as Nero's been tagged, there's no way he gets this plant down without any more heat. Kleenex now trying to move towards the bomb, but it's Gio on the flank. He might have seen another player out as well. Trades are done. It's a 2v2. Gio did his job. Well, now the problem for the other two guys, though, you're worried about the pinch. Insights behind you. No, Envoy was out front, but the repositioning already there. Envoy taking it from a different angle and attach. I mean, he isn't moved. You can see he is checking every direction. They don't know where the players are. Finally, though, some intel to play off of. Ooh. And just hunts them down as well. Nero out here shooting. <laughs> Yeah, he's on demon time. Let's have a look at his kill cam because he hits Envoy. And oh my word, the tiniest of shoulders just to get the centering there. Nero, what a round. And that's that recognition, by the way, if they got the early call that Insight was the guy by DVD. So as soon as he finds Envoy, he gets the kill, reads the gamer tag, and he's like, I know where number two is coming from. So Nero on point, reaction time, incredible. And a nice round as well that Vegas definitely needed. Envoy with a bomb in hand now. He's going to make a slow move over towards A. Opening salvo of fire. Doesn't amount to too much at the pro level, but damage. A little bit of information. And Kleenex, he's going to crack that door. And in a moment, he's going to find out that Nero has eyes on. Talk about the information on this map. It is every single round. The pro teams are absolutely counting every player on the cross. But in the meantime, Geo just able to get that pick and find the first blood. So he was much more aggro this time playing on the B site. And another advantage right now for Vegas. Now it's just about the commitment. Do not overcommit. If you're going to fall, make sure you get the trade. But Nero, he just dies. No one's there for the trade. We got a 3v3. It's a pick from Envoy. Slowly now. Thinking about the A-bomb site. Kleenex. Oh, he does. He catches a touch out. The Semtex isn't going to land. Purge manages to find Envoy on the other side of the map. A very awkward situation taking place up top as well. There are fights all over Invasion. And so far, Vegas come out on top. That is just enough. Purge with a nice pick. And then attach effectively just bait on that middle tank. His boys pick up the kills around him. And now Kleenex on the 1v3. Good news he has bombed. Bad news right into the irons of Purge. Ahead of the game, knew exactly where to look. In Vegas, that is a very strong round. Maybe a little bit spooky with Nero dying with no trades coming through. You get the first blood, you can back up. But after that, no mistakes made. Very solid defensive round. We swap sides once again as our boys of Vegas with a slight lead now. It's two to one. Toronto Ultra now, defensive round. They managed to win their opening offensive. Let's see how it goes this time round. Looks like Nero is going to be picking up that bomb as well. They've only shown one player on the cross as well, so Ultra are going to know that, hey, maybe one guy over towards B, but even with that information, it's still a double stack on Ultra for the defensive end on the B site. You can see Envoy utilizing that and just being more aggressive and getting in towards Broken. So if you ride back, Ultra have taken space on the B side of the map. Of course, that does mean for Vegas. I mean, you might have a 3v2 around this B site. A lot of utility being used just to get the intel on Scrap, maybe on Kleenex, but they don't connect with anything Ooh. but the kill attach for the first blood. He's now pulled two members of Ultra now over towards that side of the map to try to stop the push. Vegas Legion have found an opening. Kleenex with lovely shots down range there. The nade connects. Nero levels it up. And they keep the life advantage now. 3-2 to two with a bomb being planted at 8. Uh, Kai timing at its finest, though. Attach going to fall. Now Geo needs to start getting active. Nero's going to be calling out to him. Well, I need a little bit of help. He doesn't buy him any time. And for Envoy, well, at least step one was easy reads. But Geo, he's taking the deep route, which honestly, that is the play. He's, he's going to keep him guessing. They've got no idea where he is right now. I mean, Insight's going to hold his line. 
And in a moment, it's all going to be on. Bomb check, no problem in sight. Plays a patient deep corner with that. Ultra find the equalizer. Ample time to get the defuse. A very solid round out of insight. It, that is sort of insane reads on both ends, right? You see Envoy gets that step one check dark. You know Geo is going to be playing for the late flank. Doesn't see him. And insight just picks a pocket of the map. You're never going to read that pressure. So make no mistake, Geo just makes a play. Ultra, though, they are just too smart to let something like that slip through. And... That is good execution on the round. I mean, frankly, this is four rounds where Vegas could have gotten the job done, but it is a battle against Ultra. Their S&D levels up when these guys go to land. Yeah, it makes this sort of ask the question, if you have the advantage against Toronto Ultra, there's still an opportunity for them to take the round. If they have the advantage, there's no way you're winning it right now. That's the way we're playing this search out so far. Still opening salvo. It's that slow B pressure once again. Geo's played aggressive in the previous round. This time back towards the tractor, and you see just a demonic setup inside a cafe. So if Ultra Rap is back towards A, they might be in for a bad time, but that is not going to be the play call. They are crawling up towards Broken. They're trying to work Geo once again, who right now is by himself. Attaches yet to wrap back, but now you see those arrows starting to move. The comms for Vegas on point. The trophy's a little far forward, and now the trophy's gone. Anything you throw now is of danger to Geo. Geo's life. Eyes on. Here comes the fight. Envoy starts it. He's looking to finish it himself. His teammates haven't got too involved yet. Reinforcements yet to get there for Vegas. They're being cut down as well. Oh, the dance as Geo manages to take one with him. 3v3, numbers starting to dwindle, and Vegas are all over the place. And you also have number one on the map, Nero chasing Ghost. You have a, just a deep route by Kleenex, but the comms are there. Attach gets the call out and makes the read for the 2v2, and that bomb has not yet been planted. Attach can see this the whole way through, and Ultra, you're running out of time. This is a very awkward round indeed. Attach, oh, he's not heard that. Oh, he's heard it, seen it, nearly gets the gunny. Not enough, though. And now it's a 1v1. It's Nero, it's Envoy, and there's a matter of seconds left. He's got to plant the bomb ASAP. And Nero has a very good idea where it's going down. He's going to trap him in. There's the stun. There's the free kill. And they get it done again. Vegas right now in their bag on point and everybody doing their job. That was a hell of a finesse kill there from Gio on the tracker because I thought Scrap found the perfect timing to get through. And then after the fact, you heard the comms coming through on the clock. Ultra not giving themselves much room to play with. Very difficult rounds to string together on offense. These teams are getting close, but defensively, both squads right now have been on point. Essentially a 3v1 for Geo on the back of the, the, the forklift. Dozer thing. Just a lot of time bought. Begging for help as well. <laughs> like they are running at me. They're on the tank. Envoy made it to boxes. This is scary. Round up now for Vegas Legion on offense. Ultra defensive lineup across the back of the map. They're not going to push too far forward. It's a 2-2 split as well. No, like, uh, map control just yet. We've seen Envoy get pushed up before. This time playing a little bit further back with Insight. So different duos working together. Attached, by the way, playing just an angle. Attached has got the flank the entire time. So, yeah, one player takes a step too far forward, immediately gets dropped. And now these two players from Ultra have to fight off three right now for Vegas. This pressure is rolling Yo. in. That is not the start you wanted to see. Nero still on point. Insight going to fall. Advantage Vegas. A 1v4 from Scrap, but again, he is a dangerous man to leave alive. He's going down shooting. He's dealt damage to everyone. Geo takes another crack at it. Nero's still behind the bomb. Scrap could get this done. What an unbelievable situation to be in, though. It's a technical 1v4, and that's the round. Vegas. They don't have that advantage. Get away from them. And this is Vegas showing improvements, too. They've lost rounds in the online stages where Attach might be playing more over towards the treehouse side of the map to try to watch flanks. But you leave too much of the map open. This is where Hook daggered them, I think, in around 11 when he got too much map control. Attach says, I'm not playing any of those games. I'll go play showers. I'll play the most deep angle imaginable. And ends up collecting that first blood. And then, my God, did his team deliver over by that B site. Vegas, massive advantage now in this game, and Nero on a four spree as well. A cruise missile on a map like this is almost a guarantee. Oh, we're going. Vegas are flying in towards Cafe. Nero's got himself a spa. Doesn't get the kill, though. Nice shots at Kleenex. Purge backs up. The tactical retreat. You lost your point, man. There's no point in sending his life, you know, away for nothing. Mid-map, Insight getting things going as well as Ultra can start to smell the advantage. Uh, he got in the spot. I saw on the player cams. Try to take a second to relax just for a moment and get ready by the time he does already gun down. Still, though, you're on the attacking rounds. It's not easy. Purge again, able to just get another pick and get out with his life. 
The man has been on point in search and destroy, but there's the setup for the kill. Kleenex there to drop him. And now this A site completely surrounded. They can get this bomb down for free. Bomb down for free. There was a, a trophy in the middle of the map by Tank. That's not left scrap to have to go clear that out. So now the guessing game begins. Where are the remaining two members of Vegas Legion and where are they coming from? And you got cuts all over the place, right? Kleenex is going to be sitting inside a cafe. Scrap oh, I love reads this. the pressure, goes on a full flank, and a play call like this, absolute dagger in the round. And if you thought it wasn't heads up before, reads it to perfection. His teammates feeding him the right comms. And all that off the back of the first blood that I think Kleenex just gave you for free. That's a moment for Vegas where they just dropped the ball. That was a very, very important two kills to scrap there. He started to pull the KD back out of the negative. And again, we saw the streaks he had in Rio. In that first map, he's a player you do not want to get hot. He is a deadly, deadly user of that MCW. Two spree for now. Let's see how far he can get it going. Ultra, one away from tying it up. And honestly, with the way the round went before on offense, Vegas might just go right back towards this B site because even though it was double stacked, they bullied him out. But Spreading out for the moment, going to be playing for Pig. Scrapped down to 38 HP, going to be forced to back down and reposition. Another 2-2 split, though, but I guess it's for offense and defense. This time, Purge is going to be the distant player in showers. Envoy not getting that broken control as well. Playing it very passively on defense is Ultra. In Vegas, you can see the slow approach there over towards A. Yeah, still looking for an opener. Waiting for somebody to just sort of expose themselves a little bit, decently or otherwise. I'm not sure how many players inside just saw on the crosshair, but they're going back and forth. So it's going to keep the counting game a little bit awkward for him. I think the play is on. Kleenex etching forward into the fight. Yeah, 40 seconds on the game clock. It's about time to hit that go button. Towards the middle of the map as well is dangerous. Smoke's out to make the cross, but there's no trophy on the tank. Kleenex going to get it perfectly. He's going to be slowing him down. 30 seconds on the clock. Vegas, you do have to go. You keep it the flank safe, but you're running out of time here. Kleenex could be the absolute man of the moment here as he checks his corner. Holding the line. Nero flies right into it. The push now towards the next. Can't get any more. Purge now keeps the play going. The clock's still running red. 15 to go. And it's inside, though. King of Clutch. You think he's going to get the timing perfect, but now he has to. Get oh! Bomb as well, but not before it goes down. He does have to defuse. He's going against the rookie. This is the clutch moment. The three on the round. Gio, you're up against the king of clutch, and I think you may have been spotted. Attach has to take care of him. I mean, Insight has to take care of him. Get on that bomb. And Insight knows. He saw him the entire way, but now it's about the most difficult gunfight in the game, and Insight doesn't have time to make it happen. Has to shred with the four-bullet headshot. Trying to send it. Forward he goes. Pressure on. The red dot ever closer, but Geo plays his life, plays the time. There's not enough to get it done. Will he get the kill as well? No. Geo, enough to push Vegas to map point. That is a hide and seek aficionado right there. We saw Geo do it on the tractor a few rounds before. This time he gets it done on the tank. That man can dance on the main stage. I got to say, a terrifying moment there from inside. That is a 1v3 that gets turned into a 1v1 instantaneously. But whoever died first in Freezer, give that player from Vegas credit, because if not, Insight kills the guy off bomb in time. But either way, this is map point to tie up the series one to one. Vegas, they came to play. Oh, here we go. One more for Vegas on defense. Ultra, though, far from over. Three rounds in a row could be possible. Geo versus Insight once again. This time, I'm not sure what the hell just killed him there. It would have been the late frag throw. Pressure now on. Ultra with the opportunity to move forward. Here's the check. There's the kill. And Envoy. Oh, did he sneak by? Not enough. Purge is there for it. Not enough for the second as well. It's a 1v3. So many players, they get those kills, and they just sprint right into old P1 and get taken down. Ultra playing no games there in that round nine. Quick first blood, and the round just dissipates. Envoy as well. I don't know if his spidey senses were tingling, but snaps on that player as soon as he kicks open the door. Still, though, map point. One round away for Vegas to tie the series up. See if they can string something together back on offense. This is definitely a team that's had a little more success over on the B site but they have gotten it done both ways. Yeah, so that force free for Insight as well. Keep an eye on that. Cruise missiles on invasion are very handy indeed. Oh, Scrap Again. starts it off with a bang. That's a wonderful first blood. Yeah, they're breaking out the maze for this one. Two rounds in a row where they're getting done off the util just for that early advantage. 
And this is a scary moment right now for Vegas. You are feeling the pressure. You just lost your most clutch player. And in a 3v4, someone is going to have to find and make that big play. But it might just be Envoy in the meantime. He's crept up so far in DVD, setting up for the kill. The Hunter, that is Envoy, gives you a 4v2. Yeah. 4v2. Massive advantage now for Toronto Ultra. They have not thrown away any advantages they have had so far in the map. We'll find out if this one is any different when we see that round 11. Insight now closing in on what could be kill number five in a row. And he's not making mistakes either, right? Gets the couple tags in, backs down, trades coming through as well. Nero, last man standing. He's getting shot from every single direction. 27 seconds on the clock to work with. He has bomb in hand, but that is the only good Ooh. news. That might be better. That is an electric shot, but here's the problem. Vegas, their Call of Duty, they've been playing 9 out of 10, but small mistakes they made on the Rio ended up giving Ultra the game, and that is two rounds in a row. We are handing away those first bloods just to nades, and all that to give you a round 11. You have to play perfect against a team like Ultra. It all comes down to this. One more round, my goodness. Another Vegas advantage. We'll find out if they can close out this time round or if Ultra continue to be the most composed team in the league. There is no stress whatsoever they have yet to deal with. Here we go, round 11. That's a quick back down from Kleenex as well. Again, they were just looking for those frag grenades to come through, but no first blood this time. Atash wasn't shallowing off the rib down the middle of the map. Switching up the tendencies just a tad. Purge as well, some intel. Scrap forced to back down from the nade, but they're just exploding cars, so maybe if they're playing towards A early on, don't have to worry about those explosions. Uh -huh. Scrap's line of sight has been blocked off, and they're going for this bomb plant potentially straight away. Yeah, it's enough to get the bomb down at the very least. A perfect 4v4 retake. Here we go. We could not ask for more. Here in the round 11, the clock is ticking. In 40 seconds, Vegas win the map. And right now, if you're Ultra, you have no information to work with. You're going to have to calculate this round incredibly quickly. There's the first blood, though, for Nero. Nades out, keeping these players at bay. Clock still ticking. 30 seconds now to go. Nero sends it into danger. Oh, it's two there for Ultra. Can't make the mistake, and that might be the mistake that just gets made. Purge and Geo, the two rookies have to clutch. Flying forward, Purge. Check it. Checks it. Gets a bit of damage in. Geo's got to go huge. The, now the number is on. The bomb is being defused, and that is that. Once again, Toronto Ultra. Too composed, too clean, too perfect. And there you go for Vegas. They do everything right until the final moment, and they just give away the collapse. They got the extra damage in. They had time on their side, but the information, what does Nero think? I just blew this guy up with the car. He's got to be one shot. He goes for the child, but there's two ultra players waiting, and Nero and Attach funnel themselves into death. Three rounds in a row where Ultra able to clutch up and get the job done. Again, Vegas, they look good, but they're not perfect, and that's what it takes. Oh, my goodness. Well, 2-0 in the series. Scrap drops 3K worth of damage as well as we look across our stats. An unbelievable match. A great match there on Invasion. That was a fantastic bit of search and destroy from both teams. Good clutches. Very, very solid rounds either side. But your right chance is one mistake. It's one tiny moment and Vegas are punished for it. That is the difference between Ultra and Legion at this point in time. We'll find out though because we're still having on the map to play. But so far, so good for the boys in purple. I mean, it truly was just a, a scam moment, unfortunately. And I mean, again, the Invasion troll, Vegas statistically, best defensive team in the game. You like him for the map three, but even now the situation for them to have to be in a situation to win a skid row hard point. It was already a difficult situation to be in at the start of the series. Now it might be looking like a near impossibility, but we get to test their metal, see what they're made of. What do you do in this situation? Invasion control will be our next map. Skid row if we get there, and God, that high rise can search and destroy, that'd be a lot of fun. Not sure how that's going to go, though, friends. We'll see how everything works out after this very quick commercial break. Major two off to a bang so far. Toronto Ultra up by two. Vegas Legion trailing at nil. We'll find out if they can start to mount the comeback after this quick break. your game with a scuff save $30 on the official CDL collection at scuff.co slash CDL get better with a scuff the first performance gaming controller
Visit scuff.co slash CDL to change your game. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. Look at them Gators. We got ourselves a big match so far to start the day. It's Vegas Legion taking on Toronto Ultra. And if you've just joined us, it's two to nothing with Toronto taking the lead in two incredibly close matches. Uh, incredibly close, yes, but I think Ultra right now, that sleeping giant, just be slowly woken up on this early day right now on Thursday because they got tested on both the maps. They had an 80 point deficit on the Rio that they had to slowly work back from. It was a three to five deficit on the SD where they just put things together. Peach of a nades for two first bloods in a row that they executed. And then that round 11, nice little scam that Ultra took full advantage of. And now 2 0 up in the series, they're going to be as cool as ice. Cool as ice. We'll find out what they're willing to sacrifice here on Invasion Control, map number three. Almost ready to rock and roll into that one, friends. We thank you everyone for joining us at home and those folks in the venue. It's a little humid outside, but it's nice and cool in here. We're having a lot of fun so far. Only the first match of the day, and it's already been a banger despite the, what, 2 0 lead. I think Vegas have sort of like answered the question of the rookies, like on the main stage. They look as good as they did, if not better. Geo had a nice little clutch against yeah. Insight. I'd put that on my wall. However, Vegas were just a small step behind against Ultra in the online stage, and so far, 
far, that has been the story of the first two maps. There's good, and then there is great, and greatness is something that Ultra have achieved. I will say, though, on the sake of control, though, it has been a struggle point from Ultra, more so in Stage 2 compared to Stage 1 for the Invasion Control as well. It's only a 3-3 three and three record that these guys have, so it is not the strongest map we have here from Ultra. And again, on the defensive end, this is truly where Vegas have shined. It's Invasion Control. It is a defensive shootout. They have the potential to force this to a map four. Map four, though, it is spooky. Too spooky to maybe show if you're an Ultra fan. They're not willing to let us get there as we now go into Invasion Control map number three. Defensively, very, very favorable for the boys of Vegas Legion. You got to get through those defensive rounds and make sure you do a little bit of work on the offensive rounds. Capturing segments on these zones, the team with the most gets that final round if we have to go there. Here we go, though. Map three. It's straight day as well. I mean, this is have good stuns, See have it. good nades. If you make your way to this zone, which Kleenex already has, you're feeling great. And even on the cross right now, I think Kleenex is going to be unaffected by any grenades rolling through. He's able to heal back up. And one tick of progress is already success on this A zone. Kleenex going to take it before Purge even decides to chow. Oh, no. And the shots like that, Kleenex, yeah, absolute menace on the map. Ooh. But finally, Geo stops him. But yeah, you'll take that from Ultra. That is a nice opening break. You're going to be now as well. Scrap's going to dip a toe. He's got inside to back him up. So two of your AR players now with that lovely long line of sight as our observing team are highlighting for you there. Here come the rest of Ultra. Three members now. Look at a four. We're going to be stacking this bad boy and hopefully getting rid of it quick. But Nero and Perch have a thing or two to say about it. The battle continues. Yeah, Scrap worried about the flank as well, picking a different position just to keep the guns forward. But you do have Vulture doing a very nice job, keeping things slow, getting the guy off the bridge as well. So you might be able to set yourself up for a quick rotation over towards A. Kleenex has found himself behind enemy lines. Question is, what can he do off the intel? You see in the feed, he's picking up kills. Now he's got Envoy to work with. That's two down, could have been three. Geo though, clutching Ooh. up for the team, and he's able to give you two. That is a moment where right there, Ultra, they do get stuffed. They get stuffed good. Purge with bridge control now. Ice towards the A side of the map. That's a long way to go. Purge has got a plenty to deal with now. Envoy up first. He gets it. The trades are there, though, so that gives you a lane to work with now. If you're a Toronto Ultra, and forward they will go. Nero is about to running a whole host of problem and oh my god he tried to shoot the floor on the way out it was absolute pandemonium attach might be able to pick up a huge multi kill here it's enough to get the damage oh no i was gonna say i got bad news i saw as soon as no! purge died he takes a big look across this stage i think geo might have been having problems someone was stopped on the minimap spinning in circles and okay. i mean an interesting start ultra okay. did get the extra tick defensive clutch up a little bit but it's invasion control why not stretch this out as long as possible. Yeah, well, no, it's not exactly an Arden Forest. You know, we've come a long way. Oh. Look at, <laughs> oh, my heart. I can't we've come think. a long way. Come on. That was only a minute 50. We're good. Well, we're going to run this one back, I presume, because again, far too early in the matchup to uh, to get sort of uh, nitpicking about who had rounds or streaks or whatever there. So, unfortunately, yeah, we did lose Geo in the lobby. He'll get him back in ASAP. But from Toronto Chance, a very, very strong opening. A zone captured. They had a segment or two segments of B. Oh, no, no. B Let me start that again. Captured B. One at A. There yes. we go. Let me restart that sentence. I mean, I really do like the A hits off the opening break, but yeah. at the pro level, it is very much a situation where even if you get the first set of kills, you're not going to have trophies on that second round. You're going to get like wiped off the face of the map. So I think Ultra, as soon as Kleenex got that first tick, they were like, you have fun over there. You are going to die. We're going to go get that other zone quickly. So rank play strats do not always work out at this <laughs> level. But again, even just for that extra tick, that is quite literally the type of thing that decides games at this level. It's a silly sentence, but hey, it's the name of the game. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 is actually the name of the game, mate. As the referees on stage are helping Geo get back into Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. He's one scoosh closer now. Now a full scoosh closer to getting back in the lobby. It's just I don't buy the, the boxes anymore. I don't get to see it. Everything's digital these days, so <laughs> I live in the future. I miss out on uh, some of the actual title names, but the grinders that we have on the stage, Vegas looking for the bounce back. And again, you know, impressive resolve, I'd say, for the rookies that we've seen thus far. Uh, a couple mistakes that rolled through in the s &D, but, I mean, Geo's been on point. Again, yes. nice clutch under his belt. Purge was picking up picks left and right on the s &D. 
And we saw what they can bring to the table as well on the invasion control. But on a map like this, long lines of sight and attach and scrap two players going toe to toe. As stated before, Scrap, one of the best, if not the best Slayer in the game. So his kill production and his damage always going to be just a small step above. But Attach, I mean, he is virtually right there on the KD front, even has that extra edge. So these two players trying to go toe to toe. And maybe Attach might be the guy to wait for like that sort of big pop off moment on the side of Vegas. He's certainly been solid in this series, but we're waiting for that all star MVP caliber player ready to shine. It's, uh, I mean, it's a series away, man. It feels like anything can happen. And this series is far from over again. The way Vegas Legion have been playing, very strong indeed. The skid row is going to be so tough, though. So if you do manage to win this with Vegas, you go up against Ultra on one of the best maps they've got. It's going to be a, uh, a tough one indeed. But if you get to high rise, all bets are off, man. I mean, that's where things get really exciting. I, this is why those first two maps were so interesting on the side of Vegas, because map five, they honest to God might have the advantage, at least on the map front. Maybe not on the ice front, but if they can get there, that would be a, a massive thing in their favor. But again, for that skid row, that is a map where Ultra have been perfect. That is quite literally, if you want to beat them on it, someone has to pop off and have just an unreal performance. There is potential on the side of the stage there for Vegas for those pop-off style gameplays, but it is going to take absolutely everything they have. But see, Geo is back in the lobby, getting ready to load back up for round number two of Invasion Control. And Geo certainly looked pretty solid getting that two piece on Envoy and Kleenex always has to feel nice. First stage, man. You never forget it. First time on main stage. First, first match on the big stage, and he's not put up bad numbers whatsoever. Purge just had his moments as well. So Vegas, again, incredibly close to being 2 0 up in the series here. The series is far from over. But those poor bots in the training range, or the, the firing range training dummies, just getting violated by Kleenex. If you've ever watched the man. His individual perspective, whether it's his stream or if you've ever been lucky enough to stand behind that screen, I can tell you it's one hell of a show. While we're waiting, actually, we're nearly ready to rock and roll, but we have a scuff play of the game, Charles. We've got a little bit of uh, fun to show everyone. It is going to be that round 11 from the Invasion Search and Destroy, and it is going to be an ultra win. And you know how we talked about that, like, slight disconnect in the comms for Vegas on the map one? This is the moment where I think the comms probably cost him. I don't know if he was uh, having a motor mouth moment, but Nero's probably calming. I had this guy one shot. I just hit him with the car bomb. He's weak. Let's go for the chow. But it was two players waiting in the wing. Nero just slides into death, completely baits his teammate, and it blows open the round. So that's a moment where you have to stay icy. You have the bomb clear. Let the play come to you. But on the main stage against the best team in the game, it is not easy to make those decisions and incredibly costly as well when they roll through. So that might be the player to watch, honestly, for the bounce back. Nero, we know when he's snapping, man shoots like a demon. Has to bring that out in full force. The Tuscan Tyrant, all the way back from the Vanguard season, we really saw Nero get things going on that Boston Breach lineup, man. That was, he put on some incredible performances. And there are definitely shades of it here in MW3, yet to certainly get things going, but we're very close to getting the match started. I was thinking back to, you know, Geo's performance so far, chance very solid, but in that round 11, he was absolutely left for dead. Totally alone in a situation, unwinnable. So many little moments again. I'll be thinking about the flank, <laughs> watching these uh, these matches back, and just how close Vegas have come to bringing down the Toronto Ultra Titans. Still got a chance to do it, but they got to go big on invasion control. And even just thinking like long term, whether Vegas uh, win or lose this series, they have clearly shown themselves to be a threat, right? You had advantages against a team like this. I think every single other team right now that is in this venue, whether it be in winners or losers bracket, know that if they're playing against Vegas, they have to bring their Sunday best because they will be taking a task if they do not. So a lethal threat and a surprise force as well. And a lot of credit to the, the staff as well, I'd say, because as soon as they made that first roster change, getting rid of Stanley instead of Purge with stats like we saw, it seemed like an incredibly bold call. But behind the scenes, they saw so much more than we did. And Vegas right now, they have put themselves up in a wonderful stage too. I mean, 50 CDL points they've already collected long term. That's great. But execution on land is a different thing. Here's the stats once again. Statistically, best defensive team in the game. They're on defense as well, right from the jump. Vegas looking to get things done. And now the question from Ultra, do you run it back? You go for the A hit off the rip? 
Might as well run it down. Go for that extra tick. Here we go. Take two here on Invasion Control. And so far, so good. Trades are done. Insight still alive over here by the A Street. But this time, nobody gets into A. Kleenex isn't able to run amok on the inside of the showers and cause a mess. We'll find out what happens now in a moment. The Scrap has definitely seen the heels of Geo, but it's not enough for the kill. The trade's there. Over to B, we're going to go. And it's a solid defense from Vegas. Yeah, and you see a Kleenex right off spawn back over towards that B zone and pushed out past Treehouse. So it is going to be an incredibly slow capture, but an opportunity for Toronto to just play for kills. Protect your teammate. And Envoy right now watching his own dark. He's got teammates to watch over him. And awkward timing, though. And that awkward timing is enough for Nero to get two. We see Ultra still cleaning things Ooh. up in the feed, and that is a 4-0 start from Kleenex. Already thinking about a cruise. I mean, if I got a kill like that, I'd be real happy. You know, he just said, I'm on B, I'm about capturing B very softly and quietly in the dominant way that Ultra do. Scrap unable to keep that play alive over by the A Street. But you got two segments done at B here, one more to go. And it's all ultras. Yeah, and you see his denades rolling through on the B side as well. Tobias Yule Janssen backing down just for a moment because he knows that cruise is in the back of his mind. An extra minute to play with as well. Just under two minutes on that game clock. So much time Ooh. from Ultra, and okay. there is kill number five. If you get this cruise, honestly, with the round is, or the way the round is shaping up, might just be able to call it straight away. He somehow has the foresight. Every single angle he's looked at has found a player. Envoy catches that one upstairs. Number Beautiful. six, cruise missile secured. And now the pressure mounting. Kill number seven as Kleenex starts to heat up. And the way he's backing down, well, his teammates are still getting the kill, so everybody's getting in position. Nobody able to cross. You get the stuns out as well. You can just make it to the zone stop the clock again this is perfect right now for toronto oh. until purge guns you down and purge able to pick up two as well a hell of a moment there from the rookie things could have spiraled out of control i know jeremy studs fist is in the air somewhere right now scrap up close nero damage dealt not enough to take care of purge again a three spree for him right now trying to keep that front line safe and forward yeah pick the right time to start getting the kills on the defensive end still have to deal with the crews and it's still one of those things that if a moment goes by, you can get punished, but Ultra, maybe on that push, bit off more than they could chew. Flew into death, and you're right back virtually to square one. Three players working up the B street. Maybe good news is you have Vegas Turtle just a touch, but for Nero, this is business as usual. DVDs, he'll make this his home. Oh, yeah, man. Trying to hold it down for as long as he can, but Envoy comes on through. Start streaming services, putting DVDs to bed right there. Over to A now. We creep and crawl for Toronto Ultra. 30 seconds to go. Yeah, hiding spots as well there from Gio. Picking tight oh. angles and fantastic shots as well. That is scrap that he just gunned down. So, again, we know the kid is a shooter. We know Purge has some corners. Number seven and eight, Insight and Kleenex working together. And Kleenex, well, can't check it all. Kills get traded out. 13 seconds left on the game clock. And it's looking like Vegas might remain perfect on defense once again. Well. There's an opportunity for Insight, and there it was. Snuffed out by Purge. Good work from him. Six and four on the round. No more shenanigans. We put that to bed. Vegas Legion take the lead. And if we want to keep talking about the moments that the rookies for Vegas have been having, that two-piece from Purge when the guys actually made it towards that A zone, quite literally the difference maker. That could have been a perfect round from Toronto. If you went around like that on offense, that is almost enough for a map guarantee win. The purge there to shut it down, keep his team's chances alive. And now they get their turn to attack. A little bit different, though, on the round number two. If they ever get this break towards A, they will have trophies to work with, but that doesn't mean they'll go for it. Looks like it might be the old standard purge left alone by the A site just to be a nuisance. Everybody else straight towards B. Scrap's got a bit of work to do here. He's flying solo for a moment. Purge's first blood is going to help out Nero as he dancing around. Oh, wow. Scrap fights too. A bit of work is now complete, and the B capture has been completely stunted. Can attach at least close out that first segment? No, he can't. Huge work out of Toronto. Well, Attach was trying to keep up the pressure because if you lose the pressure, you might end up getting spawn trap. Great reads, though, from Geo just to pick up the flank. Scrap, next man in line. Vegas need to make him fall because if you get shut out on defense, it's the same thing on the tick front. You can't afford to have a bad round on D and Scrap right now. Can't get number six, but that is a nice big moment for him and sets his team up for the flank. Right now, Ultra just incredibly annoying. And they're just slowing the pace down. Vegas, you might be stuck in your spawn. Oh, yeah, you're in trouble. And Envoy 
It might not be Dylan Hannon's middle name, but right now he is a living embodiment. Pressure now open on the A side of the map. Flying forward, we've got the opportunity now to get onto A if you're Vegas Legion. And Ultra might have overcommitted. One player falls, and now you get two players stacked on this zone. That is going to open up the pressure completely. And they got the trophy as well, so Ultra have to be quick on this retake. Insight running on a tear. Ooh. He's got the pistol. Geo, though, for two. Alive on the hill until Scrap gets him out, and even on the cross, Envoy is dealing death. Statistically, not a very solid team on defense, but so far, brilliant from Ultra. Lovely work now on the approach towards B, but Kleenex has already managed to get in the top broker. A big deal right now. Vegas fly forward, finding the kills. You've got to guess correctly on the approach and inside finds a beam or two. Oh, Kleenex has been backed up. This might be enough. It is. Geo's in. Dive on the point. Scrap on the pinch. Can he get the fifth? No need. Envoy's there. That's the round. Uh, yeah, this is devastating too if you can't get it done. And how could you when you're flying into death like that? Talk about statistically the best team on defense. That is round win percentage when it comes to dominance. Ultra at their absolute finest. That is option number two of how you want to win these games. Just don't give them either zone. A single tick on the attack and a devastating moment. And a lot of credit to Envoy as well when his entire team is going to swarm that A zone. Envoy can help you out with the pressure, but he turns for the spawn kills at the perfect time to make sure nothing gets given away the scoreboard might be tied up at one to one but right now ultra odds are massively in their favor let's look now to their attacking round a stronger committal here from vegas legion towards b envoys pop dead silence he might be able to cause a tremendous amount of damage oh there's the first big work now a side of the map all good vegas legion now trying to stay alive scrap toe to toe with attach Big moment here. Yeah, Attach is doing a really good job because if you're Vegas, you want to force them and back them down off this B zone. You also have Purge maybe waiting for the timing to go on the flank, but only two players right now for Vegas that are actually defending this B zone. And for Ultra, every gun is here. On to the point. Slow cap. Purge, oh, can't get through. Envoy covers it. Geo now towards the front line we go, but oh my God, it's an absolute hail of gunfire. The firefight is basically done. It's overwhelming force from Vegas Legion. Keep Ultra back for now. Envoy's trying to in and out right now. Just buy some time for the team. Well, Ultra Ooh. can't buy that space, but the space might just be Dylan Envoy. He picks up two, and now he's just forcing players like Geo to turn on the minimap so his team can actually work towards this B zone. You see how concerned Vegas is about this A pressure, but if you give away B, that still might be the game. It's the full stack coming through Ultra. They know they have the tick advantage, and that might be the play that gets that guarantee long term. That B zone, Vegas. I mean, they're just handing it away. Yeah, second segment gone. And don't forget, two cruise missiles on the side of Ultra to play with. That's a big deal. I mean, this moment, too. I mean, I know Vegas are going for the pinches, but that's after the B zone is secured. So the kills are great. The, like, potential to win the defensive round for Vegas, it's fantastic. But that was a moment where they needed something extra. And I think Ultra showed off the distance or the difference between the good and the great. But a minute and 15 to work with. Ultra still keeping that pressure on. Slow approach, good comms from Vegas. Purge is ready for the fight. And it mattered not whether he was ready, it was Envoy right now, and he's shooting immaculately. 17 and 11. Might be getting himself another streak in a moment. Could call it in now just to soften these players up. Geo. Welcome to land, son. Envoy's on a five. Yeah, Envoy built different. Does get caught down on the cross, but you see he's bought his teammates the space. So now the time is being stopped. On the hill, though, Nero wins a big one. But Ultra right now, still continuing to keep the pressure up. Jamie inside might only have five kills, but he's at least in the right spots, getting a couple tags and keeping these players pinned back in their spawn. Toronto Ultra right now, they're just looking for their moment. Wait for these boys to push forward, find a kill or two, maybe call that streak in. Oh, this is starting to look dangerous. Envoy's in the back line. The spawners are still close. You gotta get these boys off the point. Geo manages to save the play for now, but it's in sight. There's the contest. Nades through, not gonna be able to get it done. Vegas, stay alive. 20 to go. Yeah, there's nothing you can do at this point. You're spawning over towards Palace. You got to sprint across the map, and you are just going to sprint into death. But all things considered, again, on the tick front, Ultra just have that extra edge. The dominant round they had on defense is that difference maker so far. So Vegas, this is pressure. They're going to have two rounds to play with. They're going to have to win on offense. Oh, dear. Well, Vegas, they take the lead for now. But if you're following the script at home,
Ultra have managed to do the deed. Got to win that attacking round of your Vegas. The stacks right now, the, the segment captured, definitely in the hands of Ultra. And look and see how they can play this defensive round out. Unless Vegas you do what they do, man. I mean, this could be it. Uh, you get two tries. It's an advantage in the game. It doesn't feel good to be on the attacking rounds, but again, with two attempts, maybe they can pull off something incredible. I know round five cheese has been a theme <laughs> on this map as well. Magical things can happen, but off the break again, Purges, his job is just to be annoying down that A street, buy your team a man advantage on the other side. Double stack coming through as well. So fairly quick progress on the B zone. You get it this early, that's going to be a ton of time to play with, but still we know how these rounds play out. For Vegas, it is going to be a long way to go. Strap in and get ready. 220 to try to string something together. That's a lifetime. That's so long on this map. Attach on his five is complete, though. Geo dancing with insight on the back line. Pressure is there now as Ultra top side of the minimap. That's all them. Will they push the spawns? They are. They're going to try to drive Vegas back into that spawn. Not let them get anywhere near the A side of the map. And keep in mind for these two potential attacking rounds, Vegas is going to be working with. They have to work against a couple of cruise missiles. You see one in the hand of Envoy as well. But there's going to be, a, again, a multi-step process to try to win this game. It is going to be a slow grueler. You get to test their metal, see what Vegas are made of right now. Just trying to get past Envoy, Double Chow coming through. Well, that's step number one, about eight more steps to climb. Well, the Double Chow means both those players were hurt. That means they both have to regen before they push forward. Scrap's going to have awareness of where they are. All those bullets count. Envoy off spawn into the feed. Purge is gone now. Scrap joins them alongside as Vegas have been absolutely isolated on the top side of the map. Kleenex's hands have gone numb on the bottom side. No one's coming close. Yeah, I mean, he's got his feet up over towards Bridge. Vegas, I mean, they're just funneling into some of the worst spots imaginable, getting killed off the cross, running into death, but right now they are sticking to that game plan. Three players have pushed up through the B street and... Slammed. Well, you do all that and players off spawn going to be having to deal with insight and guns up in the back line. A little bit of clearance in Vegas. They are grouped up together. And Nero has made it behind them. Right now for Toronto, they are turtled. Oh, scrap. He might be able to single-handedly bring down the Vegas expeditionary force. But the first of two cruises. Bang. You know, the backside of Laundry Envoy is going to only get information. Not enough to really make the play happen. 30 seconds to go. And look at the spawns. Actually, you have a couple players right now for Vegas. They're going to be closer to H3. Nero wins the gunfight on the point as well. You stop the clock with less than 30 on it. You might have lost your spawner, but you do have help on this cross. No trophy. Geo's trying to find it. Kills in the middle. Nero's on the point. Here comes the hit. Pistol to do oh, he finds one! Not enough to keep the play alive, though. 25 to go. Purge has got to keep it up. You're going to have to make moves as well. Be a little bit aggressive. The Ultra players are pushed deep into their spawn, but with 17 seconds left on the clock, you know, you're going to have to flood into death. you got to make this play happen. you got to make it happen fast. Last one. Scrap gets away with it. What a pain in the ass. Kleenex. The eyes aren't on it, but that's not going to be a problem attached now in a world of hurt. Done. That should be the round. And oh dear, the final round of invasion control we now go to. And the small bit of good news for Vegas, you have burned one of the cruise missiles that Ultra has to play with. The bad news might have another in the hands of Kleenex, and it is still a round of attack. I know they are one of the better defensive teams on this map, but their offensive has not been quite as strong. They've created maybe two moments where there is an inch of possibility, but on this map, it takes a mile. Yeah, an inch ain't enough here in Invasion. Oh, here we go. Vegas Legion have to attack again. Ultra, another defensive stronghold for them. Chance, though, it's not super easy to do it back to back. Eventually, your team, your, the other team's going to find a way in. Vegas, all of their hopes now lie on capturing A and B. And look at the setup on the defensive end from Ultra. Like a triple stack over towards the A zone, just in case things were going to get mixy. But Vegas not even playing with the idea of that opportunity. Purge, though, able to pick up two, and that's three down in the feed. Purge, the constant man, applying this pressure over towards A. Well, now he's got his teammates helping, swarming around the zone. Geo stopping the clock. His teammates have time to play with, but... Almost nobody can get anything done. Nero behind enemy lines, but he is completely isolated by himself. An envoy looking to take him down. The hit fire bullet going to do it. Yep, there we go. Over towards the B zone. 
Gio, it turns inside, inside out, and now you've got the B zone captured. Two minutes and 20 seconds, 27 lives. So Vegas Legion to go on the offense. And I will be so excited if Vegas ever actually start working the A street every time they're working through B. Uh, they get punished. That's the start of the punishment. Envoy is 28 kills so far in this game. And even though Purge wins his one, easy <laughs> trades there from Ultra, a four-man wipe. And it looks like they are just committing potentially towards this B street or maybe some routes being taken. Vegas finally trying to mix things up. Scrap would be the player over towards the bridge they have oh. to deal with is Nero working down B. Scrap against Field. Oh, we now go. And Kleenex is still proving to be an absolute nuisance over here by the B side of the map. It's a straight up line down the middle of Vegas players. Can they find a way forward? Kleenex is going to do what he can to soften them up. Those boys in the middle of the map. Oh dear lads, you're in trouble now. Scurry, scatter. Will Kleenex be able to thread the needle? Impact, no joy. The play's still alive. And now these players for Vegas, and I say these players, well, change it to player. Attach has to stay alive, and, well, he simply cannot get it done. He gets one kill, and there's two players there for Toronto to get the trade. I mean, a small bit of good news. You burn that second cruise. Now everything is 50-50, except for the part where you're on offense on invasion. So it is more like 80-20. Burge now in trouble. His teammates still going That's huge. Three. Nero cuts down two in the middle of the map. There's an opening now to fly through. You've got onto the zone for a brief moment. Nero trying to cause problems. He has options now to wiggle around. Kleenex now causing the damage. That's an opening. Purge has to go huge. Purge taken care of. Over to Geo. They just can't get it done. They can't find those extra kills. Even after the three-man wipe, the trades are just too quick. And Insight putting the pressure on Bridge as well. He's out here challenging. He is buying you some space in Vegas, even though they created an opportunity through the A Street. It is back towards the dagger. They go. Oh, no. Scrap looking at three here. Slides into Geo, keeps his teammates alive and kicking. 30 seconds to go in the series. Envoy finds it up close with the MCW. The numbers are not on the side of Vegas Legion right now, but the placement might be. Oh, a team kill doesn't help. Can Nero keep them going here from the back line? It's a three spree, but the clock is ticking. I mean, that's great centering, but I think he might get shot in the back or Envoy just does it from the front position. And now Purge, he is kind of in between enemy lines with seven seconds on the clock. You're gonna run into death. There is simply nothing you can do. Toronto Ultra, they're gonna get it done in a 3-0 fashion. Welcome to Florida. Not a bad showing whatsoever from Toronto Ultra, but they certainly went the distance there with Vegas Legion. They'll take that as they march further through our winner's bracket, but I think the consolation certainly goes to the Vegas boys. You had this series in a chokehold, those first two maps, and you let it slide. We'll see if that bites them. They'll fall down to the lower bracket. We'll see more of them later on in the weekend, but not a terrible showing from Purge and G on their first showing here on land in the CDL. It's not an easy thing to do. <laughs> I, I, they had the fans on their side from start to finish, though, I'll say that. Look, they had good moments, but unfortunately against Ultra, they just needed great ones. We saw those stats at the end there for the page. Scrap doing what he does best, dishing out damage from start to finish, led the lobby by a country mile. Him and Envoy absolutely feasting in that game especially so on the defensive end. That was the difference maker on this map. It was the dominant round that they had on defense where they spawn trapped them, never took their foot off the gas. And even on those first two maps, I know Scrap, a massive factor in the comeback on Rio. And again, as a team, ultra well-coordinated. They were down 5-3, but they fought right back in the series. Maybe that answers a small question there from Ultra. S&D woes have been a bit of a struggle point throughout stage two, and things were certainly looking scary, but they did ice up in the end. Scrap was a deciding factor there in the invasion as well. 6,736 damage as well. 225, 6, 5, 3, 2. A tight series indeed there. Vegas Legion, I think one of the, I think the, the underdog certainly in the series and the dark horse in the tournament. We'll see how far they can go. They've still got plenty to play for here in the Miami Major, but we'll see, man. I mean, that was a tough show, and dude, it was so close yet so far for those boys. We're almost ready to rock and roll. We've got uh, we've got an uh, interview ready on stage. Blaze, take it away. He's talking to Insight. Thank you so much, Miles and Chance, for the awesome cast. Show some love to the Toronto Ultra, everybody, as they win their first match here in the upper bracket. And I got Insight with me on the main stage, and 
Man, I gotta say, that series looked absolutely surgical by you guys. It's a reason why you're the major one champions. Now, as we kind of dive into it, you know, let's kind of talk about the hard point, okay? Yep. You guys made a 143 to 36 run to kind of close that one out. How did y'all lock it in? Did you kind of feel some pressure when it first started? Because they came out swinging. To be honest, like the game started and like we looked at the score, it was like, it was, we were down a lot and we were like, all right, let's lock in because what is going on? Uh, I feel like it just took us a little bit to get into the game, you know, mm -hmm. first game back on land and stuff like that. So just getting the cogs going. But, you know, we reeled it in, held some good rotations and yeah, made a good run and locked it in. Definitely locked it in. And then you go on over to map number two, okay? They got y'all backs up against yeah. the wall again. But those last three rounds seemed like it was gifted. I saw smiles on your faces with you and the whole squad. How did you feel to be able to lock that map two in and lock it to map three? Yeah, we know we said it was the 5-3 curse. You know, it's a thing in COD. Has been since the dawn of time. Um, but, you know, the, the, to start off, Geo's child me on the tank. I said, he's been doing it every round. I'm going to kill him with an aid. Did that. And then we got the, you know, kept it going. Got to 5-5. Yep. And then, I don't know, they, they kind of just lost their minds and they got the bomb down. They get to yeah. the round. Well, you know, it definitely showed that you guys got the real ice in your veins here on the main stage, okay? The major one champions. What do you want to say to these Toronto Ultra fans who then came all the way down to South Florida to support you? Yeah, you know, I say it all the time, but every time we, when I first started in the league, we had no fans. I think there's like one jersey, like all the way back there somewhere. But, you know, now we have fans that come every event. They show their love. Uh, it doesn't go unnoticed. We appreciate them. Everyone that's watching at home, all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, much love to everyone. All right, yo, give it up for Inside of Toronto Ultra, everybody. Chris, take us away. Congratulations, Toronto Ultra, the first team to pick up a W, and they do it in a 3-0 fashion. But nameless, we were talking about it backstage. This series was so close. Every single one of those games could have gone to Vegas. Yeah, it felt like there was a commanding control of the map on games one and two for Vegas. They had ample opportunity to close out that hard point and the search and destroy. They just fall short. And you just got to tip Toronto, man. That's a championship team. Backs against the wall. They can get it done. Ali, as we take a look at some of the highlights, what was your takeaway from our first series of Major 2? I think Ant set it up perfectly. I think there was ample opportunity for Vegas in this series. Unfortunately, in that map number one, they give themselves such a comfortable lead, and they're outslaying Toronto Ultra. But once those kills started going the purple way, Vegas almost didn't know how to slow down and start working together. Yeah. So suddenly, you're seeing solo chows on these hills. They're not playing a rotation together, and they're just trying to play through these breaks in Toronto Ultra. I mean, you're forget this is one of the best hardpoint teams in the game you give them an inch they are going to take a mile and to your point Allie even with the teamwork that you can see it completely spiraled out of control yeah. on this game three control the highlights you're watching on their offense in the last round they had a lot of opportunities as well we see purge get through rugs Nero get through rugs multiple times they had to take their time they took unfavorable challenges where they couldn't finish the kill get a couple bullets down and then a player on Toronto finds them executes and then they're done so like your pushes they're so valuable when you get pushed up on all Offense. You have to capitalize on it. It is a very tough thing to do, but backs against the wall. Vegas couldn't clutch up and ultimately lose 3 0. Toronto moving forward just like they finished the last tournament on top. They're looking clean right now. Allie, I was just looking at the bracket. Could have a little optic versus Toronto matchup. It's we can see some chaos with head. Vegas <laughs> going down to that elimination bracket tomorrow. One map in. Listen, we're not, excuse me, one match in. I will say, though, maybe the most impressive for me out of this series had to be that map, too, simply because Toronto has been struggling when it comes to the search and destroy. And for Vegas, it's just like, it's such an easy pinpoint of whenever Nero gets in that first blood situation, he's actually really bad at those opening duels because he's sent by himself and suddenly putting his team in an unfavorable situation. But heaven forbid, Attach gets it or Geo gets it. It's almost a guarantee round win for Vegas Legion. So I almost wish the SMGs would slow down just a little bit when it comes to search and destroy. We'll see as they adapt throughout this week. And right now, though, we got to take a look at our scuff play of the game. Let's take a look at that round 11. And Nameless, who do you credit for this one? Are you giving it to Ultra, or is this just a Legion bummer? Listen, I will be honest with you, Chris. I thought that this was actually a terrible round by the Toronto Ultra early on. They gave up the entire map, and Vegas sort of decide, hey, Nero, just go plant the bomb, get it down, and we'll win the round from there. Well, he gets it down, and they're in a favorable position, but their setup was so bad 
They had Geo watch the front DVD, and they had a Tatch watching the exact same thing. Nero gets a kill from inside a freezer and then flies out and throws his life away, and nobody's in position to execute that trade. Geo is too far out of the play, and Attach is forced to chow from freezer door, which is an unfavorable fight. So a blunder of a round, terrible execution. The post plant setup has to be better. Winsight getting two in the final round. He and Scrap picking up those kills back to back was one of the most impressive things I've seen from an AR duo. I mean, that's just the team Ken from Toronto Ultra. Like, even when they're getting out slayed, they will be doing the fun fundamentally right thing at the same time on the same page. It's time to get rowdy, Florida. Let's take a look at our winner's bracket because we still have three more games to go today. And nameless, we now know our first team moving forward to that winner semifinals is Toronto Ultra. They're guaranteed top six from here. Yeah, now good. we go to that Boston subliner matchup. We see FaZe Thieves at the end of the day, and Optic versus Miami is our third match. Okay, so this next match is huge. Like I said, I think it's the one of the games that can go all the way the distance. We'll see the Boston improvements versus New York. And of course, sync your calendar. Legion are back in action tomorrow against the Surge. When do they play? All you got to do is scan that QR code, and you will know get in on all the no alley right yeah i mean it's been five weeks we've been telling you the sink and earn you go to call duty league.com slash schedule or scan the qr code on your screen sugar cuban coffee we're going to a quick commercial break when we come back boston new york it's major two your game with a scuff. Save $30 on the official CDL collection at scuff.co slash CDL. Get better with a scuff, the first performance gaming controller. Visit scuff.co slash CDL to change your game. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League pack. Grab yourself the CDL operator, weapon blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in game now. Whichever bomb site they choose to go to, 30 seconds on the clock, and well, if he's been seen, he will drop off the map. They have time, though. They have time. Who's lurking, though? Who is lurking? Oh, they get some. Hello? That's a. Hello? Oh, 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 wow. Oh, he just gave him a little kiss on the, the cheek. What was that? This? I have no idea. Joe Shotzi is on five in a row, and Empire will win the round. What's your favorite card of all time? Black Ops 2. Um, AW. Who do you think is the best SMG player undeniable all time? Uh, either Seth or Damon. Karma. Of all time? Me. <laughs> Probably Porter or Clay. Porter? Porter or Clay? Porter or Clay, yeah. Very, 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 very valid. You're trapped on an island. What two COD players are you bringing with you? Okay, I'm bringing Krim. Um, and then I don't That's know. That's like a vibey squad. Yeah, yeah. Let me get, bring, give me Shotzi, give me Ant. He's nah, that some is, weird, that like, is the vibe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But early in our seventh circle here, there's still 30 teams left. You don't have any resources. Get to the zone if you can. Win your gunfight. Maze somehow sneaks through. You see a lone noob Spartan running around like a chicken with his head cut off. There are so many squads. This is unprecedented. Being able to see this from the Codcaster is so special. There's our first moving zone. Behind enemy lines. He's getting loose a... early every round. Like... Oh, 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 do a little dance. Make a little love. Who's dead tonight? 
little bit, but composure still there for Gorillas as rotations continue to be the talking point. A little bit of a scary spot oh. as Draza turns on to App off the ground. I don't know how that gunfight was even possible. It's up and about as is tradition. We're gonna fly towards that ring, that first hard point as both teams will jostle for position. New York in first. Over to Selium, who finds two right off the rear, makes it three. Phase will take those points. NYSL has given away one of their world championship rings, NYSL.io. Awesome stuff coming out from our teams. They've got a whole fan award system, and the world champs are looking to celebrate after a very awful major one. This team went in and won six straight games until finally running up against Optic Texas. I mean, wow, you started that very interesting. After a horrible major one, now we're going to see what they're capable of doing in major two. This split has been unreal for them, uh, to be honest. Their search and destroy has been on a completely other another level you can talk about the reverse sweep against optic texas but that's just gonna battle that's gonna go that way i feel like for the entirety of this season we'll get more into new york in a moment but first let's take a look at their opposition we got boston coming in here trying to play spoiler and yeah. nameless i was surprised just last week actually let's start here with new york we've got the subliners coming out here with the yeah. six and one record they lost that round 11 but this team has totally improved it looks like they cleaned up their online game yeah. what was most impressive about the run in the qualifiers i think just the overall improvement. I mean, they're a top three team in all three game modes, the best in Search and Destroy, and each individual is at the top of their game. You're talking about Hydra and Kismet, top two in Search and Destroy. Sib has elevated himself back to being in his prime. He has been frying. He's top two in hardpoint, number one in control damage, and their map pool. They played every single hardpoint map throughout this split, diversifying and trying to become the best team in the game, and you see some of their improvement. Listen, if you win Kyle champs you can have a bad major that is fine the fatigue kicked in and now they are back on point 20 and 7 map count not bad Allie. <laughs> not bad i mean that's what you expect on one of our top four teams i mean again they were on to be until they have to go up against optic texas the only thing for new york for me right now is they are very strong to search and destroy and even though their hard point is at seven and two they're only winning by a margin of like nine to ten points so they're just keeping these things tight so when it comes to the monster energy pregame again they have the search and destroy the search and destroy is going to win them championships but there's also opportunity for them to get caught slipping in these hard points i like that call out one of the best s and d teams named Nameless, is Kismet still the biggest bulldog in search? Oh, yeah. Yes, he is the best search and destroy player in the world. He's right there. Both him and Shotzi had incredible stages. And for Kismet, he's also an in-game leader. He's making some of those calls. And you can see objective focus in search and destroy. Second in post-plant win percentage. First in retake win percentage. Their adjustments, second to none, the best in the world. World class. Controller player of the year in Hydra, some of the best coaching staff members you'll see in the CDL. And of course, the world champions taking the stage now as they get ready for their first matchup in the winner's bracket. They take on a Boston team that they're pretty familiar with. Let's go over to the breach here, Alley Cat. You met up online and it was totally Boston getting wiped here by the subliners. How do you shake off that loss coming into today? Uh, you think it's land. You know, you remember what you were capable of doing at Major One. You know, Slasher was a different beast in that elimination bracket and I'm expecting the same from him out of this weekend and Breach in their past couple of series like they haven't been able to test the top teams too well but they're getting the job done below them so the fundamentals are there and they're slowly but surely getting better with every single step that they take so for Boston Breach you know I think really it just hinges on Snoopy right now I think he's meant to be the superstar for this team and we're kind of waiting to see that consistency from him. Let's take a look at our Monster Energy pregame the keys to victory for this squad how does the Breach get it done Nameless? Yeah what is the strength in Hardpoint, five and five, one and four in their last five. Twelfth in hope percentage and eleventh in break percentage. I actually think that the five and five record bodes well for how bad the fundamentals have been True. for this team. I think they might have some communication issues, and that leads to the inconsistency that we've been seeing. Also, I want to talk about S and D for for a minute here. They've been one of the worst search and destroy teams through two stages at this point, and their first bloods are last. 
in the league on attacking. Asim and Snoopy, those are the two guys you expect to be good at that. They're actually both only getting it at 38% of the time, so they have to improve pretty much across the board. The inconsistencies have just been too bad for the Boston Breach. And here's a look at our Boston players. You've got the world champ, Austin Lidico. You've got the man who used to play with the Cellbiners for that world championship in Priesta. And then, of course, the man closest to the camera. They brought him up after FaZe Black won challengers back in Boston. Asim, now the new SMG. He has done incredible for this team. He came in and did exactly what they needed from him, and that's why they have been slowly but surely getting better. The issue now is they don't have a game mode they really feel completely 100% confident in. It's almost hard point. They're only losing by, like, a 15-point margin on average it's just that they aren't closing out these games when they give themselves these big leads in the start so maybe a little bit of miscommunication in the community in the comms or maybe in the teamwork but i expect a very different boston breach here going against new york subliners if you're looking for an explosive performance out of boston this guy can get you started but look for snoopy to be the finisher they need that young superstar to shine today if you're going to take down the world champs let's take a look at our maps and modes for this best of five and alley cat uh, I love the sub base for Boston, but the problem is, is they have to get there. For New York Subliners, I mean, they have a very deep map pool. So that map number one, Skid Row, is the, they're 2-0 on it right now during the split. So they should go up early in this series. Listen, it's that chunk in the middle where Boston is going to have their opportunity yeah. in this series. Listen, they've had five reps on Invasion Control. We know it's a defensive battle. You get those ticks and force that round five defense, you can take that. They like sub base hardpoint, and Terminal SD has also been one of their better SDs. So that three maps in the middle, that's where Boston Boston has that opportunity. All right, it is time for our scuff pickums, and we've got to make these official. I think we all may be leaning the same way. I got to go with my boys from New York. They've come down early. They met an alligator. They've been to the Everglades. All their necks are red. It's going to be New York getting the dub here, and I think it's a 3-0. I think teams could take some notes from New York. It's like these guys scrim every single day, see each other every single day, stream together every single day, and they still came to Miami early to go to the Everglades together for team bonding. So I have to go with the New York subliners. I think something that would be silly in this matchup is who's going to be the bigger king of the hill because for Boston, it's Slasher who has the most hill time, and for New York subliners, it's going to be Skies. So keep an eye on that time clock. Nameless, you have a three-match lead over us. Do you give Allie and I another chance to come back? I gave you a big chance that last series really picking Vegas, and crazy. man, was it close. <laughs> but I'm going to go with the New York subliners in this game. They've looked way too strong. The world champions are back on top. There we have it. Those are our scuff pickums. We made them official. And of course, you can get your pickums in. Go on over to the Call of Duty League website. Check it out in between matches because we got a good one coming up. We're buying the players an extra 30 seconds. I'm told let's get predictions here map number one I know a lot of people are looking at overs and unders right now Allie if you had to pick one star to lead everyone in the lobby on hardpoint who do you go with I'm going with Hydra what do you mean Hydra Hydra 100%. easy pick nameless you agreeing with this who are you I going like, with I like skies man I think That's he's sneakily crazy. been one of the best ARs in the world throughout this split his game has improved a ton I know Sib's been putting down that damage he's been frying too but skies and land environment where he's vibing I think he could take you know over what's hilarious series. about that is you asked a similar question last major and I said skies and he said hydra and he looked at me and went skies skies I like skies Wait, I've believe. been watching skies the man just rotates early it's the only reason he doesn't have more kills <laughs> let's take a look here at the hard point stats because name was we mentioned it very strong hard point gameplay from the subliners this is the team that can control the response on the other side Boston has had some pop-off games but on average they're getting out slayed yeah you know even looking at the New York side uh, the differential they're second in the league I think it's only to Toronto they've been great in that game mode you know we talked about Sib and how incredible he's been but it's really like shout out to the coaching staff they have a rep on every single map in the entire rotation so they're comfortable whoever they have to play going into a map veto process the respawn I mean they're top three in both game modes so they're feeling real good in this one I think Boston's biggest opportunity here is on this invasion is like you try to get a player to get lost behind enemy lines looking at a seam or Snoopy in this situation because New York's the best rotational team in the game right now. So you're not going to beat them off that early setup. So your biggest chance is try to make a player do like a shot to get lost behind enemy lines, wait for the timing and then play for that break really early on. What do you got for me, Nameless? I will say like to kick things off, I know that Skid Row has been a good map for New York throughout this split, but Boston does get side pick on that. So we know how it goes. You can get put in a blender. Under 20 Real early, like P1 into P2, Boston gets some momentum and they go up 100 points. It could get real interesting. Like I said, the middle three maps, that's the chunk where Boston have a little bit of an edge. If they can steal Skid Row, 
This is a terrifying series for New York. And a lot of people are asking, where are we at in the bracket right now? Well, if you're just joining us, welcome off of work or school. And here is where we are at in your winner's bracket. So far, Ultra able to take care of business in three very close games against the Legion. We now go to the bottom half of that winner's bracket for Subliners versus Breach. And Allie, we're going to finish all of the games there in winner's bracket round one tonight. Yeah, uh, we got four matches today. It is a super Thursday. It doesn't roll off the tongue quite like Super Saturday does. But honestly, I can't wait to see that Atlanta Thieves and LA Thieves match simply because how good LA Thieves have looked in the later half in the search and destroy and Atlanta Thieves showing a couple of weak points. I just, man, what, man? Thieves got cooked what? by FaZe the last oh, time okay. that they played. But FaZe are coming off of a loss to LAG. That would be if they lost to Thieves, probably the biggest upset I've ever seen. Around. And I just noticed here, if we see New York somehow lose again in winner's bracket round one, they draw Minnesota in that loser's bracket. Is that the toughest draw for the subliners potentially? Yeah, you, you don't want to play Minnesota. I, I mean, they went to so many game fives, and honestly, like, they come through, they get that momentum. This is a team that was top four at the last major. We've seen what they can do on land. That's probably the worst draw round one to LB. Allie. Yes? What are you looking forward to for the semifinal? In the semifinal, it's going to be any of our top four teams. I'm looking at maybe like a Texas-Toronto situation. Texas-Toronto yeah. chat. We're going to find out what's going down. In the meantime, let's take a moment and listen in with New York and one of their latest matches. This is our comms up. Nice. Good bro. He's on it. The comms are never more fun than listening in with New York. Is it going to be a fun day against Boston Breach? Uh, not right away. There's not going to be any laughing or smiling, I expect, on the side of New York right away because for them, they kind of got to defend themselves right now with the way Major 1 win and now having that loss to Optic Texas. I'm expecting some fire right and away. And what are you expecting for the Boston Breach comms to be like today? Who do you need to lead this team? I mean, I, I think Asim takes a, he does a good job at leading in like the in-game situations and adjustments, but also Slasher in Search and Destroy. Like that is a game mode that he grew up playing. His teams have usually been great at it. They've had trouble in that game mode. If they can figure that out here on land, this is a team that can upset some of our top teams. So for Boston, I'm looking at Slasher. I got great news, everybody in the venue. There is no more yapping. It is time to start the games. Your winner's bracket continues as we send it to the stage with Guy Blaze. All right, the winner's bracket continues. And this next matchup coming to the main stage is one of my favorite rivalries, and I'm so happy we get to see it in Miami. Now, let's introduce the first team who are looking to mark their territory and put the paws in their opponent. Stand clear, because the dog pound is now open. The vibes are high. Make some noise for the New York Subliners. We got Hydra, Skies, Sib, and Kismet. With a New York state of mind, the Subliners are ready to get it done. This team has so much chemistry. They're always showcasing it in and out of game. They know the person next to them has their back, and they've been executing their roles perfectly throughout stage two. They look like one of the best teams, if not the best in the world. They've proven it on land. It's time to do it again here at Major Two. But let's bring out Boston, Blaze. Let's see if they can do it on land again, and because as you said, Boston they ain't ready to play no games, all right? They're ready to come out this stage and get it done. So without further ado, into the breach we go. You gotta bring it back to Boston. 
last time. Run deep in my thoughts when I didn't have it. Sleeping Up on the floor, it. wishing it was a mattress. This is for now the I'm Hollywood for for the Hollywood the latest and fashions. I'd rather keep it a buck, a hundred if you ask me. I so was trying to pay the bills just like last week. I was trying to sell the like last week. Trying to run plays, running up to the bottom end. It's in my DNA to have hope and make a way. Well, Rocky for the first down low. She's trying to take it off. Big old man from the kills. We need to go back. Not today. Stayed in my lane. This is meant for me. Whatever come my way, this is meant for me. They can't kill him. They cannot kill for him. And I just fall for anything. Miami, give a warm welcome to the Boston Breach. Give it up for Snoopy. the championship mentality the Boston Breach is ready for a victory there's not many people happier on this stage than Slasher to be spawning back in on land Thanos himself now starting in the winner's bracket for Major 2 has to lead the Young Gun and Snoopy to one of the most difficult matchups that they could have pulled in round number one you are better stand clear because Breach is looking to Breach Yes, they are, Allie. And we'll see if Thanos himself can make it to the end game this time. But I'm ready to start the game. And to do that, we got Merck and Maven. Make some noise for him, Miami. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, God, it is good to be back on land, you beautiful, sexy, and incredible people. We get ready to rock and roll here for our second match of day one. Listen, Joe, uh, Major One. Not good. Not good for either of them. Yeah. It was not. But, uh, you know, you've seen some improvements. What do you think about these teams getting better over the course of major two qualifiers? I, I mean, New York, it's obvious, right? I mean, six and one, obviously you have that game five loss. Your S&D has been number one all year, but it's the respawn where I, I think you've got a much better Kismet and that has just led to, I mean, yeah, a great control, a great hard points. As Nameless was talking about their map pool is deep. On the other side for Boston Breach, you're starting in winners. I think that is probably the one good thing, right? You got to the winner's bracket. Obviously not going to be tough here in this uh, first matchup, but you know, your own major starting and losers you lose one match you're kind of out of it can you build some momentum here yeah like i think even going into major one like you were in losers but the fact that there was a home crowd you had that really weird 3-0 over ultra which still makes no sense to me like there was something like maybe a little upset people you didn't really get any great quality wins over the course this thing the win over rocker like look good at the time but now i yeah, I mean, there was sort of maybe there's one team at a uh, major one that could do it. It ended up being Seattle, not Boston. But on the other side for, uh, you know, New York, it's been uh, smooth sailing it's until the last match fighting for that number one seed. Yeah, no, uh, it has been a lot of fun to watch their improvements. I think we all thought it was going to come. You know, you, you make that move in the offseason. We have another match against Parisa, who is uh, kind of the odd guy out after you get that championship. Uh, I don't know if it's bad blood, but I'm sure he wants to smash them going it's into this. pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's not great blood. That's yeah. probably a safe way to put it. But, you know, he probably, you know, even though he bombed out the first one, at least by, well, New York didn't win a map either. But uh, now you get another shot. You know, we've been Parisa fans for a long time. It's been fun to watch New York improve, but there's part of me that's like, I wouldn't mind just Boston putting him in the dirt. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I think for New York, though, they're going to come out with a different mentality with the way Major 1 happened, right? Yes. Bombing out in, in, in two losses. They are going to be extremely focused, locked in, as you can see the chemistry. But here we go. Skid Row, hard point overall. I mean, 4-1 and one for New York on the year, 1-3 and three for Boston. But you're starting on the good side if you are Boston Breach, so maybe a chance here early. Yeah, but... Uh, uh... Remember last time we kind of cast him in that situation, they go up like 100 to 140, and then things kind of come off the wheels uh, when you get to hard point four. But we'll see what they're able to do. What kind of advantage can they get early? Can they retain spawns for that P2? As you already see, like pushing through early, it's going to be Skies trying to get in position. Spawning guy, I think, on the opposite side will be Priesta. So very quickly, maybe a chance for Subliners to answer back on the P2. No, that's just it. Yeah, Skies is going to win that gunfight. And then on the, the hill, you're already going to see what just a seam. So Skies is going to watch Tunnel. If you can find some time here, that would be great for New York. But a, a huge double for a seam now just playing his life. But there is the trade. And Boston kind of know P2 already to New York. So they're going to try to find this scrap time. Not going their way right now. As Hydra's just going to contest this and try to waste their time. Yeah, no, that's uh, went about as good as it could for P2 if your subliners at least. Yeah, 30 or so seconds for Breach. Now, 
with two dead can you make a play seem able to pick up another they start to collapse on this you've got kismet there trying to be the bulldog not able to do it he's going to lose that fight skies suddenly left kind of on an island inside the point you're going to have a one-on-one -on -one here skies snoopy snoopy takes one skies goes for the trade able to do that kind of another one-on-one -on -one about to set up somebody does get underneath skies has got to get there Try and make the play. He's on four in a row, Joe. Yeah, looks like the, the timing was a little bit weird. Jesus is going to back on up. Priest had got through. Just his was watching that cross, but they're able to stabilize. You can already see the white arrows in New York start to rotate over to P3. And I think that was an example of why this P2 is so hard to break. Like, you, more often than not, like, you, you get like three kills. You're pressuring the hard point. You're in a good spot, but the spawns are still close enough. You got enough bodies to throw at it. But now we look forward with 10 seconds remaining on this hard point. We get ready to look at our P3, see if they can swing it back. Skies is going to retain that 4-0 start and maybe work towards a cruise. What do you see on the map, Joe, though, as we get set up here for P3? I mean, you have some good presence here if you are New York, but he does get taken down, so you need a response here if you are Breach. Down 20. Solid setup here. You see a couple of players watching the back alley. Make sure they have apartments as soon as Snoopy spawns up. All right, they know that is the info, but here comes the pu push. First blood was there for Hydra. It's a three on three now, but all the kills going the way of Breach. That is a clean four dead. And now you can really get into a great setup here if you are Breach. Yeah, I think just due to, you know, the early flipping spawns, like put even more pressure on a P3 to make a play. It's five in a row for a seam, though. He's on 10 and three chance for him to maybe earn a cruise but what an answer after maybe an early blunder here from breach you make the play to keep that lead and there's the streak you get the cruise and, you know i know you've been a big fan of him his personality you know his desire his gameplay for a long time great addition to this squad oh no doubt about it yeah you know he can go on these sort of streaks right it's just can he stay this consistent talk to him pregame says he's locked in for today and that streak now this lets you over invest here at this p4 if you are boston you can really grow this lead and then use that cruise to break P5, but we'll see what they opt to do. Here comes a break attempt. Nice shots from Asim. Good trade, great teamwork. You do have Sky still holding Godheady at the stairs, but there we go. Breach right back into it. Yeah, about to hold the gunny from Asim, but just able to snake away. You're still able to find a flurry of kills despite the fact that you get a double there from Sib. So in in fighting, it's Priesta and the boys. Priesta now close to a cruise as well as he's on five in a row. We'll see if he can pick that up, tuck the corner and looking to get a freebie. Maybe a couple of cruises you'll be able to work with. And as you mentioned, P5 is wide out in the open. They could be huge. There's another one. Him and Snoopy making plays inside the hard point. Yeah, that's it, right? You can overinvest now, especially you have two crews. It looks like Slasher maybe to try to offer some position. Does find a pick. You see Sky spawns all the way out. That's going to be Hydra spawning all the way out. So this is not going to be a clean setup for New York the way they would want to. And Boston know this, so they're going to try to pick them apart, then use those cruises to break this P5. Maybe they don't even have to use a cruise right away. And, and you need to just push this lead, close this game out. How many? How often has Breach had an advantage in a hard point? How often have they been up and things have slipped away? It's collapsed. The series has fallen apart. They have got to go for the throat here. The jugular, get the dub, lock this out. And my God, after the cruise, nothing comes through. They get ripped off the map. And now it's the time for the rally here from New York subline. I want to hear a breach can now deal as they throw the haymaker to the cops with Boston breach. He's on ticket. I'll take it. He's going back to time. You're good. We should just hold around. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to help you top mid. You have mid? I have top mid, yeah. I'm holding back out. I'm holding back out. He's already top mid. Top mid. Nice. Come on, chop around. I'm on both. Just holding back out. Nice. 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 I get him. Back, 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 I can look like two double doors, two pies, 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 two I need a tunnel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at Sir Zerk. Don't, don't cut tunnel. Just look serious. Yeah, yeah, no, no. 
Whether it's the newcomer in a scene or the young bucket Snoopy, the Boston Breach boys are making plays, Joe. Yeah, they are. I mean, it's a little bit scary in that listening. They have to use both cruises, but they stabilize at P1. Here is some pressure, though. As Snoopy trying to hang on, he finds three kills on rotation and two more on the hill. So that is going to be a five spree trying to find another cruise. They have been farming. You see in the top left, Kiz 8 and 19, Sim 10 and 17, put in the blender, led by a seam, but everybody else now stepping up for Breach. And this closeout ability has been something that has been lacking for this Breach team, but right now you're getting it done. A seam who has been a role player so often, the route man, he came into this team needing to drop Nukes, he's 27 and 12, building towards a five spree again. He is hitting right now and taking over as you need 20 more points for an upset already in map one and subliners yet to win a map on land. Yeah, and again, I mean, it, it was just such a good job by Breach at that P1 to stabilize because it was getting a, a little bit scary, but they do a great job and they have just carried the momentum again, winning P2, finding another cruise on Snoopy. He's probably going to spawn up maybe a go for to try to close this game out. I'm sure like me, you were thinking after the two streaks came out like, uh oh, here yeah. we go again. But no, a different team right now. Let it go. Pumped to be back on land and looking to make the plays here for the push and pinch. It seemed there to get a kill. Priesta follows it up. Holding on desperately is subliners, even though chance of winning this game so slim may be a rallying cry. Maybe it's starting to heat up a bit as you look forward in this series, but we're not done yet. Yeah, kind of what we talked about. Can you extend this game, right? Try to get the guns warmed up a little bit more to carry on to this series. But there is the break. Slasher Snoopy get on the point now. Five seconds away from winning map one. This is New York's map pick. We talked about getting this sub base such a big deal. And Breach going to do it right here. What do you know? Uh, you get... 42 cruise missiles on a map, you might win it. Like, dude, they were just earning them in ways. But despite that, you know, we saw those moments where a team could do it. Like, I think back when we first joined the team, there was like the high rise control where he was like a five, five spray every time he spawned up. Like, we've seen his takeover ability. He does it here. 28 and 16 leads the way in damage outside of Hydra on the other side of it. Hydra, we know he's going to get his. He's going to get his numbers, but it's all breach. No, it is. Uh, you know, they kind of, I mean, New York do a good job on the, the, the start, right? Get, controlling P2, doing your job, just controlling a lot of that time. But then just the, I mean, P3, P4, that's when the guns got hot, hot for Boston. They do such a good job on that first P3. The streaks start to come in. They can invest more at P4. Obviously, the double cruises don't turn into extra time. But then they kind of calm the game down. We go into the listening. Heard everybody kind of getting fired up. And then Snoopy on that rotation over to P2 was fantastic. No, no, that was unbelievable. I mean, it's funny because I was thinking, you know, as we're in the list, I'm always trying to think what's going to be the storyline we come out. What question am I asking you? What are we going to talk about? The whole time I'm thinking the scene, the scene, the scene. Like, he's making these plays. It's so fun to see how different a player, I guess, he's kind of banned what he's needed to be for this team, this lightning bolt. But then Snoopy just makes insane plays as we're about to come out of it. Just unbelievable there to make sure they hold on to the P2. And I, I think for me, it's just... The resilience, like considering, you know, uh, the flip happens early, right? Like right away. And that's like, uh oh, like is this team gonna unravel? Then you use the two streaks. You're like, uh oh, is this gonna unravel? They keep on fighting. They win the map. That was impressive. No, it was. Yeah, when they needed to stabilize the game, they did. Uh, so just props to this Boston Breach team. At times, that's that's where the top four, right, really, we just saw it in the first match, right, from Ultra in, in Vegas. When there was a, a needed push or needed hold, they found it. But this time, Breach was able to respond versus the subliners, make sure they held on to that lead. And again, just sort of these slow starts on land for New York. Now those thoughts start to creep back into their head. The good thing for them, we're going to an s &D. They're the number one search team in the league. But yes, pressure's on. Yeah, I think you also saw like the uh, you know, kind of like the lightning bolt on the map. Like also just off the map. Like when you think about like Slasher, um, I don't know. He's not going to be like hype and screaming most of the time. Priesta, same thing. Snoopy's he's still a young player. I don't know. He's got the compass quite yet to be yelling across stage. Uh, seems to be on his feet roaring. Like he has been crucial to this squad. I know maybe the improvements haven't been massive, but hell, it's a map one victory. You're ahead in this series. We'll see if they can push it. But no, you make a good point. 
search has been unbelievable for New York since day one. It, it has. No, yeah, and again, these first three maps throughout Major Two qualifiers, you were undefeated. Uh, so two and zero and everything here. If you are New York, you know maybe if you're looking at stats throughout the year, the control may be a little bit dicey. But the control for New York throughout Major Two qualifiers, five and two. The two losses are in Karachi, right? We're not going to be playing there. We're on Invasion. So a lot of good maps still left in this series for them. It's really interesting. Like this is not usually the case. It's pretty rare when it's like. New York's a heavy favorite, right? Obviously. Usually the underdog, it's like, you know, you're thinking two, three, five or something. Like this is one of those weird underdog scenarios where you're like, they need to win the response. And that's just not usually a thing because no. usually if you're in New York and a top team or a top team in general, it's not that often like searches like your card carry. I mean, I know there's been the improvements, the respawns are better, but still, I think it's weird. Like we don't usually I mean, say that. Like, yeah, like FaZe has had that in the past. Yeah, at yeah, times. It's just, just kind of unique. Uh, but I mean, for Boston, it's the game mode that's kind of the best is their hard points. Uh, what, they were five and five. They were one and four in the last five. So you ups, see, ups and see. downs, yeah. but it's kind of been around 50% in pretty much everything. It's just like, when are they going to start to excel in something? See, I, that's a great point though. Cause like how often have we said over the years, you can be 50, 50 in two modes. If like one of them is your carry, you mm -hmm. get, well, okay. If one of the modes you play twice, if a hard point or search, usually if you can get to like a 70%, 75% when the 50, 50, you might win an event or you might get the top three. I get exactly right. And like, maybe the improvements haven't been there over the course of the qualifier, but like sometimes you just need a weekend. Yeah, you need a weekend. You, you just need to get hot. We talk to everybody. Screams are going great, uh, no matter who you talk to. Yeah. Uh, so they're just trying to carry that in into the match. And th again, they've played New York online. They've played them on Skid Row. That was the first match in the series. So just learning from those mistakes and yeah, taking advantage of their setups. That's crazy. Like, I, yeah. Slasher's not listening to someone do their dishes, and the guy's an absolute demon. Locked it, <laughs> locked in on land. But uh, Subliners Breach, we're looking forward to uh, the map two here as we take a look at some of the S&D metrics. And yeah, that's sort of what I was talking about. Like, yeah, a lot of times the underdog is going to be through search, but you don't think that's the venue to excess uh, if you are Breach, just due to the fact that they are completely outclassed. But at the same time, if they manage to win a search, it's real crazy. No, it does. Uh, you know, I will say Terminal S and D is the one map they they have the most reps on, right? I feel like with Boston Breach since day one, we've seen them on this map. This is their pick. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for New York though, I mean they've kind of set the wave. I feel like the last couple of times we've casted them online, sort of their retake ability. They will completely give up bomb sites. They will give up top SCs, allow you to plant that bomb. Boston has to be ready for that and kind of how they want to play those situations. No, nothing pisses you off more than when uh, just simple stuff. Like, you know, you're on offense, you have bomb down, you just have dumb deaths. Like we've yeah. seen some today already. Uh, but like New York's been good at that usually, like not throwing away numbers, not having those bad deaths, not throwing stuff away. It's just the patience, the comms have been there. Um, it's been really, really fun to watch. But search can be a finicky bastard sometimes, Joe. Like oh, yeah. you can be a great search team and People catch up very quickly. We'll see uh, See if it continues. They haven't slowed down. No, it's a chess game, right? A, a VOD review is, is huge now in the CDL. Uh, teams are going to be trying to hard counter, especially Hydra and Kismet, right? They are number one and number two in major two qualifiers, leading the way. They are the engine of this team, finding those first bloods, being very quick to react, find the openings. We'll see what Boston has prepped. Yeah, and you know, you have uh, some SD pedigree, certainly on the side of Boston. I mean, Slasher known as one of the better search and destroy players we've had, like, all time and in his moments when he's at peak, it's unbelievable. Well, yeah, the SD KD leaders, you just mentioned this sort of one in two over the course of major two qualifiers. Uh, that, that's pretty, uh, pretty phenomenal. No, and they're, and they're sub players, right? You see that opening duel percentage 64% for Kismet, right? 53%. If they're both winning opening duels, you you have a really good chance to win the round. Uh, so yeah, they are leading the way. I mean, it's often you'll have two players like from a top team that are in the top five, top 10. Yeah, not one, not, two. Not one, two, no, that, that's unbelievable. That makes me think back to like, I don't know, like that, one of those early, I got up to teams like that first event where Dashie and what, like Dashie and TJ were yeah. like, just both had like a one, six in search. And we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's it's not often. No, and it's been great to see sort of Kismet get back to being himself after uh, major one and stage one kind of leading the way, but let's see. Boston Breach can be on attack first. We'll see what they opt to do. Yeah, I mean, Kiz's stats were weird after the first qualifier major. Like, he was like leading hard point time, like like lowest engagements on the team at times. So I'm like, what, what? <laughs> That's not what he wants at all. Things have improved, but uh, search a little bit different, obviously, and he has been absolutely unbelievable. Well, we'll see what Breach can do early on behind this offense. Kind of a solo hold on the A side. You mentioned how they like to work those retakes. Just going to be kismet, wait by it.
Yeah, let's say you really just have sort of a, a crossfire set up. It looks like Sky's number three, kind of watching below plane. Kismet just watching the cross. It's pretty much all crosses right now for yeah. New York. Yeah, he's not really alone. He, he, yeah, <laughs> only body there, but plenty of uh, gunfire. Yeah, if they go into the plane, four people are going to be shooting yes, through yes. wall bang. But here comes the switch up now. Nades starting to go out. Hydra, a bit of a sneaky position in the top window. And well, Sim's going to find the first blood. He's going to find the first two. There is a trade on the Hydra, but man advantage over the subliners. They've been so good. When they've had advantage, they continue it here. Kismet gets the mitts out, takes out Slasher, now Priesta. One versus three, not going to happen. He gets dropped. Opening round win there to subliners. So far, so good. But uh, as you said, like even though there's been those S&D woes, Breach have they've had the reps and they've had some solid wins here. It's just whew, different story when you're playing against subliners. Yeah, clean round there. Just saw the crosses, saw the setup. Sib able to find the first two. You were down to 30 seconds. You just kind of had to go. Hoping their nade. Stuns found something, but not able to do so. As it's Kiz and Sib leading the way in round one. Solid opening defense. Now let's see what they uh, throw at him on offense. Priest the only one really able to get a kill in that round for Breach. And at a time, it doesn't end up mattering too much. It's an opening kill quickly. It's Slasher with the first blood. You take Hydra out. I mean, that you get one of those engines, as you said, out of it early. Great. You got a great chance to win the round. This is when you got to close out. It's a clean first blood. You take out their superstar. You've got to put them on clamps. Yeah, looks like that stun miss. Slasher is down there, though, so he repositions. And a couple of times we've seen sort of Boston play on this map. What they've done is left Snoopy and playing by himself. He's not in it. Looks like they've just given it up. They'll allow a plant because they have the man advantage, opting to go for that retake. And there is the info from Snoopy's nade. Yeah, that takes a good 100 HP off of Kiz, so he's got to wait, hoping maybe he can get first shots in if a child comes through, but just good patience still. Out of breach. The other two players trying to rally across. Nice peek from Slasher. He's been lurking under playing the entire time. He finds another. It's been all Slasher. Snoopy in the mix now. Sib left by himself on an island. Picking him apart is Breach. Good answer in round two. It all starts with Slasher. He gets a pick, what, five seconds into the round? And I love that they give up playing there, right? I mean, sometimes you, you've seen some people just try to gamble, maybe find one. But New York knows even if they get the bomb down, it is going to be tough to hold down, down a man. So they try to get a little bit aggressive out of the plane, but they get caught. So nice patience out of Slasher, out of Snoopy, able to find those kills. And yeah, equal, equal up the map. See if subliners switch up anything on the defense or kind of a similar crossfire setup. No success from Breach. The first opportunity. Well, we have the controller on screen now. That is dope. Yeah, I love it. You'll see the inputs from the player. So wherever we're hopping to, you got the scuff controller cam there. Uh, it's great. I've seen like I haven't seen it too much. Like we were talking like the esports side, but like from uh, people stream POVs, but it's been playing COD, playing Warzone. There's a lot of fans that like that. It's uh, it's awesome to see. So a new little feature here as we continue in on the action. Because I know a lot of you, you're watching this because you want to play like the pros, uh, even though most of you won't. I'm very sorry. And here's one of these setups, right? So this is just all on info play. Sib gonna try to maybe find one, but he's just gonna back down now. So this is gonna be a retake scenario here for subliners. Once that bomb goes down, there is some players starting to move on over. Skies is close, but it looks like it's going to be a double pinch. They're able to find Slasher. Bomb not planted yet. Snoopy's able to equal things out. Now to this three versus three. Snoopy waiting, lurking, ready to pounce. Like a tiger cat in the night. Finds one. Nice tags in the sim, but not quite able to finish it. Sim gets a kill. Skies follows it up. Priest again. Left by his lone sim. Can he make the play? 18 seconds to go. Not going to happen. Some opportunities there. Subias couldn't quite finish the kill, and things kind of unravel at that point. Yeah, in Boston, I mean, Bomb was down. I think bottom S, he's, uh, or up top three, he seemed trying to get a little bit aggressive. Puts Bomb into a tough spot. You have 20 seconds left. But again, an immediate response from New York for that first blood. As soon as the info is there from Berger, they see two or three bodies. Okay, what is the play? Let's isolate the one player on the flank, and that was Slasher. Well, now that you've seen, I guess we can talk about the next time. We see Breach on offense. Maybe there's any changes they can make. But for now, let's focus on the offense here from subliners. 2-2 Two -two split defensively from Breach. You've got a three-man hit up towards this B bomb site. Hydra, who number two in overall KD. So start 0-3, but 
you still got the round advantage, and uh, that's the advantage of having a strong search team. Yeah, I thought they were going to run through that smoke. It looked like a nade hit, but they decide to back on down, and a seam watching the cross is going to find the first blood. So it looked like it was just going to be a very quick B hit from New York, but something backs them off as maybe they were just trying to throw a fake rat back to A, but nobody dies from Boston, and they find the first blood. Make it the second. It has been all defense here on Terminal so far. Yes, but like, duh, I guess it feels like at least when you're getting ready to execute, if you're breached, that's when you're starting to lose people. Like, you're getting picked up your subliners before the execute's really even started. Yeah. Like, it's been great defense from breach, but we'll see if Skies can't make any kind of play. The team gets another one. Skies, some well. lovely shots. Yeah, he is hitting right now. Two in a row, working on the ace. 20 seconds to go. Attack from down low, two half HP, still hunting, still lurking. He's got a one-on-one -on -one early. Oh, it looks like Slasher just able to get away. Priest now above him hallway. And Slasher just buying time. I got nervous because you saw the rival in Skies' hands. He was going to just back on down. But now they check the bomb. Nobody on it. And well, Slasher able to win it. The first bloods, they're rolling so far for Breach. We'll see if they can keep it going. I, it just feels like Breach, like one of these offenses, like they've had their chances. Like oh, the first round, Sip gets two and it kind of falls apart. But the next round, you really have a chance to maybe make a play, get an offensive round victory. But as you said, all defense so far. Let's see if they change. Well, what's Anything interesting, it's been, it's been no bomb plants, right? It's been either early picks or maybe you get near a bomb if you are Boston. You don't opt to plant it. And the execute just falls apart. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just becomes a mess over by B, basically. It looks like they want to get back to it, though. Trying to work towards B. Up through book quickly is Slasher. Oh, with a nade. With a nade. It's sort of a combo there. So the shots come in. Then they're able to connect. But it looks like Hydra's through. Hydra's hallway right now. Does he give the call out to a seam? No. So Hydra's going to be here for the trade, but he gets a teammate killed. So now it's a two on three. He got a chance to strike first offensively. Slasher, S and D, superstar when he is in his bag and he is continuing now up to six kills in this one. Priest has got the angle. Kismet's beaming though. Suddenly, they it's all Slasher on is. Slasher because Kiz makes the play. And this is one of those rounds, man. You'd love to ice this. Can Slasher get it done? Can Kiz th come through clutch? And the one versus three, he gets eyes on him. Damage in, and the Bulldog takes the round and that is a frustrating one for breach yeah i mean he just comes up as he's and he, he maybe gets a call out from a teammate that one's prone able to catch the first one as we take a look at this replay yeah i think he just gets a calm there's one already there so he guns priest ready for the next gunfight he's got like seven hp and well they had the intel on where slasher was in spawn watch and flank so he just backs on down repositions 1v3 for kids i mean he never stopped shooting <laughs> that's a, that's what not as easy as it gets a great play but like just right into his crosshair just needs a little bit of a snap and he's able to do it kids i mean that might be the play that decides this map too we'll see because you were doing so much work if you were slashers can't come up clutch in the 1v1 Still leading the way with six. Kids right behind him. You haven't had much success with your sub on offense, but this is the first round you've made it with four people to this point. And this has been the two-man setup, sort of Slasher and Snoopy trying to find crossfires, find timings. Just a question of when to a seam and priest them. Maybe you want to give up B, start to work the pinch. Is that going to happen? Here comes the execute. Slasher with another first blood in the round. While this is going on, look at the middle of the hallway. It looks like Hydra has an idea that there's one here. Does he know there's a second? He does not. So the buzzy, buddy system paying off as Slasher finds his second in the round. And that's fantastic because those are where you can't lose somebody after you get that first blood. Slasher, three in the round. A little pissed off. Yeah, no, I think they, that's like a revenge round there. Hard in the paint, takes three down on the defuse. He should be up to nine now. Just having a monster map, but as big as Slasher was obviously in the round, just how how, how often is there not a trade in that situation? Like <laughs> the fact that you have a second body there, Hydra gets caught before he can dip away and book. Again, just all defense so far. So both of our teams, kind of what we talked about, reviewed, prepped, how they wanted to go go against each other in this map and slasher's on pace for 18 or something close to it. <laughs> See who's gonna find the opening, the adjustments throughout this map. Thanos looking to keep it going. 
If you get a first look, they close it out this time on offense, but you got to back up. Nate hits, not too much damage. Still 130 here if you're a CMC. You go to Chow out. The information's there. There's two. Those you back down if you're subliners. Kids looks to pop. He's making plays. The rival is hitting, and that's where it's a shoddy up close. Slasher versus Kids continues. Again, just as soon as there is info on where this team is going, there is an immediate response. Whoa! But they all line up almost. You had Snoopy. Almost fine three, able to take down two. Kids was still in the cockpit. That got scary. Yeah, it sure did. It's getting wild. Oh, and the person who finds a kill is Skies. With a wall bang, one I did not through. think that's who killed him. Honestly, no. in the moment, that, that's what, where I thought it came from. Skies. Maybe bailing him out of a scary moment, but uh, yeah, he had massive numbers there if you were subliners. But it's been Slasher. It has been Kids. Seven for Kids. Nine for Slasher. You've got, what, three or four first bloods if you're Slasher as well. He's done it defensively so many times. Can he do it again? Spreading it out on offense if you are subliners. Up around. It's run Slasher's POV as he's been getting info, he's been hitting shots, and he has been making plays. Yeah, you kind of have info on both sides here, right? Over towards Burger, there's some players. And it looks like maybe they're going to try to find and isolate Sib on the pinch. As Priest and Asim start to work this, and there we go, another first blood as Asim able to get burger control. Here's the next Chal. He was winning a lot in map one, able to back him down. On the other side of the map, Hydra, he finds the opening. This is what he does so well. And this is that situation where last time you had two people, you were able to trade, you keep numbers. This time you can't. You let Hydra start to get going. He started at 0-3, now up to 3-7. and 7. The complete opposite of that here is Kiz, though. He's got one underneath and still lurking. Goes, catch him with a nade in hand. Snoopy's going to drop. The nade goes up, maybe hits his teammate, but they're still here and waiting. Bomb planted. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, Snoopy was the one man, right? But uh, maybe he hears him start to hold that nade, start to cook it. Finally, a bomb planted, a man advantage for an attacking team. Hydra under the stairs. There is the trade, but all of a sudden, we're to a 1v1, and Sky's able to win it to give them the two-round advantage. It just had, again, it's like back to back it, happened it happened so, so fast, and then I'm like, okay, this guy's got to kill. Yeah. <laughs> Round done. But my God. It like, slows down for a moment and then just hits. That's one of those rounds, yeah, you get the first blood, and then the next two kills go the way of subliners. There's no trade, nothing that happens. It's a, it's a pick from Hydra, then Snoopy gets caught by Kiz. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the kids clutch and that scenario you just broke down. That's the difference right now in having a 5-3 lead. Just little moments, and those little moments are what separate a good search team from a great one. I don't know, they call it breach and a good search, if you know what I mean. This time, uh, they take out everybody, including a seam, but you'll go two for one. You'll take a 3v2 advantage. Yeah, not opting to plant right away. Don't want to get caught on the bomb. And it looks like Sib trying to find the info. He does get caught. Priest with them nice shots. And while well, he snaps on to the second. So Breach, they pick up the pace. They go for a very fast round. Top SGs. And well, they're able to find an offensive win. He had to get one eventually if you're going to bring this back. Fantastic stuff from Priesta. Almost 1,600 damage. In this one, it's six and five. And... You're on match point. You've got to rip off three straight if you are breach. For the most part, been solid on defense. Can you push this to around 11 now? You go up 2-0. I think you're starting to sweat if you are subliners as they're still looking for that first map win on land. And I like this. What they're trying to do here is maybe bait them into that same sort of setup that you got from a Seaman Priest up, but leave Hydra there. Look at him, number four. If they get aggressive burger side, he's going to try to find a kill, and they bait Snoopy on the other side. So just showing some presence there. And, well, there is the bait from Skies and Kiz. Yeah, Snoopy's maybe thinking he has a freebie. That is not the case. Now can you rally? Man down if you're Breach. Not been able to do it yet. The people pulling it back throughout the course of this map, too, has been subliners. Slasher, Asim, the two left up of the two versus three. Slasher on double digits, looking to be the hero. Can they clutch up? You still got to get this bomb down. Yeah, I could come down to this 1v1 right here. Does he guess the right corner? No. Oh, he stops shooting. He runs oh, out no. of ammo with the rival. Actually, still had eight bullets left. Trying to find that player. Slasher does get caught. Is there some help not happening? New York tie up the series. Woo!
They get that victory. They get that win. It's, uh, I mean, it's not the prettiest at times. Like, you're battling there if you were breaching against the best search team maybe in the game, but it starts with, I mean, Kiss is 1v3. That, that, that's one. You don't let that happen. Who the hell knows how this goes? Um, but that play kind of throws this thing the other way. You no, know, it was a fun search and just the way both teams were kind of attacking it early, right? It's 3-3, all defense and the adjustments. Some clutches start to come on through. Uh, even in that last round, just sort of the trap set there by New York on one side of the map and while well, it catches Snoopy. And then, I mean, Hydra's in that corner for 30, 40 seconds, pops out Priest is on the B bomb. So just great search and destroy from New York. Now, phenomenal job. I mean, on the other side of it, you have a hell of a map there. If your slashers can't get, well, get the win, you got to think even you get back to the last land, like Slasher has some insane stats. They didn't play yep. a whole lot of Call of Duty, but uh, some wild stats, and he's trying to continue that here. But the good thing now is, like, I, you knew the search was going to be tough. You knew they were going to be real, real tough here against Subliners. You were at least able to get that map on Wednesday. You're sitting at 1-1. One, one. As we now look forward to the rest of the series, we got Invasion Control, Sub Base, Hardpoint, Invasion Search and Destroy if needed. But so far, it's kind of overall thoughts. How are you feeling? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're happy if you're Boston, right? You're going to get to that, that middle of the series, three and four, right? I think Sub Base is, is an opportunity for them to, to win both hard points in this. It does get scary, though, if you owe map five. Uh, you're you going five or something. Yeah, right? you don't have many wins there if you are Boston Breach. Now, again, a, a lot of prep, a lot of changes go into it, but New York in their Search and Destroy. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, yeah, no, it certainly is. But uh, those of you at home and in the venue, thank you for watching. We're having a blast. We're continuing on here for Thursday. We got four days of Call of Duty action. Best players in the world continue to battle it out for pride. And a giant duffel bag of cash. As Breach looked to answer back after a disappointing Major 1. Subliners trying to bring it back after a disappointing Major 1. We're tied up 1-1. One, one. We're getting ready for a map three. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Upgrade your game with a scuff. Save $30 on the official CDL collection at scuff.co slash CDL. Get better with a scuff, the first performance gaming controller. Visit scuff.co slash CDL to change your game. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. I'm back in my zone now. Back in my zone now. All in can't beat me up, cause I'm back in my zone now. Back in my zone now.
Uh, hello and welcome back. We hope you had a very sexy break. Uh, got a snack, looked in the mirror, just admired uh, that beauty and perfection staring back at you as we get ready to go. Yeah. I don't know what I'm saying, Joe. I'm just excited to be you here. You were running. You were know, running. I You're did. I did. Um, yeah, you know, been hitting the Peloton. Operation Less Fat continues. You look great. Thanks, man. Yeah. You, look, you look good, too. Thank but uh, now we get ready now for the invasion. Uh, talk me through this one for both teams. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, I think Boston, you played it a lot throughout the qualifiers, two and three. Um, your defense has been fantastic. Nine and one in those rounds. On attack, though, you've only averaged 2.5 ticks. So you barely even capture a point per round. On the other side for New York, uh, undefeated on this map, 2-0 throughout major two qualifiers where both sides, yeah, they, they almost lead the lead with like 4.7 takes, I think, on average. So we'll I'm gonna, see if uh, Boston can win it. I'm going to make up a stat, but 87.5% uh, of the time that Joe and I cast Invasion Control, uh, it is all defense, all defense, all defense, all defense for four rounds, and then round five is suddenly some weird shit where someone goes nuts on offense and they win. That's, that's true. That's basically all the time for us. Yeah, it's 87.5. Yes, you're right. Yes. So uh, that's what you should probably expect here in this one. But no, uh, we'll see. I mean, this is this is big in this sense. Uh, we know map four, you're feeling OK about Breach. Uh, one map, they might have an advantage. Everything else is going to be an upset really along the way if you're going to be able to get it done. Um, subliners, you know, you, you struggled across your respawns for the most part throughout uh, the early parts of this title. but. Bit by bit, you improved. Now, are you on the level of maybe your, your, your optic, your phase, your ultra, when you talk about response? I don't know if we're convinced yet because it's been a short period here, about of a month where the improvements have come, but improvements nonetheless. No, just that. Yeah, you see right there the stats again, five and two throughout major two qualifiers, but those two losses are on Karachi. We're not playing Karachi. We're playing Invasion Control yep. where they are two and oh, so. Should be a battle again between both of these teams, but if anything like map number one, I mean, the Boston Breach is shooting well. They cooled down a bit. Maybe New York warmed up throughout that map too a little bit more. If we get back into the respawns, as we get deeper into this series, I mean, uh, for me this weekend, man, just who's going to be that, that Cinderella story, that upset? The top four seems so solidified, but is somebody going to bomb out? Who might be the New York of this major? Time will tell, but Breach looking to play spoilers early if they can. Already one map upset. Can they find more? Is Hydra, he's out and lurking. He can make the map his playground. Yeah, he's able to find one, make sure there's nothing over towards A. We know Slasher likes to be that player, that sort of transition guy, kind of lurking on that A street at times for Boston. You already see what Skies is already top. Top Palace, but he does get cut down while his teammates are starting to capture. But decap this B point. They're able to find one player. There's still one more here in Snoopy. To be able to get the one, but the trade there pretty efficiently. Skies, kill, though, they're I gonna go. Nice shots, but uh, he's going to drop you. you. Get the kill back, save one more back garage. Your number's there for a moment. Through the mid cut, you're able to get those shots if you are Hydra, so you lose a man. You try to get lost in the back if you are a seam, and uh, Sky sort of dances on his skull. Yeah, no, I thought they were going to try to get to that point, but I didn't realize Hydra was already mid-tank cutting that off. Thought they were going to get through before yeah, that. Yeah, Priest got through, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one gets through. Maybe I thought trying to get on that point, but does not happen. So, so far, so good. And just the attack for a Boston Breach has been struggling on this map. And you can see why. She's not able to get even that B point done. Have Kisman in good position. Hydra Sky's putting shots in. Hydra hasn't died. He is 4-0. and oh. Yeah, I mean, your attack's looking more like a... Our defense right now. <laughs> You're basically turtle up palace side trying to get it out. You got 10 seconds to punch a ticket towards this B point. We'll see if they're able to do it. Not looking good. The big mitts out from Kiz again. I thought he was going to drop another getting his Tyson on, but uh, that'll stall for now. Time will dwindle. You, uh, there was a moment, a moment maybe. One. A made up moment. When, 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 when Skies died, like back tank, like maybe an opportunity to get on A. Outside of that, you just got clobbered. And then you have two five streaks you're carrying into this. So how, how bad do you want to try to play for these, right? We saw this in map one. What, three cruises out of Boston Breach? A chance here for subliners to get two? Was it? It was like five, wasn't it? No, I think it was just three. Oh, I said 42, which I made up. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was sounds, more. It was close to that. I, I thought it was more than three, honestly. Like, hey, we're, they were hitting, but yeah. So you can get a little revenge on the streak side. As you said, two five streaks. Skies, Hydra. Can they get another Hydra yet to die? The French sensation. Looking to keep it going. There it is. 
Six through. Did he hit Sky's number six as well? He does. So that just works. a one-two punch. That works. Nice little bait and switch. I don't know if it's on purpose. Might not be, but it works out as you said. And that is going to be a clean four dead. So already some progress towards B. And they are working up inside our rugs. Hydra just peeking the wrong corner. I see finally takes him down. But a great opening here for the subliners. Yeah, and now with those two streaks, you know, if uh, you efficiently get B, you maybe have a moment to throw one into the fray here, get A. You take an offense, you're up 2-0, you're likely closing out an invasion. If you can do that, your win rate, your chances go up so much if you can take that 2-0 edge. I mean, Slasher's just to get a kill throughout this map. That's how one-sided. Now he is 0-5. He has double digits. You have a 10 spree for Skies. He's finally taken down. Hydra still finding kills. And you only had one player on B, so that just goes up so slowly. You still have two minutes. You're down to 20 lives if you are Breach. You need map control. And you have to get them in a trap, but you're already on A. One body on there just for a moment. First tick not going to come through. One streak coming in right as you lose two players. You answer back with two, which like kind of keeps a little map position for you. The fact yeah. that you don't have to work through maybe B Street all over again. It's not going to lead to progress on A, but it keeps you in this round. You still have two minutes. Yeah, I mean, that's just it, right? I mean, you were trying to combine it with that player alive on A. It doesn't happen, but at least you find two kills. Slasher is finally on the board. He finds his first, but they just get sniffed out. And now Hydra on the eight point. This is so one-sided. That is all four dead for Boston Bridge. And that's only possible because you got two with the streak and still held some mid-nap position. You now got three pushed up. You are so deep by Garage, trying to win some crazy fights if you're Breach. You get one off if you're Snoopy. Halfway to the second bit of progress. You clear it outside of Sib, who's still fighting. Finally, the wall bank comes in. He will drop. So you survive for a moment. But I mean, the fact that, I, I mean, your advantage just thinking about around five is insane if you're going to get a defense. Uh, well, if they're going to survive this round, yeah, with yeah, how true, much true. time they've had to work with, still 90 seconds, oh, you well. have 10 lives remaining. If you are breached, they had players on A that pauses the clock. So th this has been great for New York to set up for the win. Yeah, and that's not that often lives is the scenario on, on invasion, but uh, it might end up being the case. But 12 this... versus nine, some clutch kills there from breach to sort of stay in that battle of attrition if it's going to come down to live. 60 seconds now to go. Asim, quick peek, easy gunfight win. The read there for Sib. We'll see you later. Good night, sir. Hydra holds the cross, though. Finally able to slow down Asim. Now They're the second going streak going to come in. You'll have used both. If you can get a kill, the lives continue to dwindle. It's not able to hit. A team kill comes in at the same time. Things start to unravel here for subliners. You've thrown everything into this. Still, this feels like the longest round ever. Is there still 35 to go? Yeah, I mean, the only thing for New York is at least the crews get you map control, right? So you're past that 50 yard line. Sky's just trying to find the wall bay on a Parisa just back and forth going for that challenge. There it is. Sky's now on the point, pausing the clock. There's the trades. No more respawns remaining. And there we go, all four dead. So it's going to come down to Parisa and Asim. They go all in, does New York, and well, I think it's going to pay off. You just had so much time, so many streaks. You bleed them dry, you get it done through the kills. And that's, I mean, that's where, like, listen, um, maybe the streaks didn't lead to a round win like, through the objective, but when it comes down, it's like a 7v2, and you, you got that double from Hydra. I mean, <laughs> it ends up being pretty big just in the overall life count. And the fact that, I mean, you know how, how different that number looks if you're battling out from Palace all over again. You have to win step one. The fact that they were able to stay mid-map, give themselves easier gunfights from power positions, they're able to keep that edge. Yeah, I mean, that was the key of the second one as well. It's really just, all right, don't peek us, let us get out of Palace. Uh, so they're yeah, able yeah. to do that. Gives them mid-map control, doesn't turn into a kill. Turns into a team kill from an aid, but still allows them to, to work up the map. And now up 2-0. Yeah, sometimes not a kill, just taking everyone's guns out of the equation. <laughs> also effective in a first-person shooter. But just one more round is needed. The offensive woes from Breach. Um, there's going to be a thesis written on it. They have not found any success offensively at all throughout the course of this year or this series. They got to muster up something now because they're going to need a lot of it. Yeah, I see him trying to work something over towards this eight point. Uh, Hydra is 16 and three. He's only died three times throughout this map. He's on another five spree. Boston finally going to be able to get to the B point. 
for a moment was Prisa, but he's playing for some map control, but he's going to get hunted down by Kiz. Here comes the gunfight through the staircase. Not easy. Nope. Prisa able to win it, and that's a big one. So allows his teammates to get past that tank and onto the point. Yeah, this gunfight's not a great time. Sib some tags, able to recenter. Nice job there from Sib to win that one as it got away from him for a moment. And look, you've got Hydra. He's just literally hunting them down in palace. He's running laps in their spawn. Yeah, I mean, they're still trying to find him. Two players still trying to find him. Now he's going to show. Not able to find a kill. I think runs out of ammo. Still trying to find it. But this has been a dominant control. Can they win this one? Maybe without giving up B, it's going to be difficult. Maybe they just give this up and play safe towards A. Yeah, it's just the, the difference in how long the rounds feel versus when you know you've got an objective presence so many times throughout the course of the game, like Subliners did last one. Like, and when you've had none, it just feels so different. But maybe you get the extension, you do. You got a minute 20 to go. Lives, you're still okay. Popping up as a seam. Can he be the playmaker for him? He was in that map one. Priesta gets hit by a stun, so he's going to have to slow down for now. You've got three people working it to see him will drop two as a lone guy by A, and you got to kind of start over here for a moment, but you still have two people fighting. Yeah, I see him just for the gunfight on a Kiz. Kiz was A street. He, he challenges one on one, but you still have some presence here. Snoopy and a seam. Priesta, all go. five we kills. Go. So maybe the, here is the opening, but it looks like New York trying to hunt down Priesta, and that does happen. So now it's all about this cross. It's going to be Slasher deep from A street. Trying to help out Prisa or Snoopy on the point. He's able to find one. Is there a trade inbound? No, it's Hydra. He's able to take down two, snaps onto a third. Yeah, I see, but he gets two, then three throughout the course of that. He's on a four spread. I thought he was making the plays, but it's Hydra that answers. And, well, two kills sometimes more valuable than three when you're on defense. Enough of a presence on the objective to actually get this down to the kill advantage. And they're not really all that close to it, but it's desperation time now. You got a world star. You got to win some wild fights if you are Boston Breach and try to get near this. I see him again with the double, making the play, going big. The map one hero looking to go huge. With Snoopy can't quite get across. Three people collapsing now. Lone on it is Skies. Just trying to get through Skies. Just finessing I from behind. It's unbelievable. There's just a vending machine. It acts as a riot shield there for Skies, and that's map three. How in the world does he find that kill? I mean, the stuns and the nades come through to help him out. And he's just like bunny hopping and shooting over the top. Just buys oh. enough time for his teammates to get into a spot to help him out, get a crossfire in. You just see skies go down, but Kismet was there, Hydra now there. Gets a little bit scary, a little dicey in that round, but the rest of it was all New York, because we don't see 3 O's often on invasion control, but they do it here. Man, it's just the ability to play your life at the end there. Unbelievable from Skies, but what a map from Hydra. Just dominant stuff. I mean, he isn't dying the first round, able to earn a streak, just putting on an absolute clinic. I mean, this is one obviously you're heavily favored if you are New York, but they come in and lay down the hammer. Yeah, I mean, their control, yeah, outside of Karachi, undefeated. So they keep that up here. And what a bounce back just after the map one, just mentally staying locked in. It was a very long search and destroy, just back and forth battle, but now it feels like the momentum back on their side. Yeah, and so, I mean, Slasher literally had more kills in the search than the control, and, yeah. which is not a very common statistic. No, it is not. Ten in the search, eight in the control. Um, but, I mean, that's sort of like the beautiful thing about our eSport at times, though. Um, I mean, I know some downsides to it, too, but the fact that we have, like, such varying modes and, like, you'll be hot in a map one, you just so got a little bit in map two, you're back to a respawn, I got to get it going again. And even though he was... Uh, winning some crazy fights in the map too. It didn't lead to a lot of success here for him. No, I mean, just early in this round one where you, you saw Boston trying to set up these, these A plays. They were shut down and then you were just in the spawn trap. He gave up two five sprees, which turned into a double cruise for New York to carry into round two. And then they use those cruises. They aren't the most effective on the objective, but it gives them a lot of map control, finds a couple of kills. So much time where it comes down to the lives for New York. A dominant round on offense. But now as we start to think forward in this series, what uh, the map four? One that you, you think if you are Boston Breach, like that is your, your chance to strike. That is your hard point pick. That is, uh, you know, you don't have a ton of 
a ton of great maps just based on how the season's been going, but this is one of them. Yeah, I, I mean, you kind of heard Ally talk about it on the desk. If you get to the sub base, like maybe a chance here. Uh, New York's played it four times throughout the qualifiers. It's not a bad map. It's just 50% two and two. So it's not bad. It's not great for them. Breach played it one time. They're one and oh. So not a ton to work off of. But yeah, this is your map pick, which is your map win. pick. Yeah, yeah, I mean, sometimes like as much as the stats overall matter, you know, we don't have all the data for their scrims. And usually it's just, you know, this is their map pick. They're feeling confident. That's the one they want to go to. That's the one you got to take and then maybe get to a map five. Now, granted, you are then, what, 0 and 5, I think it is, if you're breaching the map five. So does it bode well for them right now? No, it does not. But map five sometimes, stats go out the window. The map two search was close. Granted, it was their pick, but we'll see. You got to get there first, though. Yeah, you do. So we'll see if they can win two respawns, two hard points against this subliners team. But it just feels like after uh, map one, Saul just right there. They start to come alive a little bit more and really take over. No, no, yeah, as much as like the map one, like you came out hot if you're breached, you're winning those gunfights, you're getting hot, the playmaking abilities there, the streaks, it's the exact opposite, like you said. Now, can you rebound? Because you got to get slammed. It's, it's like when you're getting slammed in the control too, it's just, <laughs> it's tough like to keep the gun hots because you're just getting caught sprinting at times, taking difficult gunfights, like scrambling because you're running out of time. I don't know what you're taking into this one, but and the good thing is if you're breaching, you got a lot, of, a lot of clutch players, a lot of people with a ton of experience. You've seen and done it all. Yeah, I mean, you know, we saw in the map three stats, uh, you know, Asim kept it up. I think he had like 4,200 damage. It was really the other three who had like 2,000 to 2,500. So you need everyone else to step up here in a map like sub base where one gunfight, one 1v1 can really change the spawns and sort of the landscape of the map. This is Certainly. where you have to focus on those power positions and those key gunfights really come into play. Well, we're getting ready to see some of those key gunfights as we're loading up for this map four. Breach, subliners continue. Subliners just looking to try and shake off that tough major one. They walked out with no series victories. They were the disappointment of that. You're the world chance coming in, all the hype around them, and now you're just trying to build that back up, show what you're capable of, remind people you are world champions. Looking to close it out here. And you know, it's tough too. It's like. You lose this series and you're down to a very tough match and losers round one versus Rocker. Uh, obviously, I know they had a, a rough split online, but yeah, he's still, so many he's still game scary, five though. losses. Yeah, it's, it's just not scary. it's not an easy matchup at all. Yeah, it's like what four or five like, map five losses. Like, yeah, they're still a threat. Just getting to that map five is part of uh, part of the battle. Yeah, some early time here for subliners. As they're able to uh, get on that point, it seemed though able to bounce on back some Gunfights going down as New York just trying to make sure they have the spawns here for P2. It looks like Priest are already able to work up towards the side of P2. So uh, some nice presence middle of the map here for Boston. Maybe a chance to break on through. Hydra almost gets caught not finding that kill. And there we go. Three in the feed. Make it all four for Boston. They do just that, but some close spawns come in. They're not going to be ready for this. As you can tell by Snoopy's point of view. You just think you got the four down. You've got everything you want. Everyone starts going hunting outside the map and the Tommy, the spawn comes in close backside and things fall apart. I mean, that is like, it's like you had such an unlucky little situation there with Hydra. It's like about to be like two or three kills. He just doesn't finish one and things get ugly and then you get blessed a bit. Yeah, well now, I mean, it doesn't even matter. Right there we go, Boston, a great job. Nice resilience. That's a nice bounce back, yeah. Yeah, to find those kills. Now you are on the point. So New York, maybe you go after this one more time. You're going to see probably Sib spawn up, just control top snow. And that rotation over towards P3. Let his teammates just get nasty, get aggressive on this point, and that is the play call. Because now you can see those deep sub spawns there for Boston Breach, and they're just going to have to rotate. Oh, yeah, you're putting on your hiking boots on because you've got a mission towards the next hard point. Only threat here for that opening fight will be a seam. He takes that. They're going to push the roll. One's wrapping the whole way around. So the route man is going to be Priest this time. Taking the deep route. He's able to win that. He's able to get the kill. So nobody going to be on time in the hard point. Where's the spawn come in? Oh, Four sub buyers. It comes in close. You spawn right in the back. So more work to do here if you're Priest. Uh, and you yeah, headshots from a rival. Liai. Yeah, I mean, he's still 8 HP, so nice shots from Priest. I actually thought that just based on the timings and where Priest was, maybe he was going to get to spawn for his teammate, but that doesn't happen. So Hydra and Kiz spawn up, and well, you still have pressure here, though, if you are Boston. 
mean, similar like last time. It's like, all right, tough situation. We thought we made the play. It fell apart. We got to have the resilience to break back in. This time you do a good job. If you're subliners, you get that spawn. You take advantage of it. You start to push this lead out a bit again, but it's still a tight one. 20 point advantage. Hydra's rival continues to demolish, but it seems gets the angle for the trade. The same set for Kiz. He's on five in a row and finessing for now because he wants to earn that cruise. Yeah, wants to find that nice. cruise, and there we go. We're able to find it now. If you can just bounce back P3 and P4, that's when this game could get ugly quickly. You see number five, Snoopy, he spawns out. Slasher is able to find a kill and stabilize, but there we go. Asim is caught. Sim finds another one based on the callout. So subliners do a good job, but there's those spawns. And once again, Boston, just in these crazy moments, able to find all the key kills. Yeah, no, this has been an interesting one early going. Not a ton of points really for either team. A couple like kind of crazy questionable spawns, but when they've had a battle back, they're able to do it. These guys are fighting. Maybe battling for a lead change here. Still 20 seconds left up and Priest and Snoopy able to hit shots through on the crossfire. Once again, kind of the lead man that's looking to maybe take the off route, find an angle, uh, angle win his one-on-one -on -one is Priesta. He's been the one early on rotation time and time again, and he continues to win fights. Yeah, putting shots in on Kiz as well, but allowing his teammates to work up that P2 window, get some angles onto this P5. You won't have anyone early on on the hill, and that's just, yeah, due to Priesta. They wanted New York, someone to get across towards P2. It looks like Kiz will be there, but immediately shut down. No, we'll see. We'll keep an eye on Priest. He needs to continue to be that guy that's made the make of the play. It hasn't always worked out, but he's had ample opportunity. And this time it leads to a big moment. Maybe we were at least are able to get them out of the point, contest some time. They get in with about 15, 20 seconds, but you had a 15 or so point advantage if you are breached. Nice little flurry of kills there for subliners. You get a little bit of space. It's Priest again. That's the one guy maybe to make a play, but not going to do it. Lead change now over to subliners. Yeah, everything, no, just kind of the domino effect happens. As soon as Parisa maybe just overpeaks, trying to catch a player, but here is another break attempt for Boston Breach and map control for P1 and P2. Hydra trying to get out. Take a long route all the way through. Just focus Boston Breach. Someone has to, to realize he gets through. So you can see that's going to be number six in Priesta, trying to hunt him down. Slasher's POV for now. We hop right over to Priesta, though. Again, maybe the playmaker for the squad. He's able to get one sip, though, with an answer onto Slasher. Snoopy popping, hitting, pistol. Not going to do enough, though, as guys and Sib rally through. They're going to hop into the point again. It's Priesta just lurking, trying to play around this objective. Get the key kills, just can't quite finesse. Actually, his teammates are going to take him out in a seam, but a seam clutches up as he gets another one. Nobody in the point for now. Nine point game. Yeah, it's really just all about map control. You can see the way New York is playing this, trying to push on through, flip those spawns. Hasn't happened yet. Play clock could come in to play. Probably not, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, down to three minutes. Tied up at 100 apiece. But always there is one more player getting on through. And has New York done it? Looks like a couple of players will spawn out. It's been these key one-on-ones between Priest and Hydra. And Hydra actually spawns up. Priest is able to find the kill. And then Priest just spawns, or sorry, Hydra spawns right there in New York. They get the spawns for P2. The Priest, the Priest is going through it at times. Yeah. It's just, I think multiple times he's thought he's like made the play to do enough to, to make Maybe it. But that time everyone else spawned out. out. Yeah. yeah, everyone else spawned out. And he's just kind of on an island. But he's been fighting. Lead change after lead change in this one. New York now with control. What can they do behind the objective? Hydra, Sib, finding openings. No pressure early from Breach. Probably the calmest moment we've had like on an actual objective. Nice so far from subliners thus far. Yeah, I mean, already with 30 seconds left, if you are Breach, you're just trying not to lose spawns for P3 for next hill. I, I mean, this is such a good job. Finally, a full hold here for subliners. They're able to do, I think, last P3, but with those three kills from Slasher and Snoopy, it's kind of at the most opportune time for them because you'll get some of this scrap time in control rotation to next. Yeah, I was—I didn't even know they were going to get in it for a while. They just kind of stood there just trying to hold Gunny up, get the kills, worry about next a little bit more, but they'll hop in and get five or so seconds. You lose Whoa. those two players, though, and that's where do things unravel. Maybe you didn't need to get the scrap time. Maybe you just worry on the rotation a wee bit more. You're going to have a pinch that's going to develop, though, because this spawn comes in behind for Snoopy. You start to collapse on this. Can the front line stay up? Yeah, Jin Slasher and Asim play their position. They're on the hill trying to finesse, but there is the trade. Now, close spawns may come in for New York, but they've done a good enough job. You needed a response there from Breach. 
but it's the subliners who are able to find that chance. They get to two kills on the players at old, and they just fly on through. There is the flip. I don't even know if it is good enough, just based on like how this game has been, like every point for Breach has been so hard earned. If you get this time and you go up, what, like 60 to 80, or has Breach got anything clean for free? Like it's all, it's been gritty. Now granted, they can turn it on its head. There are spectacular moments in map one, but it seems like it's starting an inch away from them. Yeah, right here, they need a response. You don't have a cruise missile to deal with, which will probably help you out. That was the problem last time through at P4. True, true. Skies, though, he's going to find the first blood. So uh, New York uh -oh. know this. They're going to try to take map control away. But Snoopy, through the middle of the map, is able to slow it down. Kids trying to find a long route through the water. Hey, you still have work to do, but those kills from Snoopy are a big part of why you're still in the objective. He's been tough. Battle in the water. Oh, look at him go. He's got the moves. The Steven Priest still finding kills. Trying to get the tags in. Kismet's going to drop. It's tough to hit the shots through the water. Can't quite get the win. Now you're down, what, 40 or so? You're back into the point. This is the answer you need. He said he had to respond. So far, so good. And it was mixy for a moment there. For the most part, though, you've collected all this time. You get this, you're right back within striking distance. You had to step up, and they do it. Yeah, great response there from Boston Breach. Looks like a seam could be a key playmaker here on this rotation. Sib, though, finding some spawn kills, trying to make this a much cleaner setup than last time through from P5. It was Priesta who kind of found the opening and the route, but this time, this is exactly what New York want. Look where Boston is on yeah. the map. Just both left and right of P5, completely controlled by subliners. I mean, how often have we seen that this year? It's just been, it's been crazy. It's been back and forth, and suddenly people start to put clamps on the hard point. But subliners who are looking to close this out with a map victory, they're 50 points away. We're hopping to a listen in with subliners. Comes off, say one shot. There's two comes on me. The comms are clean, the boys are vibing, and they're two points away from victory. The final kill's in. It's subliners. They will finally get a major win on the board. They get it done, and the listening was clean. So no, it was. He, and I, I mean, Skies was right. He's like, we're splitting. We're splitting here. He's like, let's calm it down. Let's make sure this is a, a clean setup for P1. They had all everything that they wanted to control, but you, you just get a much better hard point than we saw from Map 1 from pretty much everyone. Yeah, Kiz again up to 5,000 damage, and I just think he can be a key. Obviously, a rough Map 1 for him, but he really steps it up going forward. Yeah, um, I mean, it's a... Uh... Tight series at times, and then it's not like the map three is not close. This ends up, you know, second half of the game pretty dominant, but like, I just feel like I'm just gonna be looking at the 1v3 for kids. Yeah. Like, yeah, the map two was uh, probably one Boston's gonna go back and wish they wish they had a couple of those rounds. You win that, and I mean, the map three probably doesn't look different. I don't think it has impact on that, but at least maybe you're getting to a map, map five, five yeah. and then who knows. But. That 1v3 may haunt him. Kismet makes the big play. Subliners get the victory here. Already more success than we saw at the last major. And now for Boston Breach, at least, you know, with the subtle improvements, you started in a winner's bracket, you get to drop down and continue on to keep fighting. You didn't have that uh, that chance last time. Yeah, that's, yeah, you get uh, another match. Uh, again, just uh, more games to go back and watch. Just try to find those simple mistakes, but it just feels like, I don't know, maps three and four. Sometimes it just simply comes down to shooting. Yeah, it just, four was like, it was so close. It was like literally 10 lead changes. It felt like it was constant. And then once New York pulled away, they just didn't look back. And the listening was a great time. You heard fantastic comms. Everybody's stepping up. I mean, Hydra's moments on uh, the map three just absolutely erupted. Kidsman's 1v3. Sky's the double at the end as he's kind of holding the comms push. I mean, everyone had their moments. And this team is looking like, I mean, you had them in your final, right? When you fill out your bracket? I have them winning. Okay.
Yeah, no, I, you're I, a believer. Yeah, I am a believer in, in, in the subliner. Just, yeah, I think the respawn's going to keep improving if they stay number one S and D team. It's that, that helps a lot when you're going on deep tourney runs. Yeah, no, I, I think that's maybe like uh, the big question is like, can that search and destroy stay as good as it is? It's hard to stay ahead in that mode. It's hard to stay ahead, period. But they're ripping and roaring the wake up call for major one. It hit. Subliners are alive and on stage. We've got Kismet. <laughs> Thank you so much, Merkin Maven. Miami, show some love to the New York Subliners. Give them a howl as they come out on top with this victory in the upper bracket. Now, Kismet, it's a 3-1 for you guys, okay? Now, I will say, after that first map, I thought Boston was going to come out high, hot, okay? And you didn't have one of the best games there, but talk to me about how you decided to turn around, especially in that last hard point, and step up your performance to close this out in 3-1. Uh, I mean, I've been playing Call of Duty for a while, and I've had some stinkers, and that's just, you know, unfortunate this happens. And, I, you know, we've won champs last year. We know what it takes to, to win. Um, and it's just one of those things we were just like, reset. It's all good. It's a long series. Um, and we showed out in the S&D, we answered back with how they played map one, and then it's just, we just gained confidence, mm -hmm. honestly. And now, as we continue to, to uh, go on throughout this season, you, as you said, you guys are building more confidence, okay? Yeah. I know you want to come out with that chip again. How do you feel like this roster has been growing as a squad since Major One till now? Uh, I mean, I said it in interviews before and like videos, it's honestly just out of game stuff. Uh, we are all championship caliber players. Um, we're just learning each other. And, mm -hmm. you know, even though we made a one man change, like that changes the whole dynamic of the team. So, uh, yeah, just out of game stuff, just learning how we play and how we answer to stuff in adversity. And I think we showed right there. So I think you guys definitely did show that one. You guys think so, Miami? <laughs> now, what do you want to say to these fans out here that's been supporting you all across the country? Uh, I mean, I love you guys. Uh, I hear the dog barking. I love it. So I appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. All right, Joe. Make some noise one more time for the New York Subliners. Chris, let's break it down. <laughs> Bulldogs are in the building here. Miami crowd starting to make some noise. By the way, Miami crowd, chat says you guys are dead. How are we feeling after that series? Dead. They're alive. <laughs> They're alive. They're alive. We just got to crank up their well. mics a little bit. Let's talk about this because a 3-1 victory for the subliners, but Boston doing everything they hoped for in that game one. They had the start they were looking for, Allie. Yeah, I mean, they had an incredible start, especially because it was on Skid Row, which yeah. we 100% thought was going to go the way of New York subliners. So after that map one, we're like, okay, maybe Boston Breach can do this, even in the first couple of rounds of the search and destroy. But I felt like that's where New York really made a statement in this series after that round five when Kiz got gifted that 1v3. Not only that, Hydra had an 0-4 start. He was just not getting the timing, so what does he do? He slows down, he plays the route man, and he plays for picks to kind of put himself back on the board, which frees up Kismet to be a little bit more aggressive, and we see the S&D masterclass from the Bulldog himself. Yeah, you know, in this series, Boston put themselves in a really good spot. You know, you come out, you win Skid Row, you have that good side, you get the lead. Ace has an extremely good performance, your newest addition, and then we go into a terminal. We all saw it. The 1v3 happens, they lose that map, they're still fine. The lingering issue from control happens once again. They're 2 and 10 on attacking yeah. rounds on invasion. Off the rip, they put themselves in such a bad spot, they feed streaks to New York, and when you're thinking about a map like Invasion, it's so defensive-sided, it's almost damage control when you're on offense. Let's not give streaks, let's play together, take our time, and try to get some ticks. They get steamrolled there, and then we head into a sub-base. This is their map pick. You stole the skid row. That was a gift from New York that yep. you got. You have to win this, and they had an opportunity. We rotate all, all the way over towards P4, we get position, and we let Sib get top three and find a two-piece to spawn us out. So it's these little things, man. New York are just too good. 26 and 16 from Sib, the new man on the roster in that game for Unreal. Kismet dropping most damage in the lobby with 5,000 as a sub player also had the hellstorm in the first opening two minutes. Let's take a look though at your scuff play of the game because Allie this is from the SD you were talking about. Break it down for us. It's that 1v3 from Kismet right? He's kind of gifted this first two piece because there's a guy back burger and there's a guy laying down plants. He doesn't know about the guy laying down plants right? So he plays for the guy in back burger and what does his teammate do? Pop up to try to get that trade. Kismet easy spread transfer and then he goes and plays for slasher in the middle of that back plane 
Yikes. Bulldog getting the job done. Ant Crick claimed he was the number one S&D player coming into the tournament. He's living up to the hype. He's a playmaker, man. You got to think he's making some of these calls. Right there was actually my favorite play of the entire map. He baits out Snoopy, knows where he likes to play, and thinks he just may be trying to jump through the glass this round. Shows his gun, backs up, and just gives Hydra a kill and proceeds to make plays late in the round. The kid is so dynamic with any weapon in his hand. Double digits in search and destroy a two point. Oh, and the first match victory. New York Subliners are moving on to winner's bracket round two. And they'll be playing the winner of our LA Thieves versus phase match that is coming up at the end of the night. Let's take a look at this bracket and it's starting to shape up here. Are we going to see all top four seeds in our winner's semi on Saturday? So far, it's looking like it. None of these upsets are really starting to come to fruition. But again, the ghost of Dave Patty might look to make some problems here in our next matchup. You know, I will say, I I thought that one of these two games would have been an upset. Yeah. Either the first two matches that we had. So, so it's looking like our top four teams, they came prepared. But Miami Heretics and the home crowd, if they're making enough noise for their team, could have an opportunity. Crowd's getting behind the Heretics. They are taking the stage, taking on your fan favorites, Optic Texas and the number one seed versus number eight after this. Upgrade your game with a scuff. Save $30 on the official CDL collection at scuff.co slash CDL. Get better with a scuff, the first performance gaming controller. Visit scuff.co slash CDL to change your game. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL operator, weapon blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. Bro, this shit thick as hell. <laughs> Unless Priesta can come up with something magical, something historical. You players falling. Priesta ends up getting traded out, but Sandy's still here. No response right now for Rocker, but hey, we've got to put ourselves on pause. 1.5 seconds on the clock, Atlanta phase. They've got to push their way in. They've got to dig their way through. Nades, tacticals, utility tossed out. But take a look at this. Take a look at oh my. right now from Minnesota, and they do not push on to the point. One clean break, one set of kills there. Afro sneaks in and steals the victory. Oh you got to be kidding Look me. Look at that line of sight. Kenny has absolutely no idea. Look how long that is. Look at the size of that thing. Oh, Kenny's got to get off the bomb now. He's petrified. Wait, is he going to stick it? Time's ticking. Kenny's holding the line. If he gets the kill, that's one thing. But oh, my insight. Pulling out. <laughs> On my bookstore. Yeah, no, no. Oh, okay. Vale. Uh, He's he, uh, the, the bomb is on B. Literally on B. If I get that one, I'll get an ace, just saying. Ace! <laughs> Did I? 
straight back on it he's got time to get it done no one there to watch it will it go through four ball oh he kills him oh my no, god no subliner's got the win he got the defuse the kill did not come in time no. you have the streaks you have the bomb planted you have every advantage in the world but the defuse came through he got it he yeah he it's the Call of Duty League coming at you live from Florida, Major 2, hosted by the Miami Heretics, presented by GamerG, and we are halfway done with day one. We still have the other half of this winner's bracket to fill out, though, and we have a big matchup coming up because it's your number one seeded Optic Texas taking on the hometown crowd in Miami Heretics. Ali, Nameless, let's get into this one. Ali, let's start here with just the matchup because it feels like David versus Goliath, right? A little bit, but technically over across the season, they're one and one. You know, Miami has a win and Optic Texas does. And we know what happens on land when Optic Texas has to go up against the Florida team. That's right. And Nameless, the record hasn't been nice to Optic for some reason playing against Florida. Is there a little bit of a curse in this matchup? What's been going on historically here in the CDL? Listen, there used to be something, but they have <laughs> dispelled that. They went up against them at the last tournament and absolutely destroyed them. Shotzi Dashi, they had a master class in that series. So I think they're looking to do the same here. Let's today. take a look at our team starting with the hometown squad. It is Miami Heretics, the Spaniards coming over and trying to show their strength. They did it leading into Major 1, but after bombing out on land, the team went on a huge five-match slide. They were able to pick up the last two dubs coming into this match. They got the eighth seed, and they've got nothing to lose here. Listen, you know, these guys, they did so good in the online portion of Stage 1 that they have a lot of points, right? They're sitting good in a top eight position. They started off really struggling throughout this stage. They find themselves two wins at the end, going six in one map count, and if they were to today beat Optic, everything is forgiven. They're in a great spot. So for the Heretics, they've been good at hardpoint throughout this stage. They've choked a lot of search and destroys, but we know they have the ability to be good there. It's the control that has really been the major pain point for these guys throughout this stage. Let's take a look at our Monster Energy pregame for the Miami Heretics. How do they get it done today, Alley Cat? Uh, they started 0-5 and they finished 2-0. Again, those two wins are against teams like the Carolina Royal Ravens and the Minnesota Rockard. So yeah, they clutched up in the end to put themselves into this position but they're 5 and 15 in maps to start, 6 and 1 to end. Again, take those losses, I mean, those wins with a grain of salt. And they're kind of weak in search destroy overall, specifically in their attack, you know, bottom three when it comes to the CDO. Listen, for Miami right now, I think they just need to be in their own confidence as a team right now and play at their own pace. I feel like during this qualifier, once they started to fall short and not transfer scrims to online matches, we started to feel their pace slow down when that's what's been winning them some of these matches in the beginning of the season. Here's a look at the lineup. You've got Lucky down there. He has been playing forever. Metals has been in the scene in a minute. And of course, Vickle, the only player returning from Florida's roster last year. But it's the new guy closest to the camera, Eric Boom, that may have the most, I guess, pressure on his shoulders right yeah. now. You're playing not only against Optic, you're playing against these fans too, potentially. 100%. And you know, Eric Boom, it was a slow burn, right, to be sold on him. And he really started performing the HPs, making those big plays. And a couple of series, he was the guy getting them out of tough situations. But as a unit, this team has come so far, but they have to go up against a powerhouse. Our number one seed coming into this tournament that has seemingly fixed all their issues in Search and Destroy, the one thing that was holding them back from making it to a final last day. Allie, they are perfect 7-0, but these were not clean wins. You needed a round 11 against Boston. You needed a round 11 against the Subliners. You needed a reverse sweep Minnesota. It's been a lot of clutch plays off of the back of Optic Texas. I will agree with you there, but I think that's almost what makes them so scary okay. is because because again, there is room for improvement, but they are our number one seed. Like that is scary to think about because you can pinpoint where they need improvement in. Again, they're finished, they're first overall. Everybody's over a 1.0. They have a 7-0 series count, maps 21 and 10, and it's mostly been off of Shanti and his consistency of making the right play in a lot of these series. And if you give his teammates like Dashy, like Fred and Kenny, some of the most talented players in the game an inch, they're going to take a mile. And that's what he does for his team. Now, Nameless, we got some fantastic stats coming up here in our mod. Monster Energy pregame, but the question I have for you is, does Optic have an expectation to meet this weekend? Do they have to go to the Grand Finals? Do they have to win Major 2 for it to be a win? I mean, they went undefeated online, right? And they, they've been battle-tested. You just saw it on the graphic. They've hit 31 maps, the most of anybody. 
they have the expectation to come in here and win this tournament. You can see controls looking deadly in our Mount Strangers pregame. Hardpoint as well, sitting at eight and five, but some big improvements. And that search and destroy has been getting them through series. This is the making of a roster that can make a run and finally get that championship. I think they can do it. Allie, there's some superstars on stage right there. Who do you have eyes on? You say superstars, I say Super Soaker 3000. That's going to be Dashi, your king of the hill with over 3,000 seconds in hill time throughout the entire season, leading literally everybody else. 3,000 seconds. I don't even think I have that in ranked yet. Dashi doing work for us on stage. Nameless, we got to get into our scuff pickums here as we kick this one off. Uh, before that, though, we got to look at the maps. And I know yeah. you've been crunching the numbers. Who has the statistical edge in your eyes? I mean, Optic. They don't have a map loss on all five of these maps throughout the stage, so they're feeling good. Uh, yeah. That would include the Game 5 Invasion, though, that they have not played for Search and Destroy. So if we do somehow make it there, things can get a little dicey. This is incredibly comfortable for Opti Texas, just simply because they have an incredibly deep respawn map pool, but I don't hate it for Miami either because they also are undefeated on Invasion Hardpoint, and they're 2-1 and one on sub base. So as long as they can keep up with the sling, which everybody right now is sitting over a 1.0, there could be some opportunity here. Optic has started down O2 twice and pulled it out both times, and I think it's time for our scuff pickums to make it official here on the desk. They've been the kings of clutch. I got to lock it in. Optic is going to be taking this one. I'm going to have to go with the kings of clutch. I expect them to start smacking teams around at this event. I'm going to go Optic to Texas. Yeah, I think the hard point game one could be a little bit close, but I think Optic clutches up. Texas take this series 3-0. It's all been higher seeds. We'll find out if that stays true or if the hometown crowd can power Miami through to a victory. A quick fill here for a second here, buying the players a second at a time. Allie, let's go back to the hard point discussion. Overs, unders, who are you looking at? Dashie, of course, for the hill time, but who gets most kills? I mean, I actually want to go weird angle here. I typically would say Shotzi in this situation, but I want to say Pred. I feel like I need to set that expectation on him because he had a little bit of a slower start, I feel like, with this team. And Shotzi's already doing it all. He's already doing all the rotations. He's already making all the clutch plays. I want to see a little bit more out of his SMG duo. What about you? You know, if I pick somebody from Heretics, I'll go medals. You know, I feel like we don't talk about him yeah. enough. He's actually dropping 4,300 damage a hard point throughout this stage. That is the Heretics' best game mode so far. They're a top six team in that game mode, top six in holding and rotation. So they do have opportunity. Don't be surprised if they take map one. Medals, of course, has been pretty incredible in the hard points. But when we go to search and destroy, Lucky has got to be that guy, right? We've looked at him. He led his team with du double digits multiple times during that final week. Can he do it against a squad like Optic, though? Do you get a chance against a squad like Optic? It's tough, man. They've been so good at search, right? Yeah. The mid-round adjustments that they've had, we've seen it so many times on Karachi. In this one, we do have a Rio. I feel like it's a little bit one-dimensional in some of the pushes that you can have, but he definitely has left an impact. Like you said, 1.23 in S&D so far. The problem for them is, is they're playing man down in almost every round. They're last in the league in opening duels yeah. throughout this split. That has to be better, especially against a team like Optic, who's so good at adjusting. If you're still getting your pickums in, we are going to give you some more information that may weigh into your decision here. Let's take a look at the last two times these teams have matched up because it's been twice now in MW3. The first one was the qualifiers when Miami kind of shocked the world with that 0-3 nameless. Yeah, I mean, they, they came out hot, guns a-blazing. I mean, this Heretics team was just simply ahead early on. And, you know, you heard Ali mention it. They played at a faster pace than yep. almost everybody. But this Optic team has developed a ton. And even at the last major, they cooked them. And they've developed their search and destroy to another level where it's world class at the moment. So these are entirely different rosters. And what are your expectations for KDs in a matchup? Number one seed versus number eight. Can you keep up with that 1.5? I don't know. We're on land, so anything can happen. We'll find out. Is Aix right? Are all the KDs dropping? Or is Optic going to stay on fire? Let's send it to the stage with Guy Blaze to find out. It's time to find out, Chris, in one of our biggest matches of the day, the one in which we've all been waiting for. And the first squad coming to the stage is looking to lay down a foundation for a big victory in Miami. Get ready, Greenwall, because here come those boys from Texas. <laughs> City, you hear signs when we sleep. Heaven sent, hands down, vibes so unique. Call of Duty fans all around the world, give a warm welcome to Optic Texas. Looking to do 
it. Brick, bad brick. It's Optic Texas. Listen, it's just a bunch of all-star players trying to become superstars. And in order to do that, they got to go through the Miami Heretics in front of a home crowd. But I don't think they're that worried because the green wall travels well. I hear them getting loud. I'm looking at Shotzi to stay in MVP form. We'll find out. Let's bring out Miami Heretics, please. All right, it's time to get this one started and bring out their opponents. As you know, it's the hometown team. Give them your vamos. Here comes Miami. We still got a lot more humbling to do on this main stage. This is about to be a big time matchup. Show some love to your casters. It's Miles and Chance. Thank you very much, Guy. We're ready to rock and roll over here in the casting booth. We've got a very exciting matchup ahead of us. Two teams with a, a tremendous amount of history in the organizational level. But Chance, we're missing a key piece today. Of course, Dave Patty's retired. I uh, know, Dave Patty. It is a heartbreaker to see him go. And what that means for the legacy of this matchup, I do not know, but we get to find out. But for the players on stage, it is going to be a fun one, a battle. Vicol, it seems like he plays Optic in round one. Every single major he plays. But I know for a guy like Eric Boom, it's his first time on May stage and he gets optic for the draw for round one always going to be a fun time we've seen nearly the entire boom family in the crowd uh puppy boom and mommy boom are out there everyone's having a good time see some flags tremendous support shown for the miami hometown team but they do have a very very strong opponent ahead of them optic texas of course it's difficult to keep this team out of your mouth they're so important when it comes to the performances of the league and of course the fan favorites in nearly every matchup they're in and they're not camera shy either shotty already warming himself up to get ready for this series you know it's going to be a good time i know the purveyor of the 1v1s yesterday shotzi has been getting warm for this very moment but it is going to be a fun series the desk talked about it quite a bit but some of the maps we have especially maps three and four strong advantage there from optic texas so if you're miami heretics the invasion hard point you get from map one a it is a great a fantastic map for them they gotta come out the gates hot come out hot or basically uh, fall apart it's what the subline has had that issue on that skid row first map was real tough for them now though i mean i feel like the question for the heretics again eric boom first time on the big stage a moment now to calm themselves compose themselves the scrims have been great the practice is looking good can they turn it into a big win here invasion hard point we are moments away from starting the series and this is the tone setter invasion these two teams have mapped up twice so far already this year they have played invasion hard point it's made it through every series granted that was all the way back in the middle of January, but Heretics took him down 250 to 137. It was a smoke show. Miami love this map. They are happy to play it. It's typically slow. These guys will play it at pace. And if you're thinking about the lightning quick speed medals, one of the best players to watch. His hard point stats have been fantastic. So much so that he will drop <laughs> his teammates in spawn. Medals wins. Flawless victory. Great oh, shots. <laughs> we'll get this one ready in a moment, guys. Obviously, a slight technical error on stage. 
But until then, we get to wax lyrical a little bit more about the hard point stats. Chance, I mean, any major standouts for you and your research coming into this series? Well, generically for like hard point, Optic are top team in the game, right? Second overall, best record. So they're going to be strong on every single map, including Invasion Hardpoint. However, it is also one of the few maps where Miami has seen a tremendous amount of success. So again, I think it's going to be a head-to-head -head battle for the map number one. But for Heretics, I'd say quite a bit more important for them to get that early advantage. And then in the S&Ds, I know Optic have been like the clutch king so far throughout this stage. But s and it's some brand new maps. It's a Rio for the map too. We've only seen both of these teams on it a single time. So there has been so much learning that is being done behind the scenes that we don't get, you know, privy to. We don't get that access. So it is going to be interesting. We are going to be learning a lot today. I know so far the educational experience has been the top four teams have reigned supreme. Optic looking to stay in tow. Well, we've talked a little bit about search and destroy. Let's rewind to the hard point chance. These are our metrics coming into this series. And both teams in the green when it comes to their records, 6-5 and 8-5 respectively. Is that enough of a difference maker for you? Well, again, just a splash longer there from Optic. I will say though for Miami Heretics, it's been a bit of a tear as of late. Like the 6-5 and five record overall doesn't look great, but they had an incredibly slow start to this stage. Again, they made a roster change. You're bringing Eric Boom in on short notice to the squad. He does have big shoes to fill for Journey. It took a long time for him to get the feel of the pace that the CDL teams are going to bring, but past two series they played, they started to get a feel. They've been on a tear as of recent, so the stats have been improving, going on that incline over quite some time, so don't get me wrong. They got their work cut out for them, but if you get the vibes flowing, get those Vamoses out early, again, when this team is on point, absolutely electric. Uh, a fast-paced team. We've been waxing lyrical non-stop about their performances for, you know, for most of those players way back in Black Ops 4, the last time we saw them in the professional sphere, and now they're back. Quite the splash they made in the first qualifiers, chance towards Major 1. It's been a slight bit slower, but this could be an outstanding turnaround for them. It, it like the land too is like the big question mark for the Heretics team because they got double 3 0 at the last major. But if it's been years since these guys have really gotten that full taste of the main stage, it's different vibes. The game slows down. It is an adjustment period for these teams and the newer players, but they've got one under their belt. There's no more excuses from this point on in the year. And of course, if we're talking about experience, well, Optic Texas, they have it in absolute spades. Dashy at this point, my as well be considered a vet. He's been playing at the professional level since back in World War II. I do mean the game, not the actual war, but he's feeling the vibes as well. You got Kenny on your team. They're laughing. They're always bouncing. Always a good time. Well, looking now at Optic's road to this major. We had one of those hats, remember, back at the Optic Major 3, way back in Vanguard? My God. Well, this was the road to Major 2 for Optic Texas. And of course, a clean sheet, but very, very close series. A couple of 3-2s in there, Chance. A lot of round 11s. And this is like a good news, bad Bad news sort of road to the major depending on the fan perspective right because the good news is they have been absurdly clutch like they've had a couple slow starts but game five's completely on point round 11's completely on point the most clutch team throughout this stage maybe the bad news is there's a lot of teams that you don't want to be going to game fives against that you would want a team to look more dominant so it is a bit of a give and take a bit of a push and pull and thank god no more yapping an invasion hard point just to see where these players are at. Don't jinx it, love. Take two, boys and girls. Here we go. Into our first hard point of the series. Miami Heretics taking Optic Texas. We're going to Invasion, and that man on your screen will see how he fares. Some have called him the face of the league. Here we go. And looking to do a couple different things off this opening break. Opening salvo, Eric Boom chasing kills, and that's a nice little white there for Miami. Get a little bit of pressure in towards the hill, but Dashi running it down with the pistol, and more importantly for Optic, they get the four-man white, and they keep the spawns. Big Bruce on a bit of a spree to start things off here. Eric Boom toe-to-toe -to -toe with Shotzi, wins the fight. Pressure now towards the hard points. The Miami Heretics, the light blue arrows on the minimap. The white arrows will be Optic Texas, and so far, it's a very clean feed for the Texan team. Oh, this has just been a kill house there. The trades maybe not coming through. Eric Boom able to pick up two, but still those spawns long-term beneficial for Optic. As far as P1 breaks go, I think Texas will be happy for the time they were able to collect. And more importantly, the distance. You already got a player pushed out aggressive in broken. Shotzi, that's the first man that Miami have to get past, and that is always a bad sign. Good news for Eric, though. He's on a four spree, gets that initial kill. Heretics have the opportunity to break. Double back, back into the fight. Almost able to catch down. 
Dashi out there on a little cheeky engagement, but the nades are there. The teamwork there for Optic Texas are going to find those kills. Metal's now pushing the front line forward, slowed down by a shot seat as Optic once again find themselves in the hard point, and it's the boys of Miami Heretics up the street. And you can see Optic trying to do two things. You're going to have Fred push up in just a moment, or maybe just get gunned off the head. He's lucky, able to shred two. Dashi forced to back down back tractor, and it's going to be lucky for all three. Make that four in a row in the time now collected. A moment that Miami needed, and if Lucky can somehow pull off this cruise, it'd be great, but that entire Woo! team is coming. Optic, they're taking the time right back. A lot of damage dealt from Eric Boom here, but it's not going to be a lot of time gained for the Miami Heretics. Optic Texas walking away with a P1 to P2. Now, though, to the low right-hand side of the minimap. That's where we're going next, and so far, so good for the Heretics. It's going to be an awkward foot race, though, depending on where the Optic players spawn, because it was the Palace spawns initially for Miami, but good news for the Heretics. Optic spawn out as well, so Eric Boom gets to collect the time. Everybody else now repositioned deep back in your spawn. I think they're going to have a hike and a half before they can start to contest this hill, but one good break, and, well, it's already a 20-point lead. Guns up, ready for the hit now. Miami Heretics. Vehicle has the backline cover, but nobody's home just yet. It's over towards the hard point. Optic are in. A couple of kills going either side as now the awkward foot race is over. Optic Texas have walked in and shots. He's taken the point. Oh, this is interesting. Spawn recognition too. You had Metal spawned up and he instantly turned around. Meanwhile, Optic are collecting the time. Metal's with that recognition though, able to pick up big kills over by Palace. And if you get the wipe out, which Vehicle does, well, final 20 seconds are going to go your way. So a bit of mixing is there on showers, but Heretics more beneficial for the time. But if spawns weren't interesting before, it's about to turn into chaos on people. Vico finds two in the middle. That's a four spree now for him. We're unable to get Eric Boom's streak completed. And Vico looks to be in a tough spot also. Back over to the middle of the map we now go. The wide open park. Not a lot of cover. Good luck, have fun trying to hold on to this one. But you have a lot of map presence right now if you're the Heretics. I mean, this is just like your containment job right now that Vico and the Heretics are trying to do. You want to get a couple kills before you can actually make that dash towards time. But Vico finds the moment, gets the timing, and he has found his best friend, that motorcycle. Going to keep him alive until the nade from over top there to take him down. That's maybe five total seconds collected on this hill thus far. P4, an insane one. <laughs> we'll take five. You can make it six. I'll be very happy indeed. Over to Lucky. Still an open hard point, an open field. This vehicle moving that front line forward. Nice work on Kenny. The third man there, though, Shotzi and Fred, help, help out, stop the play. In, in all things considered, this is exactly what Miami wanted. Maybe they wish they could have gotten more hill time, but you've still pinned Optic in the back of the map. You've shut down the A Street. The spawns have never flipped, and Optic will be stuck in Palace on this rotation, which you can see that new hill. It is popping Ooh. all the way across the map. So Heretics, they've slowed the pace down. They have played it patient, and they have set themselves up. It's a 10-point game, but they're going to try to turn this back hill into some money time. We'll see if they can run. It up. Metal's on the left-hand side. Eric Boom through the middle. The rest of the, of the team now for the Heretics in towards the hard point. They've got a great spot to be in. And a bit of a lead now developing. Preds managing to penetrate through the rear. Can he get any kills out of this one? Chasing red dots. Eric Boom the first. Now to the top side of blue. Pred could be a real problem. The damage dealt. The what? Find these kills if you can. And the hunt is still on. It's like he's invisible. He's just shooting players in the back. They cannot hunt this man down. Finally, he gets traded. And you have Miami with a nice couple kills in the feed. Eric Boom, by the way, first map on the main stage, 14 and 8. He started off exactly how they needed him to. Showing off in front of his fam with good reason. Over 100 points now we go for the Miami Heretics. Dashi trying to get these boys out of the hard point, but he's left guessing. Nice crossfire there. As Pred into the feed, but immediately traded out. Eric Boom, the pace being set forward. He goes. The trades again. The Heretics teamwork looking good. And now you have Optic just trying to get back in the swing of things, right? A couple bad hills don't exactly go their way, so they're looking to get it back under control. Pred, 15 kills for him. He's making his strike, making his move towards the time, and a team kill there for Miami. Might be the opening to try to put the pressure on, but the contest does not last. Optic break through again and all things considered p1 this has been the best hill optic have had all game well they managed to turn this p1 and p2 into a nice lead to start the game off with now we'll see what happens in the second set dashi creeping on forward 
Red dots all over the place. He won't get much of it. Over towards the hard point, we now go. Lovely tags into Lucky. An open field for a moment. And there we go. The Pred Dashi Kenny combo. Clean up the point. Optics 14. And while those guys are clearing the point, Shotzi was keeping those rotations under lock and key. He catches a player trying to be sneaky over towards P2. So Optic are nice and stable. Maybe another sort of last ditch effort attempt, though. You have Lucky pushing around, going to flank these spawns as well. So 40 point game as the hill pops. Optic are here first. Dang. Well, they're getting all the cutoff kills. And Kenny, what a five spree that is. Comes out of seemingly nowhere. Watch out for the nade. He's at 28 HP. He's looking for one more kill to get that cruise. And if he can get it, that's going to be huge. By the way, the spawn's coming through for Palace for Miami. So we're going to stick with Kenny for a second, but he might have to go and collect that time. So he wants the kills and the objective. His teammate's dying around him, though. He's forced to back down. Kenny. Wants to guarantee the cruise. Kenny. Oh my god, they kill Kenny. I mean, you got the heretics crawling all over the place. Those bastards are out of control. Now on the rotation, though, Miami, well, they got one player that's out and about. Everybody else is spawning Palace. And even for the final 15 seconds, I'd say Optic happy if they could get it. It's stripped away. This is a back and forth battle just for scrap time between these two teams. On the rotation, though, Optic, they are set up. They are clearly here first. Heretics, though, going to be blocking those back spawns. Yeah, totally different look from the first go around. Heretics towards the back line. Metals, does he check the spot that Kenny's in? Nope, no problem. Another member here to deal with. Kenny's on that back line. V call the next man up. Trophy down, no problem. Quick stun check. This is an opportunity for Optic to take the lead back. This is the awareness on point two, right? Vehicles behind enemy lines, but Kenny, now it's just full hunter mode engaged. He knows he's going to be in the back somewhere, so you tuck yourself into the deep corner. Lucky, though, is going to check it, and Lucky just wins the gunfight, but everybody else loses the kills. So that means Optic might not be spawning close, but they're still just crawling around the hill. Yeah, Heretics have spawned on the other side of the map. We won't be seeing the other three teammates for quite some time, and that's going to be a very safe hard point indeed. A secure 20 seconds now for the Optic boys, the lead now growing further. And this is utterly destructive too from Optic. The tides have turned, they've got the money hill and they got the setup over towards new. Let's go to a listen and see if they can break him down. Watch out, watch out new. Watch out. Listen, what's before? What's before? Before Eric move. I have all the rifles. I have all the rifles. You said I said I said I got top American, top American. I have all the right, okay? So right, right. Your scoop, scoop. I have some right. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not even shooting. Right. 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 One right, one right, lucky. That was him. I'm right. running up right, running up the right. Okay. I gotta go. Make sure we control the time. Mid the time, mid the time. mid. One my pit right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Close up, close up all. Close up. 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 Can you DVD? Can you DVD? Lucky DVD, lucky DVD, one shot. I'll run at him. Run at him, run at him. You should give the left shot. I'm back to the gas. I'm back to the gas. I'm blocking. Whoever's on the way. One of these back up. Yeah, yeah. No, you should say. Come back, Bruce, come back. Bruce, I'm backing up. I got time. Say, I can't say. I'm blocking. I'm blocking. All right, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They gotta go middle. One right, front left, front left. Tell him. I'm on shot. I'm on. Yo, what the debuff? Just hold it. Yeah, yeah, debuff. Yeah, debuff. Low, low traps, bro. Low traps, vehicle. Yeah, I'm saying I have to get the pinch. You're good. It's like it was. I'm saying like this, two right. I'm sorry. Want to be main again? I'm holding my trap. Lucky, lucky, lucky. I'm holding. It's a vintage look from Shotzi here as the movement is there. The angles are difficult to predict and the comms are great. And a trigger discipline may be even better. Optic have hit their flow state. These have been a destructive three hills in a row. Miami desperate to break it down as soon as you get to the back line. It's big Bruce you got to deal with. That is a five spree. The anchor keeping these heretics away. Holding them down, holding them at bay. Pred finds a team kill for now, but Dashi. Ooh, one bullet away from finding a streak. I think it surely has one. So Bruce is looking fine so far. 228 to the 139 of the Miami Heretics. They are looking to control the middle of the map. Third set of hard points now on us. I mean, look, the third set's going to be have to be different for Miami. They had an opportunity on the first set of rotations, could not convert it to enough time. Optic then took control of the game, and thus far they have not looked back in the feed. It is still more Optic kills being collected. The time, though, in the hands of the Heretics. But if you're Optic, you just want to slow the pace down. You can play for the kills, and the rotation will just fall into your lap. Eric Boom in the hard point. 23 and 23. He has been slowed down somewhat. 
But the Heretics still in control, fighting for their lives here in the center of the map. Can they get any more time out of this life? Eric Boom, back at it. Nice work there from Lucky in the back line. Beautiful turn, one more bullet from the Pred. Would have seen it happen, the trade should be here. As this hard point is not over yet, and the Heretics have the top left-hand side covered as well. I mean, you just have to like go for the contest as well. This scrap time is gonna put Optic just an inch away from winning this game. And a break on P2, we already saw it. Big Bruce, he's got the cruise missile. That is a guarantee, at least one kill on the time. Maybe for Optic though, not too many players in position to play cleanup crew, but their shots for the first blood. There's the cruise missile for the second. It's one guy backtracker and lucky all up to them. They're holding the line. The Miami Heretics not letting go, but it's still five seconds for the win. Kenny through the front, taken care of. Time to the Heretics once again. Shotzi alone now, finds a pick, and forward he goes. Yeah, but look at the spawns. I mean, number four medals is trying to read it, but you can't get the gunny. Now it's Optic all about the swarm. Last man on the hill is going to be lucky. Does he have enough help? The answer is no. Pred can't quite get to the time, but Shotzi is here. 248, 249, and game. A spicy spawn towards the end of the game certainly helps Optic Texas secure the victory, but I feel like chance the win was found halfway through the second set of hard points. That 165, the Heretics unable to muster the strength to continue the run on invasion. It just started to get away from them. The kills department, everyone slowed down in the production, and it was just too tough to keep up. I mean, yeah, Optic just had too much firepower. Metals like his damage was actually there right with the rest of the lobby, but the kills were just not. 16 and 33 is a pain point. 17 assists means he was getting everybody weak. The teamwork was there, but you are just getting ever so slightly outgunned. And we even saw it on how the Hills played out. The first of the rotations, Miami won the rotation of showers, kept Optic pin in the back spawns on the P4. You get the rotation over to back blue. They did everything right. Optic were just a little bit better about stripping away the time, winning those extra gunfights, making those breaks. And then the second go around, Optic had the exact same thing. They had the showers hill. They were keeping Miami pin in the back of Palace spawn, and instead of just getting 100 points off of it, Optic just blew the lead wide open. So the gunny right now from Optic Texas on point. Smoking hot, as we will see across our highlights here. Miami Heretics, you know, it was a solid start, not enough to keep the race going. We'll see if they can find some success in the upcoming Search and Destroy. We've got a Rio for that one, I do believe, and Lucky. The man on the screen was also a great place from everyone, but again, it was just the firepower and the staying power from Optic Texas, the stamina to keep rolling through the invasion. And especially Actually, so if you're like down 10 points after winning that rotation of showers, it really just is a feels bad moment. So that is just a few very key gunfights at the start of that hill popping that if they go a different way, the game will play out in a different capacity. But Optic basically were just biding their time, playing a little bit safe. And as soon as they got control of the game, again, they simply never looked back. Uh, no, at all. Again, highlights. Eric Boom with a strong start with certain silence towards the end. And again, we've got ourselves a search and destroy coming up. Chance, this has been a, a strong point for us, but again, a lot of very, very close games, especially those game fives. We'll see if they can keep up the pace and keep up the run here in the series. Sitting 2-0, and going into the control will be ideal for them. And maybe good news from Optic fans. You talk about how they've had a few slow starts in the online stages. I'm watching guys like Kenny basically barking in the comms, snapping with every kill they were getting. So they brought the energy to the table. No slow starts today. They got the ball rolling exactly how they needed to. Because again, we already know Heretic's not a team you want to get jumping. Well, job done there on Invasion. Here you can take a look at the game flow again. It was simply a moment of Miami played incredibly well. As soon as that P2 came through, though, that was the moment where Kenny starts going on that spree. Basically, the execution moment. They never looked back. We see that a few times in Invasion, where it's one spree that just seems to break the confidence or break the back of the losing team in the end. You can always pin it down to that singular moment. The momentum shift and just sort of the overwhelming style of gameplay we see on Invasion. It's so hard for teams to come back. Well, we say goodbye to Invasion. And we say hello to Rio now. Search and Destroy coming up next. Karachi Control for that map three. And we've had our fair share of crazy moments on Karachi so far in the year. And no doubt we're going to get a couple more in this series. But Rio up first. And a necessity, I would have to imagine, for Miami to win, because you talked about the Karachi and even the map four. Optic do have a sizable yeah. advantage on those two maps. Karachi can get interesting. Heretics have beat them on it before, but it is the Rio. A 1-0 record from Optic, an 0-1 record for Miami, which means you basically know nothing, Jon Snow. No intel you can read. You can't watch over VOD and really glean any amount of information, especially on a map that we've already seen. The pace slows down when you go to land, and when we've seen the best teams in the game on 
on this map, even on the online stages, it can be very slow. A lot of bouncing back and forth between bomb sites. It is an insane degree of those mid round adjustments. Whatever team has done the better homework here on Rio, more prepared for the day, will come out on top. Well, we can look at homework. We can also look at the S&D stats coming into this matchup between the Heretics and Optic Texas. And again, these are the S&D metrics just from the Major 2 qualifiers. A little stronger, it has to be said, chance for the boys of Optic. But again, today, we'll find out whose comms are better and who's playing hot. And you can also see a key point here for Miami as well. Their conversion rate when they're getting the first bloods, pretty fantastic. 80% means they are executing when they get that advantage, being 12th over. Overall, though, for actually getting the first bloods has been a major pain point. So open engagements on Rio going to be key from Heretics. And again, the way this map seems to play is, I know initially it's a lot of just bang the middle of the map out, hit those four mans over towards that B site. But as the year has developed and we see more re and S and D, it's spreading the map. It's playing for picks and then it is grouping together as a squad and just bouncing back and forth using the middle map as really just a point of rotation. So you can see Optic, they're not running it down. They're going to take their time, play for picks, and then again, the teamwork is going to kick in. It looks nothing like most ranked gameplay. 50,000 people used to live in the middle of that map. And now it's a ghost town. That nade will be the only thing to start this map off. And this is an interesting decision for Shati too. He is the only player on both teams in the middle of the map, but yep, he's done his thing. He's cleared it out, realizes they're nothing, and he's gonna get the bomb down. In the meantime though, Kenny has fallen. So main advantage here for Heretics. This is the first blood they were looking for. Dash is about to run into a whole lot of trouble. One, nearly two. Eric Boom though, stays strong. Man advantage still to the Miami Heretics. And now you got just again, corners up, Shati. He's reading the pressure. Two players right in front of them. They line up. He knocks him down. And poor Vicol, oh, now no. he's chasing a ghost whose name is Shati. That is your nightmare scenario, but he gets the 1v1. Now it's a 1v1. 15 seconds for Shati. As he now makes his move. He's checked the middle of the map, and I don't believe it. We've not seen a thing. Vicol, oh, fires his gun. It's not going to be enough. The kill, maybe not, but the bomb. There's no hope. Shotty stays alive and a little bit of COD magic goes his way. And what a heads up, high IQ play call from Shotzi, not just to get the bomb down. He had no team support to actually go for that plan, but his spotty senses were tingling. There was nobody home. He doesn't waste any time. And then Dashi's rampant in the call outs. Hey, we saw three players this direction. Shotzi reads the pressure, knows the rat back is coming through, puts himself in the perfect corner. Shotzi, the menace on the map. Tough to deal with indeed. The first man into the round to really make anything happen. The last man out. Let's see what happens this time with the Miami Heretics on attack. Much more stock standard approach is what you would expect. But Optic are there for the fight as well. The trophies are down. The noise has been made. And here we go. It could be a three-man hit up the stairs. These trophies are putting in over time. But Metals is at least pushed up and got in position. You're not playing for the bomb plant yet. You want these initial kills. Slide. Oh, Eric Boom cuts Shotzi into pieces. He's not going to take that next fight. He's going to sit pretty now and wait for his boys to show up. And this is patient play as well, waiting for the next kills to come through. Metals dancing with the devil. Two players, Eskies, here they come. Can he get the trade? You can. We're lucky for two. All of a sudden, Pred finds himself in a one versus two. Pops Deddy. He's looking to make the play. And now the young Australian goes on the hunt. Vehicle reads it. And the Heretics bounce back. What an explosive round from them. Yeah, heads up, Javi. We have Shotzi making those reads in round one. Vehicle does the exact same in the final one. Intel was on point, and I think some credit to Eric Boom, too. He throws that shoulder after getting the first blood. Preds the man he sees right street. That's what Vehicle picks up in the end. So comms there flowing for Miami. Who are two for two on the first blood front. But obviously, with the plays that Shotzi makes, evens the odds up. I didn't see too many trophies there on the side of Optic, which might make the, uh, the B attack a little bit trickier. So they're spreading the map again, playing for picks. Ow. Stun, check, connect. This time round, the middle of the map is covered in Heretics players, and it looks like they've managed to evict Optic from the central building. And this is such an uncomfortable situation. You have zero map control. You've lost the middle of the map, so you got to reposition, pick a different direction. But for the moment, Optic not grouped together. Kenny feeling out a little bit of pressure, doesn't check the corner in another first blood for Miami. Fred backs up once again, expecting this push now from the Heretics, but those blue arrows are not going anywhere. They've got what they've got, and they're holding it. Lucky back at it on the forklift. Here comes the team challenge. 
Metals throws a shoulder, spots at least one. This should now spring the Heretics to life, and it does! Lucky with two! And now, Dashi finds himself in a 1v4. He'll take one with him, but it's another good round from the Heretics. Yeah, that is absolutely beautiful coming out of Miami. I think Lucky might be picking up a couple different freebie two pieces as Optic always looking at somebody else. Metals from boxes, immediate chow the first time. When Lucky's calling out, Kenny's pushing, it's a freebie. Second time, makes the adjustment, knows more players are going to be nearby. He draws the attention, but doesn't get aggro himself. The patience there on point. And not only are they three for three on the first blood front, Lucky, he's on a four. Six will get him a cruise missile, which on this map is very Very's handy. Set. Well, we're leaving the bomb in spawn. Whether that's a choice or not, not be cool. No, okay, maybe Eric Blue. Oh, someone's going to go back and get it. But in the meantime, the rest of the boys, again, forward push, hold what you got. That's yeah, a cheeky strat, too, everybody looking for those nades, because you see the position that Dashy loves to play. He's always there on the mini map, but reads it perfectly to not go out if he doesn't have a trophy. So, Whoa. Optic ahead of the game, but Pred a little too slow. Bullets in his back move a little bit faster than your feet. Another first blood for Miami. Lucky again with shoulders. Spot out. Dashy damage, but here comes Shotzi for the kill. That's what you don't expect. Can Lucky stay alive? This is unbelievable. Anyone to help out? Nah, Shotzi too fast. Eric Boom gets there late. The trade's good though. It gives Miami Heretics the advantage. No cruise, but you'll take the kills. Metal's in a very dicey spot. He's got the intel, gives away the tech, but now you can get the bomb down. A pure three versus two, and you know you have to be worried about that A streak flank. They only know it's one player, but maybe from Optic, Kenny and Dashi, at least they're working together. And they're holding hands right now, so you're going to expect a lot of noise as they approach that bomb site. There's the split. Dashi, the first man in. Vehicle's in trouble. Whoa, he takes care of Kenny in the back line. Oh, Dashi stays alive upstairs. 2v1 for a moment, and the Heretics' numbers prevail. Those trades are on point. And smiles on their faces in Miami, maybe getting a little bit more comfortable. We saw the stats throughout the stage. They were the worst team in the game in Search and Destroy when it comes to First Bloods. Here on Rio, perfect. Five for five for the moment. And again, this is a map with very little intel on either team. But Miami right now on point. Kenny and Pred still sitting on donuts. Yeah, double donuts for the new boys there on Optic Texas so far here on Rio. Plenty of time to right that wrong. But for now, Vikul cooks it, throws it, and a trophy eats it. Yeah, double donut, also known as an octane, but in the middle of this, of course, <laughs> the site. Optic, once again, they have complete control over mid, and Chati doesn't waste any time, no need to. Goes for the bomb plan, so Miami have completely given this up. They are trusting their retake abilities here on Rio. It's shades of the first round. This time, I think they might be a little faster, and Shotzi's doing something different as well. Laying prone by the bomb site here. Miami lining up for the hit. There's the check. Frags are out, flush these two players out of position, straight into the jaws of Shotzi. Catches one, 3v4. Yeah, Lucky evens up the odds, but it is trades going down on the other side of the map. Beagle tries to make a play, he gets caught, and nice read on the pressure here from Dashi. 15 seconds left on the clock for Miami, and I think we just witnessed a round that'll be the last time they give up the B site for free. And that was a fantastic hold from Optic Texas. Shotzi with a big reposition, he stays on the bomb site. he manages to maintain complete control of that stairwell. Whether it was the nade forcing Metals out into the play, takes care of him, the nade keeps that space safe. Great job from those boys controlling this area. And that really is an interesting decision from Heretics. Like when they play Invasion, they'll give up like the B site for free consistently because they trust the retakes, but they did not have a good look there. Shotzi and Dashi right now, 2v4ing, but it's only one round game. <laughs> 2 v 4 it's, Yeah, that's close enough. Well, here we go. Attacking round Heretics. And Shotzi is moving. Well, here's the nades on Dashi again. They were looking for the triple the last time around. You see it at least backs them down. So they are really trying to pick Bruce off. Not successful. And now Metal's in a corner. Able to slide away in the nick of time. Brett can't quite hunt him down, but the nades do. It is a trade, though, for the 3v3. Eric Boom has been on point on the bridge. Kenny from the down to the breadstick. Looking to find himself too. That player is out. Safe for now. 3v3. Oh, here comes Eric Boom. He's in between all three members. Yeah, a little bit too aggressive in the grouping there from Optic. Reigns supreme. But maybe a square up right now down this outer street. Miami trying to win the rotation battle and see if they can catch a player. But Optic, for the moment, they are rotating together. Shotzi leading the charge. And they've all gone to A. They've left the B-bomb site wide open. And Heretics, again, what time do you commit to the plant? 
Now Optic in a position to rebound towards that B-bomb site. Dashi will be the tip of the spear on this approach. 25 on the clock. And Dash is just going to keep him guessing two different directions. The pinch is going to come in, and if you plant the bomb, you are going to get caught. Shotzi being sent in for the kill. Here we go. The pinch is now on. Dash is the top of the escalators. There's the first, and it's going to be a cleanup. It's Big Bruce. He's on a five. One more kill, Nets in the cruise missile this time. 10 and 4 for Dashi. And just super simple decisions again. After the opening salvo comes out, Dashi's saying, hey man, three nades landed at my feet. There's a lot of pressure over towards the bridge. Everybody gets grouped up together, and Optics start to make the plays. Leaving the late flanker behind, and Dashi, as soon as he gets the comms, gets sent in for the kill. That is a beautiful bounce back round again there from Optic. Tie up the odds. Dashi a kill away from a cruise. In Miami, it has been much more painful when they're not getting these first bloods. Oh, indeed. Well, all square at 3-3. Three, three. And look, they did not want to give up the B-side again. That is a <laughs> nice little mid-map stack, but unfortunately for them, nobody's home. Chossie got eyes on that, I do believe, and he's pulled that bomb right back. Dashing on the quick reposition towards that far right-hand side flank. You're looking towards the A-bomb site. The heretics are nowhere to be seen. Well, yeah, Kenny's calling out right now. I don't see anything. Nobody's on the back wall. I'm not sure if anybody's going to be boxes, but the nades clear out the back. Smoke's route. Get this bomb down. And that's going to be a plan. I don't think anyone from the heretics is going to check it. And Pred, oh, he might be able to get on the board here. He's in a sweet spot. Able to catch these players on the push. You can hear them. Pred springs to life. Oh, yeah, he's still in the donut. Only for the first blood, though. Shotzi, they have to know he's in garage, but Shotzi, if he kicks open the doors, maybe can make the play, but you wait too long. Air Broom gonna break it down. This will be a 2v4. Shotzi has to do it himself. Can I get the third? Wow, a kill that wasn't a metals. This is for the ace. The bad news for him, though, is he hasn't got a huge amount of time, and Eric Boom is taking the 200 IQ play and defused the bomb. The Heretics take the lead. Yeah, if I'm playing against Shotzi, I end up in a 1v1 in a situation like that. I'm not playing for the kill. I'm hopping the bomb and praying. And what's a prayer for a non-believer? Doesn't matter. Still gets answered. Heretics with a nice bounce back round, but that is, that is dicey. He keeps the streak alive as well. So on a five spree now for Shotzi, that's going to be an issue in a moment. Lucky with bomb in hand now. Heretics on attack. Can they keep the momentum going? Shotzi, though, looking for that cruise. He might be able to get it right here and now. Oh, this is great present. Shotzi's able to call out, hey, there was nothing down the street. It's only one guy that showed face. And you already have number five. Kenny's calling out, there's nothing A either. So you get a ton of map control from Optic. This is sit and wait for the comms to come through before you jump and make a play. Because Shotzi basically owns half the map. If Eric Boom wins the gunfight, that changes everything. Bomb now moving towards A. Kenny with the first blood. That's going to be the pressure moment, too. Number two, if he wants to push through Garage, you got Dashi looking over Ken as well. Man, disadvantage. Nice win there from Pred. Redemption for him by the boxes. Flying forward. Shotzi in the flank. That's the sixth kill. That's going to be streaks all down to Lucky as we are going to four to four. Once again, Optic bounce back. In that's a defensive setup there from Optic where you're feeling amazing at the start of that round. As soon as Shotzi gets up to like past the bridge, gets that mid-map control, both your ARs on the wings of the map, it's the comfy setup. You just have to execute after the fact. Optic deliver. Not for Miami, honestly. I feel like it's the creativity on the defensive end that might be the difference maker. Miami, they've had a couple different stacks. They've spread the map a little bit. They tried to dominate the middle of the map. They've given it up completely. They're mixing things up, but they got to make sure they're on point here is Optic maybe a, a nice little 2-2 split. Opening up some doors, and I think that's just for a fake. That's to, like, me like mess with information long term. The Aikens coming through. Dashi not prepared, but Kenny is. Gives you the extra odds. Kenny with two. Shossi looking to close it out here. He only finds one into Lucky, but he knows that Vehicle is trapped on the inside of Garage. Nades might be able to get the job done, as he is in trouble now here in this 1v3. I mean, this is just absurd. Pred finds the best corners. He loves his corners. It's going to be free because he is the best corners. There you go. Optic Texas. They get the win. That's a big win. That's map point. And that's one cruise down. Lethal execution there from Optic Texas. Not a hope in hell for the Heretics. Especially after Kenny's two-piece. That was very, very good timing. I mean, it really did look like Dashi got caught completely off guard in the middle of the YY. Kenny, though, the YY merchant <laughs> ready to make up for past sins and delivers death towards two. 
Map point from Optic and a 2-0 advantage with the two upcoming maps is massive. Miami Heretics, you got to dig deep. Here we go. Lucky once again with the bomb. The Heretics looking towards that B bomb site. Hit once again. Nades are out. Pred first blood. He's gone from 0-6 to 3-6. Speaking of 6, it's shots. He's still on the spree. Can the Heretics find a kill here? Ah, uh, he's hunting. You get the hard stun. You go get that free kill. Four versus two now from Optic. Just gonna seal the deal with dominance. <clears throat> nice little tear there on Rio. Optic Texas wasting no time on the deck. They tear the Heretics apart in the final pieces of Rio there. My goodness. Things were looking very, very strong. But a 6-4 finish is what we'll see here, and that's a 2-0 lead in the series. The Heretics struggle streak continues. We'll see if they can bounce back, but that Rio chance, that was a good look for Optic Texas. Some nice new positions, great nade spots. It all worked out for him there. And those last two rounds, disgusting. Yeah, that's also 22-9 and nine there from Shotzi and Dashi. And all things considered, a lot of these rounds actually did come down to sort of those first blood fights. Even when Miami was getting the first bloods in the final round, Kenny picks up two and the trade just go the advantage towards Optic. The biggest round of that game, quite literally, might have been Round number one, where Miami get the first blood and Shotzi just pieces you up. I mean, those are superstar plays coming through. That is absurdity from that young man, MVP caliber, just the expectation at this point. But from Optic, it was the first half of the series that for them, probably gonna be a bit more difficult. Karachi control, they are one of the best controlled teams in the game. Karachi is a map they love and sub base. I mean, these guys are destructive. So Optic, they have set themselves up perfectly now in the series. Well, we could be seeing a 3-0 if the stats go their way. But so far, a very strong showing from Optic Texas here in our series. Miami Heretics, time to dig deep and try to push themselves towards that game four. We'll find out how that game four goes after this very quick commercial break. It's 2-0 with Optic Texas in the lead. This is the CDL. up your competition with the executive chef operator now available in game in the call of duty store upgrade your game with a scuff save 30 dollars on the official cdl collection at scuff.co slash cdl get better with the scuff the first performance gaming controller visit scuff.co slash cdl to change your game Such a beautiful play, man, which will now lead to Optic Texas taking the lead with only 24 wow. seconds left. That's such a great heads up play, great teamwork on full display, great trust. But he's nowhere near. Wait a second, Vivid may have held this long enough. The pistol's out and Lucky, two in a row. So it all falls into the hands of Lucky. What can he try to get done? You get it done by yourself. This guy's taking over, man. What's that? Is this 14 yeah. already? Jesus. I know it. I thought the race was going to favor over to Seattle Surge, but it's just been a multi-kill or somebody going beast mode. It's, oh, it's Gio a four. who kills the entire squad. He is lighted up. Give him more. Papa's hungry. Cell will be able to kind of avoid this. Yeah, there's a tag on it, but Sip gets Wait a minute. Slip. Cell, damage comes through. Time is an issue. Oh, my goodness. Here we go again. Finally, the kill comes out. Does he get on in time? Oh, oh no. Nice. Five in a row. Saves the round and gets us locked in at two. Khan gets it done. Lock in, fans. Does he get timing again? Oh, sure does. He finds Hydra. Red went one for one, but the trades are decent. We're going to go 2v2 early. Does he catch the timing? Doors pop. There's the first. Skies tries the battle back. Not going to happen. Optic take the round 11. Woo-wee. That's how you get it done if you are Optic Texas.
ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. We're really close to that map number three. We're going to play another game of control this time on Karachi. It's Miles and Chance ready to rock and roll through Optic Texas, taking on Miami Heretics. And so far, Optic Texas looking very good. It's a 2-0. I, at this point, I'm genuinely just scared of Shati. It seems like every single map, he is getting the most impactful kills that we are going to see. He's the playmaker. He's got the high IQ plays. He reads the flanks. He gets into positions. He's got the trigger discipline. The dude literally does everything, in my opinion, the MVP of map number two as well. So we're going to Karachi, maybe a map that could turn into his playground, and obviously a map where Optic as a whole, they've been electric. Control, their best game mode by far. Oh, by a long way. Uh, it's going to be disgusting. We'll see how that goes. We're on the absolute corner of that one ready to rock and roll but folks thanks for tuning in thanks for the guys in the venue as well it's been a great day so far still got a match to go later on today it's not over yet boys and girls hope you're comfortable it is now time to delve into map number three the heretics taking on optic texas crutchy control and the heretics still searching for their first map win on land as well they're knocking on the devil's door but they cannot quite get it done they have beaten optic on this map but obviously that was back in january optic have certainly been been making improvements since then. Their control has been absurd. Heretics got to find something special. You need to pop off potential. They had a splash of it in map number one. They're going to need a whole ocean here in map three. Towards the B zone, we go for the Heretics here on attack. They got players in A as well. And it's a messy, explosive start to the round. No one able to drop just yet. Eric Boone with the smooth moves, potentially looking at a couple of kills here. But for now, happy to take that very slow capture towards A. One segment down, two to go. Yeah, almost playing it like a round of s and Try to get the players in position. Finally, the first bloods roll through, though. Shati does get traded, but it is trades all over the place. Metals, last man standing, and he's at least done his job. He's going to be annoying. Drag some pressure over towards B, and well, that thorn in the optic side will continue the floodgates are open they have made their way towards this zone how many more players can they get on the inside shots he's tagged metals with a suppressive fire three kills to the nothing so far here comes dashi kenny he and pred they managed to take care of business there that's a lot of work done on b but not able to get to that little marker you have to complete the segment otherwise the progress isn't safe but you just need the kills as well and they're not gonna get any of them oh, no. they got picked apart optic gives swarm in the retake on the b zone done to perfection the small window of opportunity miami had just gets slowed down and slammed in their faces dashi right now i mean this is easy Easy pickings for him, or maybe Eric Boom, rival nine, the ray gun indeed. The ray gun indeed, he gets zapped out of that one, but still, Optic have done what they can to make B as safe as possible. There's less than 30 seconds to play. Shots, he's about to go on a worldwide tour of Karachi now and try and take care of these players in the back line. A though, slow cap, two members now on it. It should go a lot faster. Ah. Shots, he's causing problems. This is an issue, but the second segment of A is gone. He's challenging like that. That is a terrible sign. Now Eric Boom is spawning up and running backwards to try to help out his teammates. Shotzi going on absolute routes. Everybody is top third. Good news is, though, because Shotzi actually goes on this flank, the close strong spawns are going to be wide open. And now Miami can turn this into maybe two over Ooh. towards the B zone. They go. It's happening, boys and girls. Everybody strap in. We're going to get in towards B. We're going to find a table and enjoy the fine culinary delights of that cafe. All three members now of the Heretics holding on to this on Second segment out the window. Optic have got to send it. And I don't think anyone's even going to get close enough. That is the round. That is my ranked play teammates. Black out moment of the day. I hate when it happens and Shotzi shows it off there. He does everything right. He guns the player up top and then he pushes out the wrong spawn and just gives Heretics the close one. If his team had actually gotten the players off the A zone, he could have just laid devastation from top three. But the second they lost it, well, the round follows in suit. So you just outslay by a pretty sizable amount. Heretics will take it. They needed that round. Oh, yeah, that was good. Well, can they do it twice more? Defending round now for the Heretics. They've got to hold on. It's a 2-2 split now for the boys of Optic. Eric Boom, though, throws an absolute peach downtown and gets Shotzi. Yeah, now Metals and Vickle, though, have their work cut out for them. A couple of players made it way towards the B zone. Metals in the back alley. Not the gun you want in that moment. Dash is going to gun him down in this B zone. Already open. Two players on point. You lose top red control, and you might just lose this zone. It is the triple stack in from Optic. Maybe Dashi wants the kills first, but they are still firmly under control. Optic really said, hold my can. A monster, baby. They are slain so far. Back door. Shotsy flies out into at least one. Kenny still on the point, and B is gone. Two minutes and 13 to take A. Uh, just like that, you lose one gunfight on the B zone. 
drone and optic make it look easy flying off the point to get this done and they have already got the pressure on a as well dashy looking from top red well you're simply never going barrels alley try to go somewhere else ken gonna pick you apart in miami heretics desperate for a kill oh yeah it's not getting any better big bruce is frying here comes fred oh it's nearly all four shots he dip a toe baby we love it that's all four in the point the stack complete i know those cold war optic fans true ptsd about all those times where optic needed to stack the point guys look it only took a couple of years but they've learned how to do it that also by the way that might be one of the fastest rounds of control we have seen this year there was basically no time wasted that was the opening break pays off perfectly there from optic and they didn't stack the b zone necessarily quite as hard but still got it done towards the end there's Kenny on a four spree. The only reason Heretics even got round number one was Optic dropped the ball, but they made up that for that mistake instantly, and now I'm a little bit scared. Don't be afraid, Chance. Heretics are attacking this time round. Will they have the same blessings that were bestowed upon them and they took advantage of with a plomb in that first round? Eric Boom dodges the stun, and now Kenny. An awkward gunfight. Lovely crossfire there as Lucky is getting the job done on A, one segment down. Yeah, here comes the flank though. Shotzi wins the gunfight, gets traded out, but that is sort of that opening. Nobody on the zone now, so the top goes to ticking. At least no crews there from Ken, and you already see guys like Metals number four. He's playing under the dumpster. So Optic have to respond and get some of these kills, and they respond perfectly. Shotzi reads the corner. This is light work right now on Karachi. Three members of Optic now trying to hit the backside of the spawn. Now Eric Boom doing the best he can to make sure his spawn is safe, and that is going to be a tough one. Dashy still in the back line there, causing issues. So there's now a couple of problems to deal with. On A, we now sit, though. Lucky once again going back to it. Keep the stop on the clock. And Shotzi found the route once again, but he's going incredibly distant. He's over by Coop. He's doing smooth moves to jump up pop as well. It only gets you one, but Shotzi, heretics, they're going to have no idea how he just pulled that off. There's the nade. The contest. And the kill. Fred's in there. Can't quite get the second. You're going to be able to finish up A. No problem right now for the Heretics. If you can take care of Shotzi and transition immediately to B, that could be something. But damn, what a kill that was. 12 and 6. 12 and 7. Yeah, never a fun thing where the sentence is, if you take care of Shotzi, you see even in moments like that, nearly impossible to kill. Dashi, big moment. If he gets that kill, the spawn out commences. Eric Boom wins a massive one-on-one -on -one gunfight. Can't keep it going, though. Pred up top. The next man they're going to have to weed out. Right now, everybody off spawn from Optic filling in in the exact right spots, even ready for the potential flank. If Eagle wants to go for it, for the moment, Shotzi reading the pressure. Optic keeping everything contained. Everyone there on the Heretics have spread out across the map, so there's an opportunity for Vehicle to go pretty large here. But sadly, Pred has made the perfect read. They're able to count the heads of those Miami Heretics players on the approach. Pred gets one. Kenny gets his. And that's Vehicle taken care of as well. So that's a three down for now, technically. We're gonna go back to spawn now. You've still got a minute to play. Heretics aren't out of this yet. And that's also Optic showing off the conveyor belt system perfectly. Every single player in order of where they spawn knows exactly where they have to go. But now we're timing with the spawns out. Air Boom has gotten towards the back, but maybe it does last for a decent bit of time. Thought the nade would connect it, but if the nade doesn't, Ken does. He falls as well. And from Heretics, you are simply back to square one. Optic right now. Now, playing like a mechanic, everything is in order. And Kenny will not leave that B zone no matter what. He's keeping an iron grip on that one. Fred's got the middle of the map covered. Hip fire there. Takes care of Equal. A second. 20 seconds to go on the round. Nice little roar of dead in the comms as well from Fred. Ken might fall, but there's always someone to pick it back up. Fred nearby. And with 12 seconds on the clock, they're playing it slow, giving Fred time to reposition. Eight seconds, maybe a flood in the oh, dead. He is trolling. Oh. He is coming and screaming. Fred feasting right now on Karachi. A big round from Optic Texas. A very large deficit in the life count as well. So should segment captures come into play which at this point in time i don't know about that one but both dashi and pred having a fantastic map so far a 13 and 9 for dashi Fred sitting at 12 and 9 as well. I mean, their teamwork is pretty on point as well. They've had one small mistake in this game that might have cost them a round, but everything else is done nearly perfectly. The fundamentals completely on point. The decision making and the timings as good as it gets on Karachi control. One round away to seal the deal and add another 3-0 to the belt. Here we go. Can opt to close out on an attacking round with the Heretics. Will they be able to hold fast here? 
Perez already got the high ground. That's an issue. Capturing a slow but surely. Shotzi now going on a bit of a run. No need. Pred still there in the feed as the young Australian has sprung to life. Well, one big kill on the flank though. Elise gets him off the A zone. Shotzi gets shut down as well, trying to be annoying over towards B. So a moment right now of stabilization Ooh. for the Heretics. His optic yet to get back on this zone, but they got the power positions. He still get top three. You see Shotzi has made his way back to the point. Nice little setup, very difficult to break down. Oh, lovely work again. Now oh, the Heretics, Metals and Lucky finding their kills. Mid-map, not that much safer. Kadashi continues to be a big old turret up here. Oh, nice work out of Lucky. The headshots are there. Kenny cleans up mid on the map. Second segment of A, long gone. That's the crossfire. A should be done. Yeah, you get the stack too. So right six is going to bump five off the time. That means Kenny can fly forward and work with Dashi over towards this zone. Shots might not be on point for number one, but he's coming towards Dashi. Metals by himself, has to slow him down because the flank is coming through too. Three players right now of Optic are swarming around this time. Optic have the numbers. Can they get the damage now? Oh, that teamwork there. Dashi plays it perfectly now. It's got an opportunity to get on towards the B zone. It's a two-man stack in a moment, and that could be game. Heretics, last chance now to stay alive in the series. I mean, teamwork like that, that is what dreams are made of. It is players nearby. It is Pred gets some roam. The kill feed is falling. Last man is medals. He can't get it done. Optic looking perfect on the day. And that is that the 3-0 is complete. Not so much with a bang, but a whimper is a slow and steady capture. 3-1 in control, 3-0 in the series. Optic Texas with nothing but confidence as they march on in the tournament. And I think Pred might be a Tool fan. He does not have a short memory. He has flashbacks of Vehicle shining off the 3-0, and well, that might be a pain point of regret for Miami. Back to back now, six maps in a row. They have taken Heretics down on and Pred a clean performance as is across the board there from Optic. That is some of the best teamwork that honestly at this point we come to expect from this squad, but they are showing off the goods today. Yeah, very, very strong show in there from the Optic boys. Happy indeed. Of course, Karma and JP coming up to congratulate them on the victory. We'll see what happens in a brief moment for them. And again, they march forward in the tournament. They'll keep their run going. Heretics will drop down to the lower bracket. One chance left now in the tournament to get some wins on the map, but also to see if they can keep themselves alive in their very own major. Exciting stuff there is another 3-0 under the belt for the boys in green. And they might have been ever so slightly tested on Rio, but outside of that, an effectively flawless performance. Kicking off their tournament right and a team that is needed to be clutched throughout the stage. Well, the dominance finally makes a, a nice little guest appearance on land. And again, we saw it literally right from the jump. The boys in the comms coming out hot as well. But credit where credit is due, right? I'm seeing Dash with nine assists on top of the 16 kills. Him and Kenny's team work together there towards the end. Again, that is what dreams are made of. It's one thing that, you know, both be hitting the back alley for that one player Dash, just to pump the brakes and stop. Let the play breathe. Don't have to hit that left stick. It takes a lot of control to do that. Shout out to Bruce. His game has changed immensely over the years he's been in the CDL and he's really starting to shine and that's saying something. 251, 65, 6, 4, 3, one, it is done. Three to nothing. Optic Texas walking over with a big win there. Chance. Massive surprise. And what you got? You got anything else? Anything else? Uh, nothing else. Again, they came out and took care of business. All about it. And well, now time to relax and get ready to take the day off tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've got our Monster Energy Victory Spotlight up on the stage. Guy Blaze joins Pred. Thank you so much, Miles. Miami, show some love to Pred and Optic Texas as they make it to Saturday in the upper bracket. Pred, yet again, another 3-0 against this Miami squad. Let's talk about it. And you know what? For you, let's go to map number two. You know, in that S&D, if they took that, it probably could have been a different series. But, you know, you had a little rough start, but you figured out how to close out that search and destroy. What did you see there in that game plan for you to be able to take that lead away from them when they had the 4-3 and close it out three rounds in a row? Uh, honestly, that's like, I think that map we've only played it once in a match. So obviously, you know, SND matches play a bit differently. And, you know, it was a good feel for us because we've never, we haven't played that map, I think, only once. So um, we just adjusted mid map, you know. I feel like we we're playing a bit too passive at times. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we just turned up the aggression a little bit because we we're just giving them too much respect when mm -hmm. in reality we shouldn't. Yeah. And uh, that's it, man. Hey. Now, speaking of aggression, okay, I know how aggressive you are. I know how aggressive Kenny is. I know how aggressive Shotzi is. But talk to him about how cool, calm, and collective Bruce is as the AR on his team and how he's been playing so far. I mean, you know Bruce, man. He, he shoots the straightest, man. So we have him in the back of the line shooting over us. 
And um, you know, it works out. It works out great, man. Me, Ken, and Anna flying, and Bruce is just tagging everyone up for us. So it's a, it's a great dynamic. Definitely a great combination there. And so you know, here in the beautiful city of Miami, what has it been like to be getting cheered on by these fans and having a good time in Florida? How's your vibe been? I mean, you know, the Green Wall, like I've always said, it's unguardable, man. The best, the best fan base in the world, man. So I appreciate you guys always coming out and supporting us, man. All right, everybody. That's gonna do it for me and Pratt on the stage. Show some more love to Optic Texas, Chris. Take us away. Big win for Optic, and it's back-to-back -back land successes. A 3-0 comes out today, and if we look at the series, Ali, this is kind of reminiscent of the previous match, where Miami at times is ahead in games one and two, yeah. but eventually Optic just comes back and takes over that game at the end. Yeah, that game one felt almost like a little bit of a warm-up for Optic Texas, because it was relatively close until about the final P3 to P4, and then it's Kenny on the rotation getting those two kills to kind of shut down all of Miami Heretics' hope on flipping those spawns, but that real man, I was really impressed with Optic Texas. Obviously, they have been really good at search and destroy, but for me, it was the fact that Miami was getting up. They were winning the first blood battle. They were playing their trades incredibly well, but Texas is like, all right, you're going to play the trades? Fine. We'll start wolf packing the entire map together and play with each other. And what does that do? That's round after round after round. The Optic Texas crawls right back in to get that map win. And a quick reminder for all the Miami fans taking off early tonight. Reminder, you're playing tomorrow. You're still in the tournament. There's an elimination bracket waiting for the heretics absolutely man and heretics they had a decent performance throughout that series but they went up against a powerhouse who has been battle tested backs against the wall we saw it in that hard point like ali mentioned kenny has a huge play they get about 100 unanswered points then we get to that game to search and destroy Fred said he was really proud in the interview he said he's really proud of how they started to take map control and that's what happened exactly. unfortunately for miami heretics they started to give up mid map they started to do some like three three man pushes over towards garage they get punished by a pinch from Optic, and then in the very next round, they try to, like, make a play before the streak comes down. It's just not enough, man. Optic's too strong across the board. We get a world-class control performance for Game 3. Yo, and give me up top, because you just said exactly what I wanted to follow up on that with, is the fact that Miami, near the end of that map, was just giving way too much real estate on the map on offense. Yeah. Just way too much information for Optic Texas. Sorry, I had to see if I could still do it. Uh, it hasn't been <laughs> since elementary school. Let's take a look here at this win here for Optic, and of course, plays like this make it possible. It's your scuff play of the game. Kenny getting the job done, shooting some bodies to celebrate. Here is the big man, Fred and Kenny combining for some ridiculous numbers this series. Kenny had a fantastic map one in this series. I think he's kind of the reason they held on and kept it so close as long as they did. And then everybody in Texas started to slowly start streaking. It started with Kenny, and then it moved to Fred, and then it yeah. moved to Shotzi and Dashi. And slowly they just started infecting each other to start making the right plays and start going on these streaks. And I just think that's really impressive from an Optic Texas team that previously we saw had have to have one player clutch up in these situations, aka Shotzi. Nameless, it's been a minute since we've seen Optic with a trophy. Are they still in the running in your eyes? 100%. They're the favorite here at this tournament. They proved it online time and time again. They have had so much practice coming into this tournament, and that series right there, that was a statement. It's like, hey, we're here to play. Everybody's contributing, and we saw it. Taking care of business, Optic moves forward, and they get a chance to play against Toronto Ultra. And this is good news. If you watch Boston, remember, Optic, they fall to phase. Toronto, this is a different ballgame. Yeah, listen, this match is going to be a banger. Listen, Ultra have had some problems online, but they had a good matchup against the Legion that a lot those maps could have went either way. Both these teams look final right now. Subliners also in that winner's bracket round two. And we come back, we find out who joins them. Will it be the LA Thieves or is it Atlanta FaZe? Stay tuned. your game with a scuff. Save $30 on the official CDL collection at scuff.co slash CDL. Get better with a scuff, the first performance gaming controller. Visit scuff.co slash CDL to change your game. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL operator, weapon blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in game now.
Oh yeah, oh, it's going on CDL TV, baby. <laughs> sure, <Sorry. laughs> your life. They actually went for the challenges and gave us an opportunity, which is something I hate seeing. And oh, what the hell was that? Got That's the best gun bro. in the game. <laughs> that is the best gun in the game. That's Listen. Where am I looking here? It's Mother's Day, all right? Call your moms, all right? And maybe I'll call them too. I am bitch, auntie bitch. Yeah, I'm bitch. I'm bitch. I'm bitch. What's left? What's left? I'm not sure. I'm cutting in. I'm not sure if I'm getting old, but I swear to God, Joe, sometimes when Selium talks, all I hear is. Yeah. Get to the window and Shotzi just lying in wait. He's waiting for the call from his teammates. The moment of pounce, he's trying to bait these guys out. And the bait, indeed, you got the two players on the flank coming through. They've got the spawns. Now the pressure is on Cammy. Oh, looking for the second, looking for the third. He wow. takes him down. Oh, Cammy! Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's show. This weekend, we saw the top Call of Duty teams compete at the U.S. Championship held at Full Sail University. In a surprising turn of events, strictly business, the nine seed came out of nowhere to dominate the bracket, <laughs> defeating nine-time champions Complexity twice to secure the number one seed at the Call of Duty World Championship. Um, you know, we knew we were going to come in and handle business. You know, they're a pretty <laughs> team. Um, I don't know what all the hype is about around this match. I mean, look at the <laughs> scores. I did. I Here come the thieves. They cannot allow this to slip down. And there is snaking going on. Octane and Envoy have broken through. Can Ten. find one? Find the second one. They won. And it's cased up. Looking for the last. And they it up. <laughs> Ten seconds. Ten points. The comeback of the CDL year. Can they do it? The thieves are moving. Well, they are moving into the kill scene. And Legion has just made the greatest comeback in half point. You will ever see. So we're gonna be really good. I like your trophies. Which know. one's your favorite? Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> man, I don't know. This one seems like insane. Look at this one too. Like this is crazy. <laughs> like the golden nut, baby. Part of the my, diamond nut. Excuse me. You know what I'm saying? How could I not be like? How could I? How could I not feel like I'm not gonna lose? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. And that's what I was gonna ask you. Is like, Sib, you're coming into a winning culture. These guys won champs. We obviously. Someone on the flank, he's able to find one criminally. The Craigs, they're able to eat two headshots. They know that formal is gone. Vivid. Oh, I think that's a bit of an over challenge. Envoy, he goes to the defensive side. Nobody able to check the bomb. Crim ready for it. Nice shot. Or criminally now gonna find all four kills. This is formal for the ace. Third. Four. Illy wraps back and it's formal with the ace.
craziest play I have ever seen in my entire life. I don't know if anything will ever stack up to this play. I mean, I can't believe he had time to reload for the first one. I mean, part of that at all. And the fact that Priesta accidentally mantles the god heady. Standy will get free info here onto Assault. Quickly finds the kill. No, no. Oh! 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 He's going for the assassination. Didn't hold the button now long enough. And Assault says not so fast. Let me tell you right now. <laughs> these guys play every day. You should know you cannot assassinate someone no. when they are a little bit taller than you on the map. And unfortunately, <laughs> the 1B dials doesn't work, but you know them hands from Assault. They are definitely warm. Two punches right to the chest to take down Standy. It certainly makes the big play. And now you're on offense flanking. You've taken the bomb straight through the middle of the map. Hook, he's Love everywhere. It. You're getting oh flanked on defense, but a BZ gives him the ish, and Methods wins his one as well. I don't care if he gets traded. No. It's a 3v2, and a BZ's still alive. That's a, a GG. They're playing my court. They yeah, have to they're... play. They are there's two, one, one shot. There's two, two, two water. They went, they, were like, make, like, make, they, went from, they went red. They went red, Clay. Did they? Yeah, yeah, they, they went, went red. Up it, up it, up it. Both red, both in shade red. Both, both in shade red. They went front door, they went front door. He's hopping, he's hopping, he's hopping. Watch, 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 Quite an exciting show so far. No game fives as our top seeds have been able to take care of business and we're going in to the final fight here in the winner's bracket. Atlanta phase number three seed taking on number six in the LA Thieves. Alley Cat Nameless, thoughts coming into this battle. Alley, who's got the edge? There's got to be an upset at some point today, right? All of the favorites so far have won the series and pretty handedly so. I'd say that Optic series might have been the fastest on the day. Pretty swift. Listen, our job up here is always to provide the analytics and sell the dream. Now, I want to say Atlanta did struggle up against LAG, but they played LA Thieves recently, and they destroyed them. So for LA Thieves, maybe they did some research, watched some VOD, they come back stronger today. But it does feel like a true David versus Goliath. Well, LA Thieves have been underdogs in almost all of their fights. They started Major 2 at the bottom of the leaderboard. They finished in six after all their qualifiers, but they are taking on a squad that knows nothing but championship matches. Atlanta face falling short in Boston, looking to right the ship here in Miami. I think respectfully, like, I mean, it happened a while ago, right? So LA Thieves has opportunity in the series. The issue is, is that Atlanta phase, like, regardless, they're always going to be in that top three, top four conversation when it comes to land time. Like, for the past three years, it's life, death, taxes, and Atlanta phase in the top four. And even though they're having a little bit of a struggle right now, like, this team is disgusting. They set the blueprint that a lot of these teams are trying to replicate. And you can see it here, first, second, and third. Like, yeah, there's a little bit of a drop-off, but the scary part is that their ARs have gotten better during this split. Listen, the thing that I worry about is you see a lot of these teams really working on their search and destroy. Optic, New York, they look so good in those game modes. Even some of the teams at the bottom of the leaderboard, like LA Thieves, who top three at S&D throughout this split. Atlanta phase is at risk of getting Nezlode. I never thought uh -oh. I would say that. They really are, just given how they've been in that game mode. You can see for the pregame, they've been unbelievable in control. 7-0. They have three players who are the top three in control. Abizi, Selium, and Draza. One, two, and three. Cheers. And their defense has been unbelievable, man. They've just been dominating everybody when it comes to the swing game mode. And then, not enough juice. Second in hold percentage, 12th in points per hold, and 12th in hold efficiency. That has to be better in HPs, especially for some of the top teams. This is going to be a good fight. Hopefully, LA Thieves able to steal an early hard point because you know what's going to happen come that game three if history repeats itself. Atlanta Phase versus LA Thieves. That's the battle on your stage. And we got to introduce you to a Thieves lineup that has made a big roster change from stage one to stage two. They put Cami on the bench. Joe DeSieves goes down to challengers as well. And instead, you have brought in some new blood that is doing work. Yeah, you bring in Nasty and Kremp, right? And I mean, they've done their jobs thus far. Nasty has been as consistent as ever. But the biggest question mark for me right now is if Kremp can be that aggressive frontrunner SMG for this team that they need. Because the reason they're falling behind a lot of these big top dogs is that their slaying has just not been up to par. The last time they went up against the Atlanta phase, it was an engagement of 60 kills between Celium and Simp. So they can't
can't hang in the slang department, but as of recency bias, they've been slowly getting better. But like I said, Team KD overall right now is sitting at a .93. It just won't work versus the top four teams. Name was 13 and 15. Map count is good enough for a four and three record. It yeah. seems like when they get the dubs, they have to go the distance. Yeah, they go the distance. I mean, the hard point hasn't been awful. They're five and seven. They went from one and 12. They have three players who are averaging over 4K damage per HP. So they're definitely competitive there. And then throughout the split, they played all the hard point maps, trying to discover what they're good at. They have wins on four of them out of the five. So they have massive improvement. And then for the Monster Energy pregame, leading lives too fast on attack. Two and 13 record, one and five on high rise and one and three on Karachi. Just got to slow down earlier in the rounds and mitigate that damage. And then the early round monster, 62.3% opening dual rate ranks first throughout the second split, largely in part due to Afro, who's been unreal there. And they're first on both attacking and defending sides when it comes to that. And you can see Afro 17-6, nasty, nine and three. What a duo. Can we talk about MVP performance? People are saying you're gonna need star play out of your star players. Do LA Thieves have a star or who is an MVP candidate that we should look at coming into the match? LA Thieves, you'd have to say Ghosty. Yeah, yes. he's been the most consistent player. He's been the leader for this team since having to leave Optic Texas last year. He's had to fill some pretty big shoes when it comes to LA Thieves roster. And then you look on the side of Atlanta Phase, you talk about Slam, right? The most consistent player in the game that we've had for the past three years. I mean, he hasn't ever missed a step. He still leads overall in KD overall in hard points. Search and destroy though, a little bit of a dip, but 1.15, I mean, come on. It was when we started saying shots, he's looking like the best player in the game. All of the FaZe fans came out to Selium's defense. <laughs> Is he the best player in the game? Where do you have Selium right now in your power rankings? I don't have him as the best player in the game right now. I mean, he, he does get, I mean, he's fantastic, right? right? It almost feels like it's disrespect to say that, but you know, he's got other people on his team who are dropping crazy amounts of damage. He's got other people who are top three in the same game modes that he's frying in. It's a collective team effort. They're all fantastic. I like this squad on both sides of the ball. We'll see, can LA Thieves draw blood early? It's not going to be easy against LA and crew. Alley Cat, break it down for me, though. Expectations coming in as we're going to be kicking things off with a hard point. How can LA Thieves match up against FaZe today? I think they can do well again. I think it comes down to the SMGs and if they're going to be able to hang in the killing in the slang department, I don't see them winning the control. So we need to see that strong search and destroy that we saw from them at the beginning of the split. We haven't seen a game five all day. I don't think we get one right now in the scuff pick -em. I got to lock in Atlanta phase. Top seeds are moving forward. I think there's got to be an upset on the day, but I'm not going to bet with it. So I'm going to stick with Atlanta phase. I was getting ready for to say LA Thieves and I was going to lose it. I'm going with <laughs> Atlanta phase. I think they take this series pretty handedly. Great matchup coming your way. And for the walkouts, we got our best friend on the main stage. Show some love to Guy Blaze. Thank you so much, Chris. Now, Miami, it's time to get ready for this last match of the day. You ready to go? That's what I want to hear. Now, this squad coming to the stage is looking to run it up here for the team. Get ready, because here comes the Thieves. Spin that, spin that, then we spin that to some more. Okay. We gon' get it poppin', dog. It's time to hit the flow. No, no, no. I ain't had enough of it. I think I need some more. Some more. He ain't got these on, cause they don't sell them at the store. Uh -uh. I won't take no shit from no one. I don't bend and I don't fold. Oh. We was OT hitting licks. You would've thought we was on toe. Gotta let me in the game or else we kicking down the door. Bruce Leroy with the swag, boy. You know I got that glow. Ooh. I'ma say it once so you get it good. Miami, get loud for the Los Angeles Thieves! We got Afro, Ghosty, Crip, and Nasty. The LA Thieves drinking that secret sauce ready for a dub. The turnaround that these guys have had is so impressive. They went from not being able to win a hard point to having a top six seed coming into this major, and they want nothing more than to upset one of the greatest teams we have in the CDL. Now it's time to bring out their opponents, Atlanta FaZe. All right, let's bring out their opponents and see if they're gonna have trouble with another Los Angeles squad. Get ready, cause here comes Atlanta. I have a plan. 
crazy with the rage, dangerous and rage. Oh, 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 Let's get a little bit wacky with it, Joe. And I've got a question for you. You know, uh, okay. for Atlanta Faze, you know, it's been uh, consistency, right? All these finals, you know, you may not be winning them, but you've been getting to Sunday over and over again. You do that by beating teams you're better than. I mean, it's yeah. what it is. You don't, you don't get upset very often. Um, do you make them a little more prone to it after the LAG loss heading into this event? No, I think the only time you really start to question the Atlanta phase is probably Sundays, right? It feels like they get there no matter what. They're, okay. they're either be close to a final or in the final. So Lost not too, do much to you then? No, not too much. I mean, we saw that, you know, last stage, the whole Ultra Boston match. Yeah. Like, there's times where these teams have, have made some slip-ups in our top four. But on the other side, for LA Thieves, you are getting better. It seems like you're trending in the right direction. It's just I don't know if they have enough for, for this phase team. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting uh, matchup. You know, it, it's been... It was dark there for a while for Thieves. Like, you know, you have to go through this complete rebuild and restructure, you know, Octane retires, things fall apart, your other All-Stars go all over the place, and you kind of start afresh, and it starts really rough. But finally, it seems like there's some positive movement. Finally. Yeah, no, obviously, that's a the team change. You bring in Nasty, you bring in Kremp. Uh, you know, the respawns are fantastic, but they're getting better. You know, you look at Invasion Hardpoint, they've played it five times, two and three, where Phaser are two and oh, throughout major two qualifiers. Uh, but overall on the season, uh, yeah, they've played it a, a whole bunch. Phase have only dropped it one time. So th the good thing for them is they really have search and destroy figured out. Well, I was going to ask you if there's like, a, what's your, your opening here? If you're going to get an upset if you're thieves, what's it come through? What mode? I guess search, but <laughs> you're going up against Phase. Yeah, yeah, that is true. But Phase, like, what, like five and four over this split? So maybe not as dominant as they've been at times, but two losses to New York. So that kind of is what it is there. But to the hard point, we will now focus. Draza, sip for the double. Sip has been unbelievable since day one in this title. Uh, to fix this cam so we can make sure we get that great P uh, POV uh, a simp <laughs> yeah. instead of the stage. But yeah, some early time between both of these squads. A lot of time off the play clock. Ten seconds left. You have a BZ. The only player over here for phase at P2. Not able to take down Nasty. Nasty now just going to try to finesse. Throws out stuns, nades. And well, there we go. A BZ still snaps, but there is a trade from Afro. He just never really had view on him, so he lost yeah. him. Didn't realize that he kind of pushed forward. And Ends up being a kill to BZ, but it'll be Thieves now in the point over to Krimp's POV. He's trying to slide back to Tractor, just barely able to get there with sub 50 HP. Draza and the boys starting to push forward. What are your thoughts on Draza kind of in his addition to this team and maybe how he's developed over the past couple months? I mean, you know, stage one, he was trying to get comfortable. Maybe not, uh, you know, in his best play style, as confident as he is, right? Being sort of a vocal guy. But I think throughout stage two, he has really gotten better and better. And we've heard him in the interviews at the studio talking about how comfortable he is in the these positions playing the way he likes to play Call of Duty. And now the man on your screen who's similar is really getting to how he wants to play. He's been putting up numbers. He's been kind of their anchor at times in hard point. Dan Ghost, he's been a beast. No, he has. He has been uh, phenomenal for them in the respawns. Really the only consistent piece, uh, you know, when he comes to hard point, comes to control. But, I mean, we're looking at a 23 to 9 scoreline, two hills in. We're at 335 already. Yeah, yeah Joe, uh, there's a reason I was kind of asking you questions about players and stuff because... <laughs> There was nobody in the hard point really at all. There's kind of battling back and forth. Not a lot was going on. It's, we're just at the beginning moments of this series. We had 90 seconds off the play clock. Pretty unbelievable. We'll see uh, if things start to heat up a bit more as you're vying for map control and you start to get some time. 
it may be an issue there. Yeah, and Nasty's just kind of running into a wall. So we'll, we'll get that one figured out. You see the team kills coming in, and we'll probably have a bit of a restart here. So thanks for staying patient with us, and it happens. Yep, not sure exactly what's going down, but thank you guys in the venue. We'll, uh, we'll get this figured out as quickly as we can. But listen, there, I would love to chat with you and break down what we saw, Joe, but there wasn't a whole lot yet. No, I think both teams really are just vying for control. And in phase, they were setting this up right here where you're just trying to cash in at P3, right? That's what we've seen throughout this stage, uh, just controlling that that street at P2, giving them palace spawns, not overextending early on in the game to where that gets messy. Well, uh, we'll get uh, the admins in and stuff as they'll try to resolve whatever issue is going down on the main stage. Again, thank you for your patience, but uh, we'll maybe just kind of chat through stuff a little bit while we wait, maybe talk bigger picture about stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I, what was what did your final being when you did your pickups? I think it was New York Optic. That's what you had, New York Optic, so. Yeah. All right. I just kind of went for it. You never know. No, I mean, I, I think there's an argument for any of the top four. Go well, with it. Any combination you want, I think it makes sense at this point. Yeah, no, it's been crazy because it seemed like FaZe and Ultra, you know, really kind of a bit ahead after Major One, and then New York and Optus keep getting better and better and better. But I don't know. It's like, I uh, still FaZe and Ultra. We'll see. Yeah, we'll they, see. They've been, they've been so, so consistent. But we're taking a look at our overall best of five. Just to remind you. We got a date on Invasion for we three sure, maps. We sure do. Where are you taking me? Well, I, I mean, well, I mean not the, much. Yeah, what are we, okay. I was There's like, not much really on that map to go. Maybe the, the old restaurants are close. Maybe the old blockbuster, <laughs> the DVD. <laughs> yeah, that's the only place. Perfect. Rio for map four, then the high rise map five if we get there. Um, I mean, this would be incredible for Thieves. If they're able to come out and get a win in this and move forward, it'd be unbelievable. But part of the reason, I mean, when we always talk about FaZe and their their stability, their consistency, how how often they're able to push into these Sundays, into these finals, you do that. But yeah, just not, I said sort of not losing to people that you're better than, but like you just don't have those round one upsets. It's just kind of business usually. You get to your winner's final pretty consistently. They rarely stumble, they rarely fall in these early rounds. But well, I think even last year, right, when I think when they had a winner's round one exit, I think that was a boss. I think they got all the way to the final, right? Yeah, yeah. so, <laughs> so it's like, it does happen, it's yeah. very rare, but yeah, usually they, they kind of handle business. You kind of said, like, you thought there was gonna be a Cinderella story at some point, yeah. may not be in winner's round one, maybe it'll be after winner's round two, but see no. right here for hard point metrics, uh, you know, these are, are getting better, but FaZe still, uh, yeah, they're gonna hold it right there. To what you just said though, like the, uh, yeah, I think winners too. We haven't had like, I feel like these past, like most of last year in the beginning of this year, like Thursdays. Thursday's been pretty straightforward. Yeah. Because what, I mean, what happens? Like your leagues, it's pretty top four heavy right now. There's eight teams in the winner's bracket. It's the good four teams versus the uh, probably not as good four teams. Yeah, just New York last, last day, last major, yeah. that yeah. was really it. Uh, but so far today, I mean, I think, what, Vegas it played ultra tough, but in a couple of spots, ultra able to, to take the close maps, similar to what we just saw with Optic in Miami, even our series earlier, like Boston, played them tough, but every single time they allowed a moment, Slasher tweeted about it, too many small mistakes versus great teams and you get punished. Oh yeah, we saw them, I mean, we were talking yeah. about while we were casting, but no, uh, it's interesting, New York, I, that like, slipped my mind because I still think of that as such a fast day because they got 3-0 slams. <laughs> like, it still was, like, we were up at like six o'clock on Thursday, I'm like, okay, well, that was, was that, weird. That was a fast one. But you can see Edmonds up there is trying to resolve what's going on. Maybe one of the PCs. And as soon as we're good, we'll get back into the action here. If you talk much to like kind of J Cap or Shane and this coaching staff as they've worked to uh, work to move through some of the frustrations on the thief side. Yeah, I'm always talking to those guys, right? Yeah, uh, great friends over there. I, I think for them, it's just you still have a lot of young pieces here. Uh, but again, just a, a refresh of the bracket today. The top two were three O's. They both had some close maps, uh, you know, Ultra Legion, especially uh, New York. Uh, they lose map number one versus Boston, but then bounce back in a big way. Behind Kismet, Hydra, the submachine guns of New York, so, so stellar. And now we're uh, down to FaZe and Thieves. Well, speaking of Thieves, we're gonna take a look at sort of their road to the major and how they got here. Sorry, uh, yes, we'll take a look. I so said they did play FaZe in the qualifier, which we touched on. That was a 3-0 FaZe kind of kind of handled business, took care of it, but that's the road there. Anything that kind of stood out for you to sort of beat I, the bad teams, lose to the good teams? I think the, the best, well, the, a good win early is the Rocker one, right? But that's when things started to unfold for them. And then I think probably your second best win here or the best win after everything is kind of the Paris 3-1. That that was a fantastic win in the moment. Just that's what we saw. It. Now you just said Paris. Well, I've been saying Paris. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, but Vegas I've done it so much that I've tricked you into now doing it. 
Yeah, it's almost like I've been messing with you until <laughs> so you say it, and then I said it. I didn't say it for two years, and you told me about it, and now, oh. But, yeah, I think that 3-1 win over Legion was, okay, this team's getting, they're right there. You guys don't know how funny that is to me, because Joe's been making fun of me all week. Yeah, well, last couple of weeks. You know. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. See? It's easy to do. <laughs> think about the Eiffel Tower out there, and they're in both places. Good point. It's a good point. But we are about to load back in. So the issue is resolved. Thank you again for hanging with us as we get ready to hop into our final series of the night. See if FaZe can get it done, close it out, or if Thieves, like the improvements have been. It's just, it's up your three losses. Like, it's what? It's Ultra, it's Optic, it's FaZe. Like, I ah, lost the three of the top four. But yeah. the fact is, if you're going to make a good run, you're going to have to beat one of those types of teams. You're going to have to. Yeah, sooner or later. Uh, and again, it was a 3 0 when they matched up a couple of weeks ago. They did play Invasion Hardpoint. Uh, FaZe able to win that one, like 250 to 178. And then there was like back to back Karachi. So that's why you're not going to see that one in this series. No Karachi, lots of invasion. As we'll see, uh, maybe if a little bit more time and focus on the objective early on in this one. Sell, Abizi opening things up early. That is all four down in a row there for Thieves is uh, early control over to face. Yeah, Abizi maybe just trying to get aggressive here inside of Laundry. And well, Thieves, they're kind of just thinking, do we just maybe try to get this player off point and then push up towards P2? But they're going to find a BZ and Simp who were trying to get aggressive. And a nice response there for Thieves. So there you go, 4-5 dead in a row. Now able to find some time. But on rotation over towards P2, it'll be a better setup here for FaZe. Yeah, if those kills came through with like whoo, a 5 to 10 seconds left maybe on the clock or on the transition with the hard point, maybe it works out. But you had, what, like 20. So they're able to set up. You get into a good position of your FaZe. You get some nice kills if you are Simp. He is hunting, picking him apart. Got the Predator. Yeah, now you had, what, your last two spawns for LA Thieves before this hill pops were gas. So you're all the way across the map. First 10 seconds, your first player here is Nasty, who spawned up Palace. Able to win the gunfight, though. So now you have a pinch developing if you are LA Thieves. Scrap able to find the first get him off that hill and every single time where it's looking a little bit messy or LA th or sorry or if, if Thieves are in trouble they fight right back out of it. Yeah it's like when it looks clean for FaZe they make it messy. I think it's what you're going for. Yeah. Like they're, they're able to just disrupt things get him out and now I, I mean yes more points on the objective certainly it's another multi-kill kill here for Sep as he's beaming at six and three. You still almost have a minute off the play clock. It's, it, it's been hotly contested early on. Final 10 or so seconds. Looking to be the way of phase. We're on Sims POV. Can't quite connect. Crimp wins at close range. Now they're with the MCW. Right over to sell now. What damage can he do? The answer is none. That's a double for Ghosty. And here we go. Chance for Thieves. Yeah, this is perfect for LA Thieves at this P3. You get a couple of kills as that rotation is. The hill is about to pop. And well, Sip, he found a couple, but they just spawn up blue side. So you rotate over towards P3. You are so far away. Here comes the first break attempt for Atlanta phase. 20 seconds in. It's going to be Sip leading the way up at 7 and 4. There's the first gunfight. Diving, dodging, dipping, just trying to finesse, get some help from his teammates. But the help is not there. That ends up working out beautifully if you are Thieves. You had a four on three there for a moment of your face because one spawns out for Thieves, but you can't ch quite get across in time. It's funny because sometimes like, it looks so easy on the minimap. Like, you look at it, you're like, you just got to put it. It's 10 feet away. But uh, getting across some of the streets, though, with, with the crossfire can be so difficult. Yeah, I can. Now Afro finding a couple of uh, spawn kills. So you still have the parking lot spawns. And while BZ has just been lurking, going to find some of that scrap time. So maybe just trying to flip the map for the P5 is P4 about to spawn on up. And yeah, this is one of those moments where both teams are fighting for map control. But watch number seven, Simp. He's kind of lurked through. Obviously, the comms going to be hectic on both sides, trying to call out names, trying to hunt. So they have spawns for the next hill. Yeah, we know. You know Daddy's in the game. How insane he can be. Is Sally able to snap now? Simp still lurking that number seven on the map. Crip is still fighting. Number one and Ghost, he's still looking for him, just trying to track him down the other side of it. And again, it's just like stalemate where you're, everyone is fighting for map control and information. The objective is third. <laughs> yeah, just trying to set up for P5. And here we go. There's gunfights on the opposite side of the map is Nasty. Maybe trying to get him off the time. Well, Drys is going to hear that. And now the gunfight's going down around DVD, but FaZe have the spawns that they want. Now trying to transition over towards this B Street, but Kremp on five in a row. Kremp, can he disrupt this? Can oh, he stay up? Not going to happen. Cell just slides through and catches him. 
It's at number six every single time. It feels like it's that much harder. If he just holds that pre aim, maybe he's able to find a, a kill. But this is great now for Thieves. You, you had the spawns if you were phased, you still do. But you don't find the kills as the hill pops, so it's a little bit messy. Again, right as that comes in, Thieves are doing enough. Still there, still fighting, but it is still phased inside of the point. Finally, you burst through with the kills from Crip and Afro. Now you flip them out, and, and like even though you've had some really early setups from FaZe, a team that sometimes is hard point is known so well for their breaking and struggled in holding, it seems like those old woes are here. They have not been able to do much with an early setup or get into that early setup due to the place from Thieves. Well, Afro, he's going to be the last one, but he's able to find a double. No trophy on the hill. Waiting for his teammates off a of spawn and through our first set of hills, they're going to be up about 60. Yeah, just controlling the money hills so far for LEDs. Honestly, it feels like the sub base we cast earlier in some ways. I know that was like a tie game, but it was like not a lot of clean time. It's kind of messy. Lots of breaks, lots of contests, lots of the play clock. Then we get to this point. And typically someone starts to take over, starts to rally a bit and start to accrue a lot more of that objective time. We'll see if that ends up maybe being the case here on the invasion. Sam looking for the openers. One tucked in front behind the box, not able to get through. Is nasty able to pick his head off, following up those BZ and sell. Last player drops the draws, and that's everybody wiped out. So spawning back right will be Thieves. Phase lock it down for now. Yeah, but now you have this setup here. You look at Phase getting so aggressive once again, trying to get spawns for P2. On that street side, a BZ was all the way back gas. There is the flip. So you have LA Thieves spawning out towards Palace, but the rest of this time. Should go the way of these, unless it 8-connects. I mean, uh, as long as they're maintaining like this 60 or so point advantage, yeah, just keep getting a little bit in the early time, taking the final 10 to 15 or so, and just maintaining this advantage. Maybe not as orthodox as you'd like it, but like it's working out. It's been scrappy, it's been messy, but it's getting the job done. The league continues to grow. Abizi trying to find openers now, but this is a big moment here for Thieves. You've got a chance to get a ton of time. You've got a big advantage. Looking to shock them in a map one to listen in now with Los Angeles Thieves. I'm staying alive, boys. Alright, yo, pitching, pitching, three pillar now, three pillar now! Wait, 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 wait,
Next ready to pop. You got position. Maybe the rallying cry right now. Yeah, this is the last. This, this is, is the last chance. The last yeah. chance. A much cleaner setup here towards this P5. They're controlling the map. You have Sim pushed up on the street. Look at where Abizi is. A, S, and D. So you just know it's going to take a long time for Thieves to get here. But a nice win by Josie. Now the nades, the stuns, going to start hitting towards this hill. But a trophy is down. So 45 seconds left. Again, can Thieves just maybe find 10 or 15 here? Break this up. Make the map messy. So far, so good for FaZe. Slowly, just second by second, crawling back into this one, down as much as 100. There's a chance. Still alive in the game, but maybe the break here, you got some numbers. FaZe hop out of the hard point to play their lives and play position for a second. That's going to be Sally and just trying to dance. Maybe take a fight and get back in, but you're getting a healthy amount of time here. If you're Los Angeles Thieves, you're about to crack over that 220 mark. Hitting back in will be Simp. He's able to earn a streak, so you're going to have that cluster to work with. You get to about 230 here. If you're LA Thieves, you're so close. Still work to do. Yeah, yeah you're going to have that cruise, but when are you going to use it, right? If you are Sim, 227. Again, this is a chance towards this P1. Can you just find five, ten seconds at a time if you are LA Thieves? Get a trophy down. Find some mid-map kills. And look at this. Kremk going to spawn behind. Same with Ghosty. So you're going to have a bit of a pinch here. Kind of develop off of the spawns, but they're going to read it. Kremp able to take down one. It's a two for two so far. Yeah, I think a BZ spawned out, so they got the read quickly. It's still winning in the gun pipes. It's Thieves that come away with with three straight. Sim now getting wall banged, trying to stay up on 27 and 19, but it is trickling away. 15 more now needed for Thieves. Just looking to shut it down. Sip itself, get him out of the point. Sip looking for another, but it is still a second here and there for Thieves, but just not enough. You, right, you have the cruise. Your face. Yeah, you have the cruise here to break this P2 setup. Eight more seconds needed. Simp, the man with the missile, who's going to have to use this. Ten seconds left on this P1. He's going to earn this time. And he got to kill at the same time. Yeah, now you, you're going to see just these red arrows start to scramble. Trying to put it down quickly. This Simp. Kremp is there, though. He's able to find one. He finds a double. Kremp going massive, holding on to the hill. Trip a monster there, and it might be enough to close it out. Just four more now needed. Ghosty hits with the pistol. Back in they go. Thieves striking first and on the board. Well, big surprise there. We were talking about this Thieves team. They played this map a lot, five times throughout the qualifiers. You know, FaZe undefeated 2 0 throughout the qualifiers, one of their better hardpoint maps. And it just felt like time and time again, you were you're fighting for the spawns, and then Thieves Ooh. find a kill or two to make things messy enough and give them map control. I, I was starting to get just a little nervous because it just, you, usually when the game's like that, and I said at the very beginning, when it's just back and forth, it's crap, it usually like cleans up a bit and someone starts to make a run. I thought, never I thought FaZe were going to make a run, but they just never did. That, that play saw that getting those final 15, those quick little breaks and getting five to 10 here and there, it continued the entire game. That was like a, I don't the word, this is a, like a very gritty win. <laughs> no, it is. Yeah, that's how invasion can be. Looking at the stats there again, Josie's so consistent, but you get some help from Kremp, the new addition 25 and 24 on the other side, Simp leading the way with 29. I mean, yeah, you can see by the damage, by the kills, how close of a game it was. But a lot of it was just the timing of when those kills came in, right? When Thieves is able to break on through, kind of flip the map, spawn a couple of players out for phase. We know how spawns can be at times on this map, and it was just enough. No, because like the first, I think we talked about like their first kind of break. It came with like 15 to 20 seconds left and it allowed FaZe to sort of set up and get like a comfortable set. The rest of the time, pretty much every other hard point, it came with just, you know, five to 10 left. It, it allowed them to not get a great setup. It was such a good job of just never allowing FaZe to get comfortable. Let them get in their spots and just fry. Yeah, gritty win, as you said. Yeah, no, it really was. It was it was impressive from FaZe. Yeah, and, and, and honestly, like, you kept feeling maybe like that moment was going to happen, but this 60, 70, 80 point lead stuck around. Like you saw them setting up in those spots. You saw the cruise missile come in, but it didn't really matter as Afro right here able to break towards that P5 and then it was just a matter of time. I know Invasion can play like that, but like how many times this year has it been an Optic? It's been an Ultra. It's been a phase. It's been a New York. You come out, you're down 50 to 100 to hard point. It's like, all right, time to you know, kind of play. And it starts to take over. I just kept thinking there was going to be that run at least, and there just wasn't. There wasn't.
They close it out. They get the win. Frustrating loss there for FaZe, I'm sure, coming off the loss in the final match to LAG. The hard point this year, for the most part, I think has been improved over the past couple of years, where that was really kind of their, their bane. But, I mean, there's still not lights out, though, that's for sure. No, yeah, still some things to work on as we look at the game flow right there. You just kind of see the darker red era, uh, red line just stay a little bit ahead as LAD just controlled the map. Yeah, the colors are playing tricks yeah. the whole time. Just so used to phase being right. I'm like, I can do this. Yep. <laughs> I can handle the arrows. But uh, we get through the map one. Thieves, you know, I, it's been a lot of uh, invasion success for them where they've started to get these wins. They've started to improve as a team. You get it the first three in the series. You get Karachi's out where... You know, FaZe can be such a threat. Can they keep it going on Invasion? Yeah, now you go to this Invasion SD where I think you're undefeated if you're LADs with this roster throughout the qualifiers. On the other side, for FaZe, it was such a strong map. I believe they were 5-1 and one throughout Major 1 on Invasion. But throughout the qualifiers, 1-2. and two. So maybe we, we talk about a little bit drop-off, focusing, focusing on the respawn, teams figuring out how FaZe like to play the map. Now you talk about adjustments for this Major. <laughs> I do. I like. Hey, listen. I don't think I pinned hey, when we were talking about like, what we thought the upset might be today. If there was one, like I, I, I guess I was thinking probably Vegas, maybe just just because the success they've had. This one I didn't really think. I really didn't think it was going to be happening. But a chance for it now after the map one victory. Yeah, I mean, we saw Boston earlier, right? One map one versus yeah, New sure, York, so sure, you, sure. you never know. But again, looking at major two qualifiers, this is where these have been very good. Six and three, five and four on the other side. But the key is that opening dual win percentage, which the desk talked about, sort of Afro and nasty, how effective they have been on the map. Finding those opening kills. Finding the round wins behind it. We'll see if they can dominate in that effort here into the map two or if Somebody like Simp or somebody like the first blood god of BZ historically in search and destroy how good he can be. Into the map two we go. All right, we'll see what FaZe off to do in this round number one. You only have Nasty all the way in the back, so you're going to play the retake over towards B. If you are LA Thieves, right? No trophy. We've seen a lot of players not want to play this site without a trophy. And that is going to be it. It's going to be all about this retake. Now, guy kind of lurking deep in cell, maybe waiting for that push through. It's Kremp that might be chomping at the bit to, uh, at the bit to work this pinch if it becomes the play. Some shots come in. You hop off it for a second. Not really working to get that bomb down yet. They're starting to push out. Ice Cream, see if they can find the kills. Nasty able to get one. Nice wants to go for the trade. Not able to take it. Nasty, Ghosty win the fight. Suddenly, it's going to be Cell all by his lonesome. They didn't feel comfortable. There was no trophy down. They decided to get aggressive behind it. And... Yeah, I mean, the fact that Bomb goes down first, too, you, like, you kind of have to go very busy at that point, like, try to get it back, but... Yeah, Bomb is just in the worst place possible for Celium. Now, and he's got 20 seconds to work with. Good luck, but LAD strike first in our map number two. Yeah, I guess they're trying to maybe get a kill, get out, then plant, but both lose their one-on-ones. Hey, Nasty with the first, able to make the play. Ghosty closes out the tail end of the round. Thieves continue to roll. Again, with that opening opening dual percentage, able to find that first blood. Turns into a round win. Ghosty, he's able to find two. See now what FaZe ought to do on defense, and if these try to bring some pace here in, in their first attacking round. Looking to group this up towards B. You got it, BZ. Selium kind of holding the A side, but the first one's going to come through from Crump. Can they capitalize on it again? Sip is going to drop. Waiting deep will be draws, but really the help will be quick to the mid cut. It'll be a BC that'll get there. You're sort of just waiting to group up and push if you are thieves. Now you start to go. Work the site, smoke is out. Yeah, and who's usually the one player that we see kind of, you know, help retake this is Simp, right? He's the guy who plays connector, throws that smoke down. He has been such a playmaker and one team's opt to go B, but he's the one first blooded. Is he got Aggressa up towards Broken? Draza opens up the door, puts a little crack in it, trying to put some shots in. But while that goes on, a BZ does get taken down. So we're into a three on two with that nade. Draza and Cell now trying to clutch. Krem, some big multi kills. 
through that map one. See if you have big moments here in the search to destroy. Ripped down a 19 HP. Nearly, that's a 2v2. Just able to get down. Then Nasty finds the kill. Fantastic stuff there. Again, just smoked on the cross, but able to stay up. Finally, the flank comes in. You stay alive so long there on the site. But finally, Ghost, he's able to push through. Nice stuff by LA Thieves. Just very aggressive. Know exactly what they want to do on the map. I thought right there. They were trying to rotate it out, but then another kill comes in, and Josie's like, all right, I'm going to hit the flank, because he was over towards that A-bomb site all by his lonesome. But then it's just Kremp with the first blood. So far, so good on the first blood front. I mean, you only have Draza, the only player with kills. Yeah, no, it's not going well on that no. side. And, uh, you know, they, they've kind of, like, where some teams have had to pull out, like, optics so it comes out slow sometimes, pull off the reverse sweeps. We've seen it from New York. Like, these, for the most part, if you know, kind of kind of come out strong in series. Not the case here so far. It is all thieves. They are dominating. Ghosty yet to drop. We might have a very similar around to round number one. That the goes only better difference, now. The only difference, Abizi finds that first blood with a beautiful shot right through the door. We saw the stun hit nasty. His trophy not in a good enough spot to block those nades. So he gets caught. Now bombed down, and they are down a man. Can they work the three on four retake? Not going to be easy. 35 to go. Where will maybe the opening pick come from? This will be the two-man push. Looking for somebody able to trade, but now it's going to be one person remaining. It's Ghost who's yet to drop. You're probably thinking about streaks now with 20 seconds left. Just see if you can get a kill. Yeah, 4-0. Oh, so just really depends what he opts to do. Knows there's a couple of players on this side. Boom. Not going to find one. Now might come the double chow. Uh -oh. Can he get number five? No, Abizi has played this so, so well. And there we go. He's going to get the kill. So phase. They stop the streak and they get on the board. Dude, just the shoulders there from a BC just kind of toying with him. Unbelievable oh, there from a BC. Then the wall peg through to finish the kill. You get the round victory. You stop Ghosty from maybe earning a cruise. And you're right back in this one. But yeah, I mean, a little bit different losing bomb and ice cream versus getting your first blood and ice cream. Uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah, Nasty's hoping that that stun does not hit, but he does. We kind of got to his point of view. Right as we saw, he was in trouble. He tries closing that door, and then I thought maybe he was just going to play his life and back away, but goes for the, the little shot through the crack. Instead, of easy ready for it. He's on two in a row. Big moments there. Simp still looking for his first kill in this. He's going to be the point man, likely to have to deal with the pressure. So he's the only one here, and he's on MCW. Yeah, closes the door, and he's out. Yeah, uh, he's not going to deal with a two-man push too well with that. But now the Nick comes in, tries to reposition some tags in. Stun hits, need hits, but not the kill. Yeah, maybe looking for it. But while that happens, Sim gets aggressive inside a DVD. Now the smoke is down, B-Dom. A trade there from Abizi, so still the man advantage. But now we're in a two-on-two, two and things are getting messy here. Afro and Ghosty try to make this round happen. The smoke towards that tank just really causes all the chaos again, and FaZe get caught. Zelda might find a good timing here. 20 seconds to go. He's able to get one. One versus one. Bomb heading for Afro, tank heading for Cell. Doesn't get the plant down. He decides to send it. Who gets the timing to slide underneath for Sal, but it's Afro with the kill. Thieves now up 3-1. And I love that from Afro. He knows he has the rival. He gets up close and personal with it. He able to catch Selium. Cell maybe just trying to catch a timing, see if he goes uh, for a jump, for a slide off. It doesn't happen. No, I, that was perfect. Yeah, like, you get up in his face, 100%. That's a mid-range fight, unless you're hitting some Disgusting rival shots. I mean, he's sells one of the hardest 1v1 fights in the game. He's winning that with the MCW, but good stuff from Afro. Yeah, and I mean, Sim gets that first blood inside a DVD, but then just everything kind of goes wrong for them as they try to go for those trades. Some big kills from Afro. Now a bit of a switch up. It's Afro who's going to play B. Instead of just nasty by himself. He does get naded, but he is safe for now. Got a little bit of help. The way of Nasty just stomping almost right over him. Abizi comes sprinting in. Afro is lurking three in a row for him. They're picking him apart. Nasty's able to get a double. It's finally just on to sell. Last alive again, round after round. It is Thieves. They're dictating the pace. They're dictating the tempo. They're up 4-1.
Getting closer and closer to a 2-0 edge. And considering that the, what, mega lopsided thing in this is the control, you can take that 2-0 edge into that. Hell yeah, if <laughs> you are thieves. And I mean, I, I don't know if the comms are that they don't see Afro cross into that corner. The nade hits, maybe they think they, he backs away. But we saw that first player just walk right into Afro. He gets there quickly, just kind of prones and hangs out. But there's another first blood for Thieves. Afro. He's close to streaks now. Ghost, he came up a little bit short trying to get that cruise. Maybe a chance for him. Can he get the fifth round up now? Where's the first blood going to come from? Kind of spreading it out, slowing it down here for a moment if you're Thieves. Maybe try to catch like a BZ or somebody get over aggressive. That's not going to be the case. Every kind of holding right now for phase, and now they start to develop the push, but 30 seconds off the clock. We'll now start to try and work this B street. The yeah, pressure draws on Sim. Yeah, sometimes when, when you're a team who's just not playing your game, if you are phase or he, yeah. you're getting caught on timings, sometimes a player like a BZ or Sim says, screw it, I, I'm going to just try to find, get aggressive, make plays myself. So Thieves slow it down, but Draza through connector able to find the first blood and you now he's just going to back away, hang out with his teammates. But we saw this just a couple rounds ago where a first blood comes in for phase, but then Thieves able to win their attack. They've kind of been wrapping this back and forth. Draza trying to get info. Not sure if he saw one on the cross yet. Now he's going to spot one. A BZ looking to collapse based on that information. The nade able to hit and get some damage in. But as they push through, it's Draza again that's able to strike. His second in the round. Draza will get pushed out and drop. Now the three remaining players from phase to close it out. A BZ will pounce. And the crossfire is there to close it out. You get your second one up and try to get back into this. Yeah, they group up, Draza again with two in the round, but a big thing is they stop this streak from Afro. He was on five in a row as he found one in the round from a trade, but there you can see he's the last player taken down, so no cruise, but still a two-round lead. Where do you have to improve things if you're faced? Like, well, what's been going wrong for you here so far? Well, I think just really maybe switching up on attack, right? It's sort of just been this sort of B-hit, B-hit time and time again. It's worked out once when Abizi found a first blood. Outside of that, the aggression hasn't really worked quickly up the B Street. So maybe they slow things down. But on the opposite end, you got aggressive on the B Street there through Connector. It was nasty and Afro. Maybe looking for something. Some aggression from FaZe, but it doesn't happen. So you have two players mid now. And Nasty right back to that solo B site. And you can see where Ghosty's watching from all the way deep bridge, kind of the cross to A. You got one at that mid tank and crap. Smoke out, and you got to think they're going to try and execute behind that. Cramps just lurking, prone for info. Can he catch one now? Moving up from Bridget will be Ghosty trying to work this collapse. Draza able to get another first blood. He's been massive for them in these last couple of rounds, but an instant trade there from Afro now. 3v3 with 40 to go. Yeah, Ghosty might put it into this round, really. Yeah, so Obama is about to be planted. You saw Abizi checking the A Street. So he doesn't see anything, but there is a quick trade. Nice trade by Abizi. So into a two on two. And a lot of the times, it just comes down to sell, kind of the plays that he makes away from the site. So watch that number eight. See, he works through connector. Both teams just trying to finesse, find each other on the map. And it's a BZ again. Gives them the man advantage. On Nasty now, one versus two, 20 to go. A BZ damage in, closes it out. Big round for him. But no, I think you're right. Like, okay, go see if he gets the kill and gets away. Like, if the trade's not there, yeah, may end up being around for them. But BC ends up getting with the next three. <laughs> yeah, it just looked like one of those rounds where FaZe just wasn't too worried about the A Street. Like, you had a couple of players shoulder it, but there was no one really watching it in case that player worked up to the bomb that allowed Ghosty to get to that spot. But the timing doesn't go his way. As soon as bomb is planted, he's traded out. Now BC on five in a row, trying to swing his team back into the lead. And that, no, I was just saying, he didn't have the ace right now because Drazik got that first blood and dropped, right? Yeah, but five in a row. Bringing it back, the streak, maybe the difference if he's able to earn it. But a hell of a job there at eight and four. Once again, simple, be that lone man over towards B. A lot of movement there mid-map from Draza. He's thinking maybe some of the utility is an execution coming in on B. He starts to rotate over to help Simp, but for now, it's right back. Wow, this timing. I mean, yeah, if Draz maybe is watching that mid-cross and Abizi maybe watching it, you, you had like two or three players just kind of run right through that B-Dom area with the rotation, but so they don't see it, but now they're going to know. And eight is out. A BZ now just trying to finesse inside of this area. Repositions, trying to find number six as the smoke 
his mid tank again. Last time through, he had an MCW. He's going to isolate Ghosty. He doesn't get the kill, though. So no cruise, but it's a first blood. And there is a trade for Mapro. Yeah, no, it's a good point. Like this time, he wants to send it because the rival in hand, but to this 3v3 now. Sound He's only got one. He had a great All map. the timing. The timing on Nasty. He just looked left. Oh, the struggles continue for Simp. And now Trophy out in sight control. Maybe the round five victory. Or the round five on the board, I should say, for Thieves. Bomb planted. Here we go. It's on draws and sell. Kind of on the other side of this. Can they win a crazy one-on-one -on -one fight? Give themselves a chance into a 2v2. Now happened on the first. All on sell. He gets his kill. Trying to send it on to the next one. Get this down to a 1v1. Great finesse, though. Trying not to dance too much. You win it with the pistol, though. Suddenly, maybe a 1v3. 13 HP. Staying up. 24 seconds to go. Cell trying to make the play. So many s &D clutches to his name. Can he do it? Can he win this fight against Kremp? He spotted him. He got info. Kremp's got a finesse. He's got a dance. He dipped. He, he dipped, though. Out. He is gone. That should decide the round. Cell may get the kill, but not even that. Kremp puts him in the dirt. The finesse. Round five up. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things around that take when you were finessing, right? He goes to wide peak the bomb, but Cell's watching left, the left side of it, not on the bomb site. And then as the second peak comes through, he's like, all right, I know where you're at. I am out of here. He like almost, like that pillar's not there, probably catches him, but like he gets behind the pillar just enough to slide back behind the take and get out. Woo! One but more with, round needed for a 2-0 edge. Yeah, but again, 25 seconds left. It simps the one player over towards B. That timing goes a little bit differently. Maybe they tie it up. Instead, it goes the way of Nasty and LA Thieves. Yeah, I mean, Simp obviously one of the better search and better overall players in the game at 1-6. and six. He's, I'm guessing he's had some bad timing to touch throughout the course of this one. We'll see if the woes continue, but you do get another first blood behind a BZ. Now the 4v3, but Nasty is just holding for now. Made some plays around ice cream in round one. Can he maybe find that luck again? But this time, looks like they're getting picked apart. Just headshots through on the feed. Cell, Draza, all on Nasty. Knock, knock, and maybe a surprise, but the gig is up. Nice shots onto a BZ, but so much more work to do. 11 left Hold in the on. gun, but the gunny is there, and Draza is melted. Often in a 1v4, it's the second guy that might throw it away, and Draza's got slammed. <laughs> Yeah, you still have a stun if you are nasty, but look at this. You don't re you reposition around broken. So Cell, maybe trying to go for a peek. Yeah, shoulder over towards dark. Still has 30 seconds to work with, so a different route, but it seems like he got spotted. Yeah, he did get spotted, and there we go. So they're watching that cross in the middle of the map. <sighs> Would have been a lot, but again, a first blood for a BZ opens up that site, and then they're just able to take it one by one. Yeah, draws got deleted. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, thankfully at the spot. Otherwise, who the hell knows away? Nasty was shooting. Is this like, uh, is this kind of like almost when if you're thieves based on like the lead you had, you're like up 4-1, you're the underdog, like you got to win this map too. Yeah, I think there's a, you know, a mental side to it. There always is. Yeah. If you throw sort of on their way. side, but I mean, they've had a, a tough year, so they might just be chalk it, just go on to the next. But <laughs> yeah, right. They would love to be up 2-0, just kind of the way they have attacked this map. Going right back over towards B. Draza, he's gonna find the first blood. No trophy in the area, though. Yeah, I think but he's able to finesse. Might be his third. But look at this aggression. From the two players, Simp and Abizi. Ghosty's able to spot one, and he's trying to find anything that he can on the flank to even out the odds. Well, last time they were able to isolate him. This time he's able to back away. He gets the info. They're never able to find him. Oh. He can't finish it, though. You'd love that one back. Just needed another bullet. Now Afro's kind of transitioning over for the help as that call comes in from Ghosty, but Abizi away and alive for now. 4v3 for FaZe. Maybe around 11. Afro, the, the nade hits. He thinks maybe he's going to be able to pounce on one, but he drops right onto a nade. Crimp, though, the pistol able to drop Simp. 3v3. Abizi with the dumpster. 2 2 v 2 Afro pounces Abizi again. Oh my the guy's gosh. going nuts, but now. It's just Kremp, 1v2, 20 to go. I mean, the BZ snaps on a Kremp as well. He almost finds the triple, but the time working against Kremp. Draza going to spot him. He's got to try to wrap on back. I don't think it is going to happen. Kremp just going to not give him the kill. And again, it is a BZ. That smoke makes things a little complicated for FaZe around the mid tank. But a BZ locks down the site. He has been an animal throughout this map. Well, what a huge round this is. Like, you know, 
if this was like phase up 1-0 in the series, I'd be like, okay, maybe it's not the end of the world, like either way, but with a 1-0 advantage, Thieves, the upset kind of looming, the potential of that, this round B is everything. Can you go up 2-0 if you're Thieves? Or is the ice there for phase? Pressure on for both sides. One final round. You've had a flurry of first bloods late here if you're phase. Draws and a BZ kind of leading the way for that. Yeah, that sort of need pressure. Nobody gets deep into the B site. The trophy was down, but a smoke down. Phase thinking about B, or at least trying to get them to rotate. And they do just that on the other side of the map. It is cramped all the way through gas for now. And you can see it is difficult to get this bomb down with this sort of this door angle. There is the stun, the nade that goes on through. Trophy now down. So now maybe Simp thinking about the bomb. But this is a very tight setup here for FaZe. Last time, no trophy. I think all the way back to that round one, you opt to push it out, can't get it planted. This time, the plant comes in. 4v4 post plant. FaZe have to hold. Thieves now got a retake. Utility coming in, but the trophy is there for color. Cell's got the angle, he wins the first, he almost drops, hit the 41 HP. A BZ that pounces, he's having himself a map. But Dan Ghosty, he strikes, the trade is in. Still numbers for FaZe. I just have to wait for Nasty. Can Nasty find a timing? There is the first shoulder. They're trying to isolate Celium, but the time is working against them. And down 5-3 phase, claw their way back to tie the series up at one. Woo! It's a nerve-wracking one, but they bring it back. Nearly an 0-2 hole, but they get it done. A BZ like just starts going wild kind of through the mid-day game. Yeah, I mean, some of the timings, right? Him, and, uh, well, especially Simp got in that map. We saw him with the M MCW, ABZ, over towards A. Just finding multi kills. He's got 2,200 damage. Bro. Yeah, Draz has 20, almost 2,800 at 9 and 9. These were in control. They were finding a lot of those first bloods, but then some nice adjustments for FaZe. He really did. Yeah, no, I mean, Zip was kind of out of the equation a lot of times. He only had 800 damage. Like, he just was, whether it was an unfortunate timing, now, you know, not going to. Maybe his side, like, not really really able to make many plays, but uh, that's the great thing about uh, having kind of a superstar team like they do. Abizi's able to step it up, draws with some big first bloods, they're able to clutch up. Crimp, I mean, he had some brilliant moments as well, but not enough for Thieves. Yeah, even in that round 11, right, you, you kind of had the idea you were going to play the retake, but the trophies were so clutch for FaZe, even just right through the alley. Maybe they're thinking about throwing a smoke there, front tank, that we saw time and time again from true, Thieves. True, yeah. That gets eaten up. The, the nades on the bomb, the planner's able to get it down safe, so, so they just had enough utility to make that clean for FaZe. Well, well, I mean, you think about that first gunfire, like, they snap on Cell, they know where he's at. Yeah. Like, Cell still almost drops. Yeah, if there was... If an aid hit or a stun or something, I, yes, he probably gets dropped, and maybe that retake is a, a thing of beauty, but whew, it is a close one. You almost get it done. Now you're tied up 1-1, and when you look forward to control, yeah, I mean, FaZe got the advantage there a little bit, right? Yeah, probably the uh, best team in the game right now. 7-0 throughout Major 2 qualifiers. They have been dominant in this game mode online. They have been absolutely brilliant. Uh, we'll see if they can take the advantage in the swing mode, but so far, Thieves are battling. This is a team that has improved massively i mean you've been you've been sensational uh considering how poor it started the improvements have continued to come on through but do they have what it take to take down the titans we'll see in the control if they can take the edge it's coming up next after this quick break Upgrade your game with a SCUF. Save $30 on the official CDL collection at scuff.co slash CDL. Get better with a SCUF, the first performance gaming controller. Visit scuff.co slash CDL to change your game. The Call of Duty Week is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL.
We are back and tied up 1-1. Control up next. Space has been dominant, but we'll see. It hasn't been clean. It has been scary so far for FaZe. And I know I asked you like what you thought maybe about that LEG loss, if they'd be a little more successful. Is this like a FaZe are the most vulnerable they've looked this year, or is this just improvements from Thieves? Yeah, I think it's improvement for Thieves, right? I mean, again, you know, a team like New York and Boston, it was a close series. Uh, they were able to win a, a close search and destroy, and then they kind of ran with it, ran away with the series. We'll see if uh, FaZe can, can keep that up from here. Maybe just get that momentum, calm down. Sometimes that first match on land at a tournament can be, uh, I don't know, just takes a little bit moment to focus on in. I'm doing, even for us, like casting sometimes, like you get up yeah, here, the first, the first match, you're like, got to get used to stuff again. Like, what are we doing? Like, mm -hmm. it's a little bit different than maybe when we're casting the online league. Like, players, it's just different environment. You're not at home. You're not comfortable. Get back on the stage. Get used to it. Get the comps flowing and get back into a rhythm. It's 1-1 now, though, due to the upset in that map one. And then a comeback from Atlanta phase. We stay on invasion for our map three. Tell me a little about the records and where these guys stand, Joe. Uh, I mean, this is just, again, 7-0 for uh, Atlanta FaZe throughout these control major two qualifiers. So they have been fantastic on every single map. For Atlanta FaZe, or sorry, LA Thieves, again, respawn just depends on the map, but trying to get better and better hasn't been uh, the best for them. Yeah, it's like, can you get hot and, uh, I don't know, hardboard under control based on your search being six and three? But the hot hand was a BZ, though, in that map, too. I mean, he was shooting nukes. Had some nasty snaps late in that one. He's looking to continue that rhythm here. Up to four and oh. They're trying to find him. He's still tucked away, and he will drop. Not able to get back to full HP. So far, so good. What, two out of three ticks on B? Yeah, and this is similar to what we saw, right, from, like, New York, where they just had one player on B pausing the clock and then everybody else slaying out. But you do get three in a row. So now the threat over towards B may not be a big deal. Now you're going to have to fight out of Palace. So that's sort of the, the risk of only keeping one player, trying to find maybe some spawn kills into that defensive spawn. But you do get caught. Now you have to fight back up the map. You get that first pick at least to eliminate some of the crossfire. You send... Ghosty back to spawn. How efficiently can he get through on this? You've got a bit of split on the map if you are Atlanta phase. You're focusing on mid-map control. Me being opening towards A if you find the kill, but you can't win the one-on-one. -on -one. Simp is going to drop. Nasty. It's one clean burst there. Maybe it's a different story, but you did clear the objective if you're Thieves, so you got to get this entire point back. You got two on it for now, and the minute extension is looming. Lives are going to be close. Anyone on, like, a, I guess a BZ3 in a row, maybe build on something. But yeah, again, building up from that map, too. He's, he's seven and two. Really got his team Ooh. going in a lot of these moments. But Kremp and Nasty do find some kills, so you do have Draza, who or sorry, Simp, who's layered up inside a DVD. On the other side, it's Ghosty finding spawn kills, but they're both taken care of. So now if you are a phase, you can start to work off the map. Well, trying to find spawn kills. I don't know. <laughs> Not sure he found many, but he got to that position. He got dropped, and now, yes, you layer the map. You're going to get somebody on A. You stop the clock for now at a minute 12. In any amount of stopping this and putting pressure on Thieves, maybe extending this map or lives count, but that doesn't happen because Afro pinches quickly. He's able to drop two. You're right back to step one. A chance it comes alive. It just, it just depends if they can stop this anymore. Yeah, I mean, you go, what, four for one. So you take that all day if you are these. One a minute remaining. Nasty does get caught. Afro now the next man up. And while the timing doesn't go his way, middle of the tank. Draza trying to finesse, but Kremp and Ghosty holding on for now. 10 versus 8 with 40 seconds. It's trades all over the map. But BZ, the last player here for FaZe. The stun, the nade connects, and Ghosty's on the flank. Yeah, I was just wondering if maybe BZ could get out of the point and stop this a little bit more. Give them a little more time to maybe bring this down to lives, but we'll see how the 7 v8 plays out. Ghosty, nice shot mid-map. Now 20 to go. They'd won kind of that mid-map fight. Got in the map control, Selly able to snap and win a nutty one, but you got 15 seconds to go now. Somehow you got to get on this point, at least off the clock. Just 10 seconds, you got to go. I doubt you're getting all the kills. Krim still being a nuisance, winning some big one-on-ones. Now five to go. They're all stacked around the point. Defensive hold is there. One life left for face. Yeah, you only give up three ticks, so yeah. you don't give up anything over towards A, and a nice job recovering because the start of that round was all phase in your spawn. You're able to waste some more time. You get them off of B, and yeah, I mean, they get the time extension does phase, fight on back through, have the life adva advantage, but you just know with how far they're spawning away from that point, just need to find those kills in the middle of the map. 
Yeah, they never like anytime they got map control, it just didn't last very long, did it? Like where they were allowed to apply like a constant pressure. It just seemed like it was always sort of a three, four reset. And yeah, like you said, back to spawn. Start all over again. You know, where like Simp really struggled with that map. Number two, Draza. It's, I mean, you've got 12 on a BC2 on Draza. I know offense can be talking around, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it can be hard 100%, <laughs> but he definitely doesn't get a rhythm, that's for sure. Oh, I thought he was just belly flopping and snapping, but they'll take down Simp. Yeah, running two rivals here is a BZ and Simp. Trying to keep that up uh, aggression. Uh, while this is going on, that's going to be all four dead. So Simp go. off spawn go. is able to find Yossi. So you don't get anyone on to A. You push up Kremp, but you keep two on the point. Second pit about to be done. Just avoiding nades for now. And that'll be through. You get a kill towards the back side of me. Try to pound forward if you can, but Afro there. Now you see if you can get any of this pressure leave or get that six kill. Cruise. 12 and 6, yep. there's the cruise. Number 6 through for Nasty. Now can they use that to get A? Use that to take that 2-0 advantage, but everybody drops outside of him. That's going to be everybody down. So that's a good job for FaZe, even though, I mean, it was not looking pretty throughout most of that. The fact that you get the cruise, you allow B to drop quickly. At least you get the 4 down, you get him back, and now you're kind of pinning him in. Do you yep. use the cruise to get out, depending on how long you're pinned here. You'd like to save it for a more desperate moment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're tied up in ticks right now, so there's no real desperation on the crew side. I mean, you're good to go. I mean, I see, I think you're saving it for a defense, or if you're on A, yeah, yeah. maybe just trying to get a spawn kill across the map. I was more thinking, like, you're pinning there too long. This round's going to be over, but they're starting to work their way out. Yeah, BZ up to 17. Dross still on two. <laughs> so that timing's just not Why are you roasting, brother? Why you said that? Oh. No, I'm just Terraza still on two. Yeah, it just hasn't hasn't been getting any better, but it's just how it can be at times for <laughs> for everybody. But props to Thieves. It's keeping this competitive. Lives all tied up again. Ticks tied up, so it's pretty much a wipe for now. Can they get on the point? We'll see. This will be their next opportunity to try and do it. Everybody back up for phase. Ghosty, Afro, trying to be the point man here, maybe find the opener, some tags into a BZ, he's got a back up. Ghosty is able to take down one. Draza's woes continue, he at least gets up to three. But it's a tiny tears through on the feet again. It just feels, I mean, this is similar to kind of the last round. Like you, get, you get the first point and then there's just kind of nothing beyond that, like just getting locked in. Okay, so BZ did earn a cruise himself. So you have cruises on both sides. But yeah, it's really just that. It's uh, two life advantage. And maybe Thieves just kind of know, let's not give up too many lives. We know it's tied objective. Just in case it comes down to that round five defense. If ticks are tied, it'll come down to sort of the kill count. So just trying to keep it close for this next round. Yeah, what, four separation? Not able to get that final kill. So yeah, I mean, I, it's about straightforward as it gets on invasion. I mean, sometimes pretty straightforward can be a little boring even at times when the defense got you locked in, but then maybe it's around five and something crazy it goes down. But there's been just, I, I, I mean, there's been nothing towards A. Yeah, no, I mean, you had a player on for like a second if you were phase. That, that is it so far. Yeah, you, you had some, uh, you know, forward positions on the, the side of phase a couple of times where instead of going for the point, you tried to get in a laundry and the rugs, but they got cut down. Uh, these right there just really got nothing after B. So it's just both teams playing stellar defense on the A point. And Draza's is going to spawn him. This is where he takes over. It's takeover time for Drazi. You ready? I'm in. Bang! Oh! What's a double child? Does it count? And it leads to two. It leads to three. There we go. Yeah. It starts with Drazi. Now they're on the eight point I lied. Nasty <laughs> with some shots from Top Treehouse. Able to find Celian before he got to A. So a big kill. <laughs> but you do have one player over towards B if you are phase. That's going to be a BZ just hanging out. Oh, that was comedy. Sometimes you just gotta be the guy who slides in first. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Like we've simp, lose the loyalist sits there, can't win it, easy, a tough gun fight. It's just like, if you, it seems like two on ones is everywhere, like double chows all over the place. They wipe the board though, if you are thieves. Push up again towards Vaughn's Dan Ghosty, trying to get some kills and just stagger this push. So good from thieves, just a laying on this B site. You take a four life advantage early. Draws another tough gun fight. Krimp. 
just finessing. You saw him doing the search. He's doing it here again. All these gunfights look so frustrating for FaZe right now as we hop to their POV. Yeah, I mean, they're the locked in, they're but received. Simp finds a timing middle of the map, so maybe he can get his team out, because you're thinking, can we keep this to one tick? But Simp on the pinch leads to three. Kremp was on five in a row. It was looking like maybe they weren't going to get B, but Simp right through B Dom, flanks DVD, and well, now the progress is there at B. It's the tiny terrace versus LA Thieves right now. <laughs> and now you use the cruise. You use the cruise if you are LA Thieves to try to just get them off that point and not allow them to get the three ticks, but it doesn't lead to anything. At least make sure they can't cleanly transition this. Once again, I mean, Gosius keeps pushing all the way up to Palace over and over and over again, just trying to get a kill or two, but the multi-kill, once again, it is there for Simp. He's nearly double positive. He's been big in both of the respawns. But still, you got to have an offensive presence at some point. And if you look at, like, Abizi and Zipper, I think oh, probably a round five defense looks good for him. But then you see draws and sell. And maybe won't be the case. We'll see as we still have some action to go before that will be determined. But now you've got a four-man wolf pack looking to push this forward, sitting deep on the point will be Krem. Yeah, this is where these are so good in their round one defense, stopping this next push. There's the opener. You're going two for two so far. You will take that, but now maybe a chance. Krem, the last player alive, able to find the first. And again, Ooh. just finesse buy as much time as possible. I think he spots Celium, gives the call outs to his teammates. Now ready for the first gun fight in Kremp. 19 and 18, three in a row, a going huge. Yeah, it just feels like he's been the last line of defense kind of at times. So the guy's got to make a clutch play, win a he's big one-on-one. -on -one. He keeps on doing it, Kremp and Nasty. Going so, so big. Cruise missile is close. You take the five spree into the next round, but how many one-on-ones did he just went to the tail end of that? Yeah, he was trying to find that six. He saw a stun over the top. He goes for the chow, so he doesn't have the cruise. But as you said, carrying that spree, and again, just all about, what, three ticks? So very back-and-forth battle as we head into round four. And as little uh, as success as you've had <laughs> offensively for Faze, I mean, same true for Thieves. See, maybe they can find an opening, a cruise maybe they can use offensively. Or maybe you hold on to a round five, we'll see, but Krim's still got to earn it. Far more of a balanced effort, certainly on the Thieves side, but we can't see the damage numbers right now, so that might be might be a lot closer. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Dry's probably in the lead somehow. Yeah. <laughs> just how the scoreboards work at the end of the game is there is the first blood, and. You kind of saw it early in the last round for Thieves where they're just trying to get aggressive. You might see it same thing for here for FaZe. That's going to be four dead off spawn. And now can you get pushed up towards this tank? Cell was there and they're able to find both of them. So they deal with that first wave. But Draza, he pushes forward. Similar position we've seen Ghosty in so many times. And now you got to start turning heads. Worried about where he's at. It looks like he's actually going to back it up towards Palace. Try to take another one-on-one. -on -one. Got to keep Afro out of the fight. As that one-on-one -on -one continues, this time Afro is able to take it. You got another one-on-one -on -one the backside. That's a BZ who loses his. All these one-on-one, -on -one, it's, it's thieves that are winning them. And now they're on to the point, everybody else falling for face. I mean, that's a two-on-one for Kremp. He gets so far pushed up, he's able to find two, which pretty much, yeah, keeps them away from this point. But you have the cruise missiles if you are phase. One in, doesn't connect, but gets them off the point and a chance to retake this if you are phase. That's what they're trying to do. They only want to give them these two ticks to carry into the next round and secure round five defense. Yeah, it seems possible. 40 seconds to go. So far, they've been holding. Afro takes that one, though. Self follows it up. Another cruise maybe looming as he's got four straight. You get up, pushed up. Simp, it's his turn to kind of push up where we just saw Draza making the plays, just staggering them, buying time. They got to wait to get four people in this fight. It's Ghosty. Taking out draws, Cell holding, two will fall out for phase. A chance to push, Cell's position given up, and they double Chow. It's a thing of beauty. Simp last gap, he at least gets one off of A, so you don't have to worry about the fight on both fronts. B, though, about to finish, extra minute extension in, minute 15 to work with. Phase just a minor life advantage here. Yeah, so you have that minute. You still have the cruise on the sip. I thought maybe if, like, you get a first kill there on the B, you invest it to try to not allow them to, to get that point, but doesn't come on through. He's going to hang on to it potentially for round five if we get there. Deep still with a chance. A one life advantage now for them as they get pushed up now in a good spot inside a cafe. You have Nasty inside of Rugs. There's the comms, though. Cell gets it, and, well, he responds with a headshot. It's like you got to push back, and you just get some of these clutch kills. Ghosty doing his best to do it. 
No, here we go. Three are going to drop. A chance to go. One person. It's Ronz that's got to go clutch. From the position we saw Crip do it. He doesn't do it. Ghosty able to they put him alive. down. They get on the point. Everybody's up. A three stack is in. Now the crew's coming through. Sip's got 32, but it might be for the L. That's not going to hit. Second minute progress done. They got to surge on forward. A BZ with one. Can't get through. Oh, oh and Sip connect. But you win it if you're Crip. Of course it's Crip. Time and time again, he wins his one-on-one. I thought it was so close. It was so, so close. I thought FaZe just did enough. But Kremp with some big gunfights. FaZe were weak. Look at that. Both players, one bullet, the 30 bomb for Kremp. The rookie going massive. And that is FaZe's first loss in control of the stage. Yeesh. Well, yeah, no, Draws wants that one back. He is lowest in damage, triple negative, could not get anything going that map. But how good is Krimp in? Whether it's the finesse and the search to destroy, the clutch kills he's able to come through with. And that that moment was quite literally throughout the three round, four rounds, the only moment where it was like three dead on defense, where you had a chance to really make a play. And yeah. then draws can't draws draws in that spot. He's gotta get he's gotta get one I, I, something maybe. I've been thinking about this small thing of that that last player who's able to get on the point right. He's he's crossing one shot. You have the crews come in. I mean, if there's one less player on it, maybe you have a chance there. Hundred percent. Our phase. No, I think you're right. It's either draws needs to kill one, and he's the last guy there, or one yeah. get one dies on the cross. The fact they all get through. How often does that happen? Yeah. Uh, not often. Yeah, the crowd here in the stats now. Looking at the stats, I mean. Afro's only out with 3,400 damage, but it doesn't matter. He hits the W. Ghosty and Kremp, they did it in map one in the respawn. They do it here as well. Nasty with some big moments. You had, I mean, a BC and Sim go crazy. Celium, though, shows that he is a uh, human at times. Yeah, no, no, 100%. I think even in the map one, he was negative. Like, wait, this is a guy that's like, how many qualifier stages, how many majors has he had the number one overall KD? One of the more consistent players from a statistic standpoint ever. He is not doing it right now. As this Thieves team, it's like it things have finally started to click. Woo! And I was reading during the break, our guy Brian Stats, he, he tweeted out, Ghosty is 2-0 and all time versus FaZe. Seven and one map count, now like what, like eight and two? So, it, this guy loves playing this team. Well, you think about that that year with Optic, and I mean, what was it? There was a stretch where it was like 11 and a 1, yeah, like they, Optic or something like that. Yeah. Like, they dominated that. So yeah, he's in sort of the midst of that But it's it's helped that him rivalry. carry that confidence sure, into yeah. this matchup. He's shooting, that's for sure. Now, he's been playing so, so aggressive. He's not backing down from anything. But man, I, 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 I'm thinking, I mean, just, just based on stats, the control pedigree you've got for FaZe, after you know, that search come back, I'm like, whoa, that might be it. Not anymore, flip that on, Ted, because now, now you win the control, who the hell knows? Yeah, I mean, Trump, the last year, yeah, I don't know who the last player was from FaZe, but they were on their way, about to slide into the point, but just enough was done. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're talking about confidence. I'm not sure what he was yelling across stage, but I'm going to guess that Dan Ghosty was saying something like, You're a great person. You're a fantastic person, or like, you're all dog shit. One of, one of those two, probably, yeah. Joe. Yeah. One of those two is LA Thieves winning both of these respawns. I mean, it's almost a 3 0. Very close. Comes down it should to be a 3 0. Comes like, down to around 11. Is this Thieves team looking better and better? Ah, this is just, this is so unreal, man. And, Bit by bit, that LAG series looks like more, maybe like a little, a little slump here too for, for FaZe is some uh, vulnerability certainly showing, but can they bring it back? And just the energy, the passion is there for Thieves right now. They know how close they are. And we were thinking like a dark horse, you know, I, how, how much should I chat about it like on the broadcast? Like thinking someone, someone's going to be, there's going to be some upset. Someone's going to do it. Someone might make a run. And the most logical ones are Paris and Thieves, considering what they're the five Vegas. and two. Now I got Now you did it. Now I did it. Vegas and Thieves. Like they're the most logical ones at what five and two and four and three. I just, we need to go on a trip to Paris or something. Just get it out of our system. I don't maybe, know. Maybe that's Just you it. and me, like leave the wife at home. Just romantic getaway. Yeah. You know? I don't think that's going to happen. Why? I got a lot of credit card points. I'm going to Rio, that's why. Oh, oh, okay. I'm down for that, too. Going to Rio. As we can see there, the the, the records here. Phase 2-0. Oh. First in rotation, third in hold on the opposite side. LA Thieves 1-2, but first in hold percentage. We'll see. 
But do the stats matter? They may not. All right, this series, I don't think so at all, Joe. No, they do not. Stats out the window. Los Angeles Thieves. Beginning of the year, they were in a dumpster. Now they're a map away from a massive upset here in round one. The improvements over stage two have been insane. Can you get it done here, or are we going all the way to a map five? They're still hot. Is they're lighting up early into the hard point. Is listen, I was still struggling to believe early on, but now for that map, I'm a believer. Yeah, it's just they're playing such a well-rounded team game, but nice start there. They find the 20 points. Phase fight on back through. Obviously, no trophies down until right now. So stuns, nades going to give you a huge advantage. Cell with the multi-kill. He's got to get going after that map number three. Can Abizi and Simp keep it up? You would think on a map like Rio, this is their playground. But Afro saying, nope, it is mine. And here we go. Some aggression. Maybe to try to get early P2 control for Thieves. But Simp is yeah. going to find a double. You think like Simp smacked Mac MacArthur and Abizi smacked Raj? Like, wake up? No, because Crowder is like the founding father of family values. And he doesn't believe in that. That's a good point, Joe. That's a good point. In the point and locking it down, trying to rally back in this one. If you are phased, not words that I thought were going to leave my mouth in this series, but here we go. They need draws to pick it up massively. Some awkward timing there from Abizi. Now the pressure on Acelium to maybe make the play, but the help is in by the way of Simp, and he's been demonic in the respawn. Oh, Pulls that one to the forehead as he hits it and gets three. Simp has been electric, but hasn't been winning the maps. Yeah, I mean, great play, though, from Simp, because he heard the trophy going crazy when Krem got that kill. I thought with the, the kill, Krem maybe opens up for his teammates, but there was a trophy down, and then Simp watching that cross. Still some pressure here. The rest of P2. Just Krem trying to find a timey on to Draza. But it's phased with an early lead, and an on-rotation will be LA Thieves in control, finding kills. At the best time. So I know they're different maps. They play out very differently. Invasion can be unique, you know, obviously with the changes. But, you know, their recipe success, it was gritty, right? We talked about it so much, like how they kept it messy. Didn't let FaZe get into their setups. What's the recipe to win here on Rio, you think, of your Thieves? Yeah, I think these holds, right? We saw they were they were number one in hold percentage, but there's a big break at this P3 for me. Keep the trades effective. It's been such a balanced effort in those respawns. They have to keep that up as they're going to fight. Right back into uh, it. And sell him though. Started it going. Looking MacArthur's for back. Looking for number six. Not going to find it. Draws is still. He, <laughs> he's two and seven. It's been a rough couple of maps in a row, but it seems like Cell has come alive. As he keeps coming through with kills. Can test on the point for now as we start thinking about the next point. Cramp able to hit there with the Simtex. Krip's been a, a, a stallion, 10 and 7, three in a row for him. So many heroic efforts, up to four now, trying to push towards trees. Doesn't get the timing, gets there, but there's one more for the trade. So six in a row, not going to come to fruition. It'll end on five. Yeah, but you would have loved to have a cleanup set up there if you were LA Thieves. The problem was Simp got through. He just snuck through, kind of hung out where the bomb site was and found a kill in the back. And then that allowed FaZe to get pushed up and spawn them out. But there we go, again. This time it's nasty with a multi-kill to give them control on this hill. Stuns, nades flying on through. Here comes Atlanta phase. Here they come. You saw two inch feet if you're nasty. The nades just start hitting from everywhere. Simp snaps and Afro drops. Crimp ripped, backing up. And the final 20 seconds look the go the way of phase. Now we think about the next setup if we are thieves. Ghosty waiting, holding, smoked. It's two around the edge. I mean, it looks like that sequence, honestly, the last map, where it just felt like it was these crazy one-on-twos and challenging things so well together for your Thieves. You saw it there from Atlanta phase for a moment, but now another setup for Thieves. He talked about the need for the holds to be strong. A chance to do it again. Yeah, we just saw in that P4, but it's, you know, you get, you get in, but then phase just, I mean, no trophies were down, so they catch your timing, the stuns, the nades hit, but this time seems to be much cleaner early. And that's a nice gunfight one from Cell, just not throwing away his life either and staggering this a bit. And as I say it, bang, three drop as Hold Thieves on, get no, the kills. Just a play like that. Sip just keeps it a little scrappy, maybe gives him another chance, but you're right back into the hard point pretty quickly. And it's already 30 seconds off of this. Nate's hit all over the place. Get him out of the point for a second. One is able to hit the Simtex from Cell. And even though, yeah, I mean, you got like a solid 30 seconds or so, it's still like, there's been no one in the point for the last 15. 
you know, last like 20, 25 seconds. Yeah, it's pretty much been nobody, but yeah, FaZe do a good enough job to keep that messy. Now rotating over to feed one, but it's Afro on the pinch who only finds the first. Here comes the rest of Thieves. They try to get on Ooh. through. Ghosty was looking for six in a yep. row, but no cruises earned. So FaZe now with P1 controlling the setup. Well, Cramp was on five. Now Ghosty on five, just struggling to get that six kill. I mean, our first series today for the boss one, the streaks were so big. Here we'll see if they matter in a real, if they can earn them, but basically a tie game. Ghosty with a nice little multi, but... Yeah, he takes a long route right through boxes, finds the timing, and, well, he gets the break, so nice play there from Ghosty. I'm easy. Can't win the fight out front. Again, it lights up red. Thieves, play after play, no double from Simp this time. They all get wiped off the board, and it's a reset. Great start here in your second set if you are Thieves. You still have that right side control for uh, the next hard point, but you get two kills and now you have a chance to pounce. As the next hard point, you see the lock, it's getting ready to pop. Work it all the way deep. It's going to be draws. He's going to have that one on one, I believe, with Kremp. They're able to take him out. Shane's going to be a two on one. They're pushing through. You're about to pound. You're collapsing from everywhere right now. If you yeah, were you see the spawns from Kremp and Afro so far away. You're hoping Josie and Nasty can find a little bit more. But they buy enough time. Uh, a nade connects. You're a little bit staggered here. If you are these, you'd like to slow it down, hold some position on the map. You just keep kind of going one at a time. Obviously, the spawns stagger them. I thought Afro like double jumped there for a second. It looks so awkward from Abizi's POV, but three throw. Sim draws a Abizi all lined it up. Four in a row for Abizi. They're up 15. They're in a hole in the series, though. They're trying to rally. Let's hear the comms now from FaZe as Draza gets it going. Yeah, let's knock this one out. Yeah. Heard you. On team is Zig. I think he's going to be one in the back. I'll be a hunter. On team back in. Yeah, he's in the fucking yellow room. And then one's close to me, too. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I have to back there. I'm I'm coming through the middle fast. I'll see him. I'll see him. I think one's in front. And uh, Eskies. Two in the back of me. Watch out. Look at the back of me. Get my push. 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 We just want to you know, I see nothing over here. Zig, Don't take them. Not on this side. Watch out, Zig. I have Zig. Listen, there's two Zig. Two Zig, one old. I have Zig. Listen. Yo, two on the side. Two on the side. I flipped. I flipped. Watch, come behind me, I got double sun. Yeah, I'm on the side. 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 It was a rough one last man for draws and sell, but they are starting to erupt, but it's Afro right out of the listening who pops. It was a much needed break there because it was looking like FaZe was running away with it. They needed a break. We were on board with Sims POV. He calls out three through mid in that listening. But Afro just able to play his life. Wins a one on two. Gives them some scrap time. Keeps them in the game. But yeah, P3, P4. Very much controlled by FaZe. They are up 37. 28 and 16 for Cell. Simp still pushing the tempo with the rival. Cell able to connect from up top. Draws was what, like two and seven, two and nine? Still, you know, negative, but started to play kind of even from that point forward. Can Nasty have the opener? 
through the dust and flame and fury. Salian will get a headshot. Draws it, getting extra ones oh, now. Yeah. With some blowing up on the map. Everybody drops. Sim sends it forward, but can't quite finish it. But they're soaking up time, Joe, and getting yeah. close to victory. Hey, Simp was hoping to just get ready for that second kill yeah, for that yeah. double, but doesn't happen. Trophy gone now. Afro with the first. Onto this push now, Thieves. It's desperation time. Or we're headed to a game five. Three dead. Sim started getting going as Draza. He's up to even. What a turnaround here for Draza. As he's able to lock back in his phase now, 13 away. Yeah, it was rough for a couple maps here for Draws. But he has heated up massively. Now you see five to push this to the map. Five of the next hard point ready to go. To mid map we go. You'd have to basically get 80 straight points if you're going to do it. Can they contest? Not going to happen. Face come alive in the map four. They win the Rio. We're going the distance. Woo, it was tight early. Well, really, it's tight throughout. It ends up being like an eight-point win, but still, you saw the gun start to get hot for some of the other phase members there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Selim had a, what, a couple of five sprees. He finishes 32 and 18. Draza got going with some big multi-kills. It was a much more team effort for the side of phase. These were there, though. Again, just a couple of holds that they did not find. Uh, you know, look at the P3s for them. We talked about how that could be a great amount of time if you're able yeah. to push up middle of the map, but the pressure was always there. The breaks were there. And I think the most impressive thing for me for FaZe was kind of around their P2s. That's where they found a majority of their early holds, and they, they converted it into time. So just take a look at those stats. Well, yeah, I mean, Selium, he bounces back, leads the lobby, 32 and 18, almost 5,500 damage. But now... We go to a search, and this is like where it's interesting because, you know, this is, uh, you know, David and Goliath in some ways with the way that the season started for Thieves and the way you've been playing to your phase. But, Joe, when you take a look at the overall qualifier records for Search and Destroy, it's been great for FaZe, and we're going to a high rise where FaZe have looked vulnerable at times in, in Thieves. Uh, what, they've only played, I think, like once in a 1-0, but I think you're feeling pretty good about this. Yeah, so I'm saying, well, no, I'm saying it's the one they had the advantage. what, 6-3 and three in Search over the qualifier, 5-4 and four for FaZe, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not many advantages you're going to get. It's in Search. They've been a solid Search team. Can you win one more map? Can you take the Search and destroy? Can you get it done? Because, I mean, like you said, I think you, you nailed it. Uh, I, they were up, what, 4-1, then 5-3? Like, this should have been a 3-0. Yeah, no, uh, but uh, the adjustments are there. Uh, BZ starts to get going, but High Rise has been a struggle for FaZe. You know, this qualifier, 1-2. and two, Maybe, you know, Thieves have, have the openings, have the VOD review. I just think, yeah, since the beginning of this year when we watch them on High Rise at times, I'm just yeah. like, uh, it's never seemed to be, like, that strong for them, but it is the map 5. Uh, here we go. One more map to the side. If Thieves can get the upset, it all goes down right after this quick break. Upgrade your game with a SCUF. Save $30 on the official CDL collection at scuff.co slash CDL. Get better with a SCUF, the first performance gaming controller. Visit scuff.co slash CDL to change your game. Slice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator, now available in-game in the Call of Duty store.
everybody back to Miami in an upset maybe looming a map five thieves phase it's the final match of the day and maybe some Cinderella type magic if thieves can with this win who knows what kind of run they can make but we're going to high rise now and who the hell no, Joe? This one's been wild. No, it has. And again, this is a map that's solid for Thieves. You're like, well, want to know? I mean, you haven't played it a ton, but you win on it, right? You take that where the other side. Yeah, one of those sort of like, okay, well, you yeah, can win. You yeah. win. Yeah. Right to the map pool, put it in the map yeah, pool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where for Atlanta phase, it's one that, you know, again, major two qualifiers, one and two. They've had some losses there. You know, we've seen some struggles with a, someone like Abizi, where just can't get anything going with that rival. A lot of times you can be on those timings, what you're able to do, but I think one player who's really gotten going has been him. And then on the other side, it's Kremp. No, Joe, I want you to tell me why Dan Ghosty is taking over this map. He's taking over. All right, he's shooting well, I guess, yeah. Well. No, he's never lost face, that's why. Oh. He's, he's taking over. <laughs> he's going big here in the back five, I got a feeling, but uh, I just want, give me a banger to close out day one. Let's go the distance. I'm sure fans of either side are like, nah, I'm good. Let's just get a 6-0 and get out of here. <laughs> But this map can be a, a wild one. The timings, the angles, it can just be such an insane search and destroy map. Everyone's just on their belly vibing on the other yeah, side. Look at this cross setup from Kremp oh, and Afro. We're in Miami, let's get some sun. Yeah, I mean, and this is a spot where as soon as that bomb is planted or maybe you have info, you just get oh. a free first blood. Did we see a BZ here first where he was sort of like a gymnast on his nipples, right? Yeah, that's exactly that. Now yeah. Kremp, he, he's taking that spot. He didn't have a, a player under him, so you can see. There's the info, just backs on down, but pretty much a stalemate so far, the first half of this round. Power nipples, just holding here, waiting to pounce. There we go. And pounce he will. BZ though, he is able to snap a trade, and he gets away. That is massive. Afro almost able to get him, but- Bomb down though, bomb Ooh. down. They have to chow Afro, bomb is down. Okay, oh, yeah. well, there's a chow. It's Cell who heated up in the map four and guns Afro to sleep. Afro so close to maybe close out that round, but not going to happen. 20 to go. A bit of a chow with, the, with the, the rival there. And now maybe just down to nasty, but the poles get in your way. Some nice early shots, but the number is too strong for Atlanta Faze. Uh, easy as get away. Yeah. And then... Maybe a bit of an over chow there from Afro. Yeah, you were saying like FaZe have got a chow. I mean, the next thing you know, it's sell at range against Afro with the rival. Yeah, yeah. Good, good luck. You know, that's maybe one of those rounds where you're in a spot, 30 seconds left. Maybe you know you don't have much help. Just try to reposition, get away from underground, but doesn't happen. Hey, Miles. Instead, you have FaZe up 1-0. Here we go, round two. Let's see if Thieves can answer back now. We'll take a look at their opening offense. Afro trying to be the playmaker after maybe yeah, a little bit of an ego challenge in that early round, but he's been so good with those opening duels. Yeah, very slow round here so far. We kind of saw that last round. Then it got crazy, but there's going to be that first blood. Nasty so darn good in this spot. Now numbers over to Thieves, and it looks like there might be trying to be a response for FaZe, and that's it. They try to get aggressive, catch maybe Thieves on a timing, but it does not work out. Kremp are ready for it, and now it's all down to Abizi. A clean round from Thieves. Nobody goes down, and they tied up. That's been twice where it's like Simba and Abizi are nearly like perfectly stacked and dropped. Like Kremp almost gets them this time. It was what, nasty or whatever last round. Like almost just shooting straight through both. Or sorry, Kremp the first round, but... Kremp here closes it out. All square. As our back and forth dance in this series continues on. Try to keep an eye on adjustments throughout the course of it, but Kremp takes two in a row to this round. Yeah, Kremp's up to three. Yeah, Nasty with two in that first blood. The other side, it's a BZ in Celium. Face starting to hit this B street a little bit quicker. Have those trophies down. It's going to be Afro inside the site. Ghosty tag, but still up. Draws are getting some info. And the info is an explosion into his eyeballs, but he's still up. 53 HP remaining. Sell. First blood. Crump is gone. Yeah, we saw FaZe maybe trying to find a timing with the, after the first blood. I think Afro goes for the same thing right there. Just trying to catch FaZe as they get pushed up, but it has not happened. It's not happened. It's, again, FaZe just with a response on offense. It was a clean round for Thieves. It's a clean round for FaZe. 
A little dose of their own medicine. And right back in the lead. But Cell, yeah, picking him apart early on. Just winning those fights at range. A clutch one in that round one to get the round victory. Here, the first blood and the follow-up. Then the dominoes continue from there. Abizi goes nuclear in that map, too, to bring him back. Well, it's been all, all offense here so far, so... Our offensive teams, yeah, just finding those first bloods, and you can see the defense, they try to react somewhere on the map. It just has not worked out. We'll see what Thieves, sorry, FaZe tried to do this time through. Got to group it up, trying to hit nades out through mid. See if maybe they can find, like, an opener on defense, get a little bit of advantage, but it's still pretty deep. Just sort of waiting out all the utility, letting the entire map explode around them as the Michael Bay film continues. Ghosty looking for his one-on-one -on -one opener. Maybe a double chow opportunity. That's exactly what it is. Beautifully done there for FaZe. Draza and Abizi. Abizi just shouldering. Draza with the finisher. A little one-two combo to open it up. I mean, yeah, I mean, the both players were trying to, you know, shoulder it right well. there. They try to go for it again, but Nasty gets away. So it's not a first blood, but it evens out the around. It's a first blood in its, its own way to make this a three versus three. Yeah, it's like he had seven HP. They're so close to do it, but Simp, the patience. Is there Cell toying with his food? He'll back up for now. Now you're trying to think about how you're going to get this bomb down. 30 seconds now to go. Simp once again, the patience, the reposition, the angle, the timing. It's all there. Simp is deep in his bag, and that's another round for FaZe. The fantastic series for Simp continues. Well, I mean, what, map two was a struggle, right? Just because it felt like a lot of the time he's weren't going his way where this round. That's true. Uh, it was really the respawns that he was insane. Yeah, the map two was not good. So I think a round like that makes him feel feel comfortable, gets him locked in a little bit. He finds some freebies, just some good timings, has the info, repositions as he finds three in the round now on four in a row. And well, maybe you cast your curse, Ghosty, because he's on three. So this is probably your fault. Oh, sorry. What? I'm sorry, I was distracted. I was thinking about getting lost in Miles' beard. Have you ever thought about it? He's sitting right over there. Oh, never thought about it once? I have. But Ghosty, yeah, the 0 and 3. That's my bad. That is my bad. Sent four straight. Afro just starting to work his way in behind enemy lines. We'll see if the read's there. Certainly is in. Traza gonna drop. 4v2. Sell. We'll see if it can be enough. Sip and Sell trying to bring it back in the two versus four. I mean, you find that first blood, then Afro just able to find the opening from Atlanta phase. But yeah, keeping that man advantage. It's a nice trade, but just not a lot of time to work with. You're, you're hoping Sim can find something on the map, but finds a bullets, bullets through a fence, just able to get away. But time working against them. They have to recollect this bomb. And while that happens, a ghosty. Able to find the first, his teammate able to take down the second and nasty. Oh, he's going to bring it back down. He's going he's to get hot now. Did I just reverse cast across the curse? Yeah, yeah, that's how it works. And we'll see as the adjustments start to come through over the course of this map five. But just doing a good, just just keeping it close, like not going in a hole. I mean, obvi I mean, obviously you can pull it back from four one as they uh, know very well from the map two, but just keeping it within a round for now. Yeah, I think both teams doing a, a fantastic job with their first bloods, turning them, converting them into in a round wins, just so important. Well, but yeah, especially it, on a map like High Rise, where it, sometimes things can get a little bit, a little bit crazy. Yeah, it comes down to like a, a 1v1, like these little 2v2 skirmishes. Like, yeah, it's been some lopsided rounds, right? Yeah, that first domino falls, you kind of handle business. None of the, the wild and wackiness that is, well, uh, a bit more fun at times, just the craziest ensues. But still, we're only five rounds in. Plenty of chances for that still. All the lethals going out. Wow, Kremp ready for that. He's like, I play that spot, so he watches that sim. Not able to hit the headshots, and as he backs away, there is another first blood. And well, it's from Draza, but Sim just gonna go away, run away from his life. Draza gonna take his position. And there is Cell from this spot. He's gonna have a ton of info. Gives the calm A. He climbed the ladder into B. Draza just waiting, seeing if he can find a timing. And there, Cell gets that kill. Picking him apart again behind the first blood. One drops, the rest seem to follow. Well, this ghost, he can pull off something insane. He tacks another kill, but not going to matter much. The trade is through. Simp is there. Time for the defuse. And 
I mean, that was pretty much the same story as the rest of this search has been. Yeah, it's just great info there from Cell. Uh, I mean, obviously, Simp able to play his life, then Draza watching over him. And while that happens, you get the reposition from Cell, bottom blue, able to watch that ladder into B. That's just all the info they need. And as soon as they know that bomb's starting to get planted, they know, all right, th those guys have to watch over the bomb planter, so Cellium works the full flank, and yeah, they just suffocate him. Yeah. I, it's every free round, just somebody getting suffocated out one by one. First player to ever get back-to-back -back 100 kill series. It is Simp. He has had a sensational year. His respawns have been nuts. He's doing well here in the map five. Just some terrific moments from him, but you got to win this series. You're up two rounds. Draws is getting smoked, but he's still up. Simp, chance to make the play. There's the first blood. Advantage again. He knows he's got one close. Ghosties, position, give it. Up by the gunfight he's just in as he just creeps on forward and he will fall. We'll see what happens there. But yeah, first blood jumps in. We kind of saw something going on. Nasty is able to find a kill. Afro now inside of the site, just trying to, to lock this down. Maybe get them off the bomb. But right now, Faye's not going to go for it. They're just going to go hunting. They kind of know the area that Afro likes to play. Just waiting for him patiently. Ah, uh, if you could catch draws there, maybe get a bit of a bigger chance in the round, but he's able to back up to the heady. He's able to win the fight. And I'll be honest, I was staring at the minimap when you kind of reacted. It looked like, was it a... I don't know. Player with the... I know we had a couple, a couple of resets to an issue earlier, but it seems we're continuing on for now. Match point. There was a big lead in the map, too that you had if you're thieves, they couldn't close it out. Okay, uh, so I, I think we're going to take a pause here maybe yeah. for a moment and look at that uh, that last one because, yeah, he was just kind of looking up in the air. Oh, it's funny because when I looked at him, he was kind of holding the angle and I looked at the mini-map and I, you reacted. I'm like, what did I miss? So he was just looking at the air. Perfect. We're seeing what's going to be the deal there. As soon as we've got more information, we'll let you know. But pause for now. We'll see what the ruling will be. Because honestly, I, I thought, like, maybe he was going to find the timing where, like, it, maybe you, you get that one kill B Street and they just kind of forget about him. Maybe just think there was only one, not two. Behind the elevator. So you got on that flank, but yeah, we'll, we'll uh, try to update you when we can. But as it stands for now, just one more round needed for FaZe. They bounce back, simp and sell. Leading the way for us now as we uh, wait for sort of the league upside to decide what's going down. We're going to show you just a little update on our bracket in case you joined this late. Maybe you think FaZe might be getting upset, so you hop into the stream late. This is how it's played out so far today as our winner's bracket round one matches are going down. Optic, Ultra, Subliners continue on. Uh, pretty expected based on the favorites taking. Is anything uh, outside of the series maybe surprise you today? No, I, I think, you know, some close matches, even Ultra Legion. I was really excited to watch that Legion team. Uh, yeah, and, and they continue to be a threat. So hopefully they go on a loser's bracket run, but they're going to have a tough loser's round one matchup. I'm looking at those tomorrow, Heretics, Ravens, uh, Legion Surge, and then Breach Rocker. And then, uh, yeah, loser uh, of this one will play LAG. So we'll, we'll see all those teams tomorrow. Imagine if FaZe loses series, they have to play LAG again. LAG are just the FaZe Reapers. Well, yeah, we were talking about that the back to back 100 plus kills for Sim, but it's like, hopefully it's not all losses. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, no. yeah, it was versus LAG where he was going crazy. Yeah, right? Like, they that's, lost. It's, so. like, it's one of those stats. It's like, it's cool. It's a great record, yeah. but it doesn't matter when you're not winning the game. I'm sure he feels the same way. Um, but again, if you're just joining, it's just a bit of an issue. Not sure if it's uh, PC side control or what's going on, but uh, we had a player look at the sky and we're trying to get that figured out with our admins and the League Ops team, and then we'll get back into it. If you see us looking down constantly, it's because that's where our TV is. So we're checking to see what the, when the gameplay continues. But uh, you got to bring it back more than likely. Maybe maybe something happens where it's actually like a 4-2 advantage or phase. We'll see what the ruling is. But uh, what do you do here, you think? Where, where do the improvements have to come? The adjustments come if you're LA Thieves? Like, what's been the major major flaw? Well, I think they just be the first blooded. And then what happens there after those first bloods is, I mean, they're trying to get maybe a little too reactive. And phase are just playing very kill heavy. They're not really working the objective. So uh, just playing safe. Again, if you have to play a retake, play the retake. I, you know, it's not the worst case scenario on a map like High Rise. Saw FaZe able to do it just a couple of rounds ago. It looks like they're playing rock, paper, scissors on the main stage. So you keep the hands warm, Joe, and uh, the team vibes up in chemistry. 
rock, paper, scissors. Or maybe that's how all the thieves decide who's going to carry bomb. Maybe. Still figuring that out, so. I mean, at least they're in good spirits. No, he, uh, Dan Gosey was once known to be a top 1.5% rock, paper, scissors player in the world, Joe. He's got the mind for it. Is there an ELO for that? Yes, sir. No, it's an ELO, just like Chess. Yeah, he's worked his way up the ranks. Okay. I don't think that's a thing. No. No, no, definitely, definitely not. But uh, looks like uh, I'm assuming if they're ending the game, something's going to happen. Yeah, we're ending game and just still waiting on a ruling. So that's the last thing we heard is just uh, what the comp op side decision is going to be. Whether we're going to stand at 5-2 and hop back into it. Get back to 4 2. I still don't know when the issue started. I, we, you saw that one moment, but I'm not sure when it started if there was a request. It was just that moment, yeah. Yeah, I'm guessing yes, but. For now, all you can do is try to uh, stay locked on the stage if you're these players, maybe talk through it. I mean, if you're phased, the conversation is probably. Okay, so we just got the update. It's kind of what I guessed. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be a 4-2 advantage for FaZe. So that round basically just gets wiped off the board. We're going to hop back into it. We'll try to hopefully have a graphic where we kind of update you on the true score. And yeah. you just need two rounds of your face. Got to rip off four if you are Thieves. We get back into the action here shortly. Yeah, Diesel will be on the defensive side. FaZe are back on the attacking side. And it's, yeah, it's kind of what I figured. I'm like, yeah, he's just yeah happened. So hopefully get that resolved, get them back into the game. and. Get back to the match because it's a game five. Yeah, if anything, I mean, uh, I guess if you're thieves, like, I'm not saying this doesn't give advantage to anyone, but at least maybe you get the chance to talk through maybe some of the mistakes or where you're falling apart or what we can improve or try to change, maybe give you a little bit of a breather. I mean, if you're phased, I think it's sort of like continue business as usual, like we're up 5 2, or well, 4 2 now, but we were in control, need a couple of rounds, we're kind of dominating, but maybe just some conversation you have for thieves, you can find something, maybe improve your odds here. Yeah, they're probably just happy it's 4 2. And not 5 2, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, there's got to be some conversation outside, but I'm here. We're about 30 seconds out from game, and we will get into it. Surely you've had this happen on the stage at some point, Joe. Or I'm sure. That was a long time ago, though. A long time ago. We're up there. You got like Nameless trying to tell you strats, just making up stuff on the fly. What was it like, team with Nameless? Oh, yeah, we had a great run, honestly. Good run. That's my guy over there. Hey, you guys did get carried by formal for quite a while. Yeah. No, that's fine. I'm cool with that. Yeah, my <laughs> formal is gone. All of them. Yeah. I have no problem being that guy. Oh. But yeah, back All right. Hey, we're loading back up. All righty. Say, back in my, my day, I mean, you couldn't plant the bomb. <laughs> for, wait, was that Ghost, right? Yeah, shout out IW. Yeah. So that's what we had. We're playing Search and Destroy. Uh, <laughs> you just can't play with the bomb, so the objective is uh, it's not one. And so again, phase up 4-2. In our map five, they are back on the attack, and we are back in the game. All righty. Let's see if Thieves somehow make some adjustments in the brief downtime there, or Thieves continue to struggle with phase, close this out. Here we go, right back to it. The nades hit, the first one is in. Ghosty, the king of rock, paper, scissors, also holding nades. I mean, that's one of those things early on, right? When you reset the game, no trophies. Well, that first blood again. After the first blood, the defensive team has tried to get aggressive, maybe to take something away, try to even up the odds. It has just not worked for either side. And well, it was 4-2, and now it's very quickly 5-2. Yeah, no, that, uh, you blinked, and that one was done. Honestly, the League Ops decision took about 20 times longer than that round did. Yeah. Just right in the nade, and then, yeah, just Steve's just tried to find something heli side, but Selium was ready for it. And they get hunted. So now pressure on Thieves. Yeah, pressure's been there. Now it's now it's really ramped up. You're so close to taking this series. Now just got to win four straight rounds. One of the better teams at finding first bloods, one of the better teams at capitalizing off of it, and you need it now. You need it desperately, but Abizi, back to it. First blood, bang. Afro is dropped. Face have bounced back, and now one step closer. Are they not going to look at this? Avoiding this scare. They, they haven't watched this at all. They haven't even checked it. I mean, if Abizi would have went, maybe he would have ended the game, but he's like thinking they're going to focus on me. That is not the play. So bomb is down. 
Crimp's sort of been looking like well. at times he's been trying to pick it up. He's able to take out Simp. He's trying to keep an eye. Maybe one of these he's going to pounce. That threat is still looming. So keeping his head on a swivel. Now, what are you doing in the three versus three? Well, he's going to hit Crimp, but now I don't know if Drazen knows that's underground, but it is. Yeah, he's looking up top. We're on the other side of the map. You're going to have a one versus one. Dosi, though. Ooh. Getting some shots in, and Abizi does take down Nasty. So man advantage back to phase, trying to close out the game and the series. Nice slide by Dosti, but it's down to him. Abizi has buys his time, finally pounces now. Can Ghosty make something miraculous happen? 15 to go. It isn't there. It's Abizi with the final one. And Thieves has improved. It was scary moments there for FaZe, but you do enough to move on. It's not done in a beautiful or pretty fashion if you're phase, but a win's a win. Yeah, and I mean, sometimes you, you look back at tournaments, and sometimes that winner's round one, that's a bit of a scare, kind of gets the adrenaline going, the blood flowing, gets you locked in for the rest of your tournament. Sometimes it's a good thing, but I, I think if you're Thieves, yeah, it's probably one that, that map number two especially you want back, but it's what happens with a, a newer roster, right? You play in one of the top four, you give them an inch, they take a mile, the same thing happened, but a lot of improvement there for Thieves. Yeah, you just set map two, you'll be thinking about like the 4-1 lead, a chance to maybe just get it done, but not quite done. Phase survive. There's a reason they've been so consistent since the inception of the CDL. Sometimes in a hole, but they're able to pull it out and still get the victory. But it's a scare, and now he's chained together. He's lost two series, and it's two. I mean, you lose one, you, you probably should have lost another. If anyone had him, maybe as the favorites to still win this thing or get to a final, it's looking sketchier by the moment. Yeah, still a little, yeah, just uh, some bumps in the road, very much so, but they do survive. LAD is going to go down to the loser's bracket. I think they'll play LAG, which, well, we just saw that recently. The Battle was, of LA. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the times that has gone the way of gorillas, but I think Thieves are finally on the board. It's like, yeah, it's been very much one-sided, so we'll see that rematch tomorrow. Oh, that uh, I didn't go the way I expected it, yeah. honestly. Just based on the, kind of the rest of the day, everybody's sort of handling business. But a guy that is now uh, on back-to-back -back series with dropping 100-plus kills and a big part of why his team came back and got the victory, it is Simp, one of the best to ever do it, on stage with Blaze. Thank you so much, Maven. Miami, show some love to Atlanta FaZe as they're going to make it to Saturday still without a loss here. And Sim, what a close series that was against another L.A. team here. But you managed to close it out. Just initial thoughts right now and being able to win that game five. How do you feel? Uh, I mean, it feels good to ice up, especially like that in like the first match of the tournament. So, you know, a little bit of a relief mm -hmm. considering it was a game five, but I never had a doubt in my mind. Yeah, and you know what? After that map number three, we go to the real hard point. We go to another S and D on Skyrise. And those last two maps, you guys look so comfortable. You know, what was the comms like? And what can you say about Celium right there? Because I feel like he popped off too as well. I mean, MC's always doing his thing. He's always shooting people. He's always shooting bodies. And he's just a legend. He truly is, right? All right. So you guys make it on here this Saturday. You guys, you're building off of this one. Uh, what do you want to say to these FaZe fans that's, that's been supporting and cheering for you guys all throughout the day as you guys get ready for your matchup on Saturday? You know, we appreciate you guys. You know, just for state of tournament, but I'm, I'm, I got a feeling it's going to be an amazing one, so I appreciate you guys. You heard it here first. It's going to be an amazing one. Can't wait to see it. But, Chris, let's break down the rest of this day. He's got a feeling. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. It's fucking alongside Alley Cat and Nameless, and the match we thought would never end is done. 6-2 your final score, but I have a feeling that you're going to have the LA Thieves camp going back, watching the VODs, and thinking, we should have finished this in three. If we do something a little smarter round 11, we 3-0 yeah. at Atlanta phase on land. Yeah, that first, being handed that first loss as a major, uh, as LA Thieves put in the position that they were in, it's always going to sting, but truly, I hope they walk away from it afterwards and be like, you know, we almost did that versus Atlanta face, a team that never goes down on Friday. Nameless, we thought that we weren't going to see any game fives. LA Thieves give us our first one. Are they a real threat? Now in the lower bracket, they got LAG next. I mean, yeah, potentially, but that was just a disappointment on both sides of okay. the stage that I just saw in that series. I mean, you're talking to an Atlanta face team that is supposed to be a contender here losing 
two respawns, should have gotten 3-0'd by the LA Thieves. And we're talking about LA Thieves team that was in prime position on a defense in round 11. I could talk about that that single round for 30 minutes. It was so bad the way that they played that. And honestly, I mean, they're just developing as a team. I understand that. But you're a top three search and destroy team throughout stage two. You are not making these mistakes online. How does that happen? in a series like that. It's unacceptable. He's about to talk about maybe it's the nerves. We saw it earlier happen on Invasion in around 11. It wasn't exactly the same, but it was bombed down in a 4v4 retake situation. Personally, I don't think LA Thieves should have ever let Lana Face get that bomb down. They gave up way too much site control. They didn't put anybody on tractor or in boxes and just allowed FaZe to have the entire site to themselves and try to play that retake. So again, there is always going to be some missteps on both sides. LA Thieves are going to kick themselves in a couple of these missteps, but they did more than I think a lot of people were expecting. Them. Does Atlanta FaZe wake up tomorrow against the Subliners? Not an easy draw in your winner's round two. I've seen Six enough in these last two games to say I think New York is going to win. I think they're going to win pretty handedly in that series, honestly. Simp feels otherwise. We'll see how things break down in that winner's bracket round two. For now, though, we have our final scuff play of the game from winner's round one, and it's Simp. Why is it Simp? Well, he dropped over 100 kills in back-to-back -back best of fives. There are very few players at this pro level who can do something like this. I mean, you know what's crazy about Atlanta FaZe is it's when one of your teammates isn't getting the kills, another one is going to. Draza had a little bit of an underwhelming slaying series when it came to this one. And Sip said, don't worry, I got you. And Selium also said, don't worry, I got you. And that's where the opportunity arises for him to drop numbers like that. Yeah, just also massive impact plays. He's also very involved in the damage. So 17,500 throughout the series with a 1.3. I mean, Simp is always going to show up. Every single time, he will answer the call. And, and lately in this game, he's been unbelievable. A massive improvement from last year for him in the individual play. Just as a team, they keep getting pushed the distance. Can you always take Simp's over, though? Is he always yes. the safe play? Yeah, you can always. In this game, it feels Absolutely. like it, yeah. Feels like it for sure. Congratulations to Atlanta FaZe. They pulled out in a game five. They will be playing in the winner's bracket on Saturday. Tomorrow, though, it's all about the lower bracket, and we are going to have some exciting games coming your way. To recap today, though, let's start at the beginning. Toronto, Vegas. We thought this would at least see a game four. We did. Yeah, unfortunately we did not. Honestly, I thought that was going to be our game five of the day, but Toronto just did what they needed to do when it came to the re real hard point. Yeah, here it comes, Al. You, you wanted some music, wanted, right? Without the music, music, it's a little I quiet get in here. Up. It's the end of the day. We had some insane matches at Vegas Legion. Unfortunately, not able to force game five. But even though it was a 3-0, like, if you can go into the nitty-gritty, it was still a very, very close series. We're talking a 30-point hard point, a round 11, and a round five in that control. So Vegas Legion, easily somebody to watch out for when you go down to that elimination bracket. Yeah, I will say, I mean, the, it's just the difference that we're seeing with, like, the top six, top seven teams to the top three teams is the ability to close out games, right? right? Like, we've seen it. Like, Vegas is good enough to win versus the top teams. LA Thieves are good enough. Can they close out when it matters? And for Vegas, they had such close maps. We're talking one round in control, one round in S&D of, what, a 15, 20-point hard point. Like, these guys have the makings of a solid roster. Geo, I thought today, best performance on the team. He definitely showed up on land. We had a lot of questions about him, but Serrano... Yeah. They bounce back, they get that done. Look out for the rookies from Legion. They are not done yet, and tomorrow they're looking to draw blood. Subliners, though, matched up against Boston today. And Boston, well, they have been on the struggle bus, and they do not match up well against the Subliner squad. Kismet and crew clutching up when they need them most. They do not. I mean, I will say they definitely surprised us with that skid row hard point because that was going to be New York's map pick that they expected to take up 1-0 in the series. And Boston turned around and handed to them in a 250-125 to fashion. But since then on, it was all New York subliners. I think the most important map of the series has to be that invasion control because New York are starting to show some serious dominance in those game number threes. It's Toronto, subliners, FaZe, and Optic Texas moving on into your winner's round two. Let's revisit what Texas did against Miami. The hometown squad showing up against the number one seed. What was your takeaway, Ann? Yeah, I mean, the smoothest series of the day, honestly. Like, the Optic got the most handed win. Uh, everybody played well throughout this one. You know, we saw a search and destroy that sort of went the distance, but it was Shotzi who said, I'm going to take control of this game. I'm going to get a streak, and we're not playing around. They win that 6-4. to four. We go into a Karachi where Optics offense on Karachi has been unbelievable. Their controls improved so much. They get a nice 3-0, man. They're feeling comfortable, and they got a day off tomorrow. 
Let's take a look at your bracket and how things are shaping up here in Miami for Major 2 with three days left to go. Tomorrow we turn our attention to that elimination bracket where Heretics will take on Clayster and the Royal Ravens. Legion faces off against Surge and we will see Breach Rocker, LA Thieves, LA Gorillas, Alley Cat out of these four battles. Which yeah. one are you most excited for? Uh, I gotta say maybe Miami Heretics versus Carolina Royal Ravens. I think that's the one true series that I don't know which team's gonna take it. There's 12 teams in the tournament at the end of tomorrow will be down to seven and we hope to see you all bright and early 1 30 eastern we'll see you right before noon there on the west coast we'll see you soon Coming over with two in the morning to see me. Yeah, I got it like that. Have a little nightcap. Demon, get to get it, mommy. Empty these martinis. Hugging her body like Giannini. Tastes so good like I'm eating fettuccine. Magical body like if it was made by Houdini. Serenaded with a little watch out the city like, ooh. Mami, tu eres mi sol. Yo quiero darte todo mi amor. Que me cura tu dolor. Porque reconozco todo tu valor. Tell me who got it like that. Can you even name one that's got it like that? Bet you ain't nobody and nobody got it like that. But I give it to you because I know you like it like that. Give me a fit or you want to give me a fist bump? <laughs>